Are you looking to start your own e-commerce business but not quite sure how this whole thing works? Well, look no further. In this free course, I'm going to show you how you can create a complete Shopify dropshipping store from A to Z. So whether you're a complete beginner or looking to fine tune your Shopify dropshipping skills, this free course has it all. You'll be equipped with all of the tools needed to succeed. And by the end, you'll have all of the skills and knowledge required to start your own Shopify dropshipping business. Even with no experience, you're going to learn how to set up your online store, find and source trending products, and successfully market and sell those products to hungry customers. You'll be equipped with all of the tools needed to succeed. And by the end, you'll have all of the skills and knowledge required to start your own successful online business on Shopify. And now, without further ado, let's begin this course on Shopify dropshipping. See you inside. Hello and welcome to our free course of how to create your own successful Shopify store. I'm really glad to have you guys with us. And by watching this video, you're already taking your first step into your own success story. So without further ado, let's begin this course. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about dropshipping. That is the business model that we will be working with, not to be confused with e-commerce, which is your online store. Dropshipping is the business model. For those who don't know, dropshipping means that you're selling products without actually holding their inventory. Your supplier, the one you're sourcing from, is the one with the inventory, and every time you get an order on your store, you're simply buying the product from your supplier and you're shipping it straight to the customer. Therefore, you're not paying for the inventory, it's all on the supplier, all you have to do is put the product on your store and market it to your customers. This picture over here shows you a little example of how dropshipping works. So the first step is to have a customer buy a product from your store. Once he purchases the product from your store and you received your payment, it is your responsibility as the seller to log into your supplier site and buy the product from the supplier and ship it directly to the customer. Once that happens, your customer will receive his package in a timely and professional manner. He will be totally happy about it and you will earn another satisfied customer, which is very crucial to the long-term survivability and success of your online business. Let me simplify it for you in just five easy steps. Find a winning product to sell, create your online store, market your products, the customer buys from your store, you buy the product directly to the customer. That is the dropshipping business model. But is it still profitable in 2021? The answer is yes. It's been super profitable since year one and each year it's only getting better and bigger. Don't listen to online gurus who are telling you that you can get rich in a day, in a week or in a month. That is not how dropshipping works. You're building your own steady income from zero. It is a real business and therefore it needs to be treated that way. Learning to cope with and overcome obstacles will lead the way to your success. So now that you have a basic understanding of the dropshipping business model and what it means, let's move on to the next lesson and it's an interesting one. How to find the best, most trending and most profitable dropshipping products that will sell. See you in the next lesson. In the previous lesson, we talked about the dropshipping business model, which is the business model that we will be working with. In this lesson, we will be talking about product research. Product research is one of the most, if not the most important part of running your online business. And that is because if you don't get your product research done correctly, and if you don't work hard enough on it and really know how to find the products that will sell for you, then it doesn't matter how neat your site looks. It doesn't matter how much time and effort you put into it. And it won't matter how much budget you put into your marketing. Nothing will work and everything will fail if you don't get the product research done correctly. That is exactly what we're going to be talking about in these lessons. We're going to start with the first lesson in product research, the six criteria for finding a good product to sell. By the way, you guys don't need to write anything down. I got you all covered. The first criteria that you need to know in order to be able to conduct product research is that the product needs to be hard to find in stores. For example, check out this product. This is a toothbrush sanitizer, UV toothbrush holder, and a toothpaste dispenser. It sanitizes your toothbrushes. This is what people are looking for, especially this year with the pandemic that we have going on. Now let's check if this is a hard to find product at local shops that people usually have near their homes. 
For example, let's take a look at Costco. As you can see, Costco has no idea what this product is when searching for UV toothbrush holder. Same thing in Home Depot. Home Depot has no idea what this product is, but we can see that it is available and even trending through other suppliers. So that's the first criteria that the product needs to be hard to find in stores. Now, the second criteria of finding a good product to sell is that it should be hard for customers to guess the price of this item. For example, that UV toothbrush sanitizer. It's not a product that people usually buy. I'm sure that you've never had such a product before, so it's hard to guess the price of a product that you've never bought before in your life. You can guess around how much you'd want to spend for such a product. For example, I wouldn't spend $100 or $150 on this product, but if it costs $30 or $40 or maybe even $50, sure, why not? It's for the health of my teeth, and it's worth that much money. So with the second criteria being that it's hard to guess the product's price, you can actually make great profit on such products. You can price them up to three times their worth and even more. It really depends on the situation. But that's why the second criteria is that it needs to be hard for the customer to guess the price of this product. The third criteria that you need to keep in mind when doing your product research is that the product needs to solve a problem and make your customer's life easier. For example, that UV sanitizer toothbrush holder that we saw solves a few problems. It cleans and sanitizes the toothbrushes. It holds and dispenses the toothpaste. It organizes the toothbrushes in an orderly fashion. And it takes care of your personal hygiene. So there's a few problems that this product solves and it's hard to find in stores and it's hard to guess the price. These are the criteria that we're looking for in a winning product. The fourth criteria is that your dropshipping suppliers need to have fast shipping and delivery times. Customers do not want to wait more than one week to get their orders. That is why I don't recommend to work with Chinese suppliers. Many people do it and it's fine. It is not a wrong method. Do not get me wrong here. But if you want a higher quality store, higher quality products and satisfied customers, you need to work with American suppliers with fast shipping times. We're gonna get to the suppliers soon, but keep this in mind for the fourth criteria that you need to work with suppliers, drop shipping suppliers with super fast shipping times, super fast delivery times, and good customer support when it comes to returns. Now this brings us to the fifth criteria that you need to know before starting your product research. And this one is talking about the fact that your customers need to be able to buy the product impulsively without doing much product research before. For example, if you're selling something that has different weights and dimensions, then there's a good chance that the customer will need to go and do some research before buying from your store to see if it's the right size, the right measurement and so forth. And you might lose them because they may never come back to your shop. This doesn't mean that you can't sell products that have different sizes and dimensions, but do keep in mind that it will make them log out of your store, see if it's what they need, and maybe come back a day later after talking with their wife or friend or relative, if they would even remember to do so. You wanna look for impulse buyers who will simply buy the product as soon as they see it in your shop. Do not give them a reason to get out of your site and maybe come back later. So that's the fifth criteria, that the customers need to buy the product impulsively and not get out of your site and start doing some research and maybe come back later. The sixth and final criteria before starting your product research is that the products that you are adding to your stores should not cost more than $30. And there's a reason for this. Yes, you can drop ship products that cost $100, $150, $400, and even $1,000. There's no problem with that. But if you want to have a much higher chance of making sales and profits, especially in the beginning of your journey, do not go for expensive products because you're going to have to work much harder to convince the customers to buy this product from your shop and when your items are cheaper when they cost you up to $30 then you can sell them for 60 or even $100 make some good profit along the way and have a much higher chance of selling start with cheaper products up to $30 and this is the sixth criteria that I have for you guys now before we move on to the next steps of conducting product research you need to know the difference between a general store a niche store and a one product store and which store should you have as a beginner it is much better to start with a niche store and that is because when you have a niche store you can start narrowing it down once you have a winning product you can start narrowing down your niche 
and seeing exactly what's going to go well for you. And when you have a niche store, it simply looks much better than a general store, which just has a whole bunch of randomized products which have nothing to do with one another. So it looks unorganized and unprofessional. And as for one product stores, this can also be a good idea, but only once you have vast experience in the dropshipping industry, in the dropshipping world, and you know exactly which product you need to sell and which product is gonna sell well. One product stores are really challenging because you only have one product and you're relying on that. So do not start with one product stores if you haven't dropshipped yet. Start with a niche store, which you will be able to brand professionally and slowly you can start narrowing down the winning niche. For example, if you're going for the pet niche, you're not going to sell a dog collar and only dog collars in different sizes and colors. You want to sell a whole bunch of pet accessories and start to slowly notice which ones are selling well and which ones aren't, and then start narrowing down your products from there. So start with a niche store, and I will show you exactly how you can do that and how you can narrow it down to winning products. Remember how I told you guys that you don't need to write anything down because I got you guys covered? Well, if you look now in the resources center of this course, you will see a spreadsheet called Product Research Dropshipping Spreadsheet. Download it now, save it onto your computer, and I'll talk to you about it very, very soon. Now let's move on to the next lesson, how to spy on successful dropshipping stores. There you will learn exactly which stores are selling well, which ones of them are using the dropshipping business model so that you can learn exactly which items are going well and start your product research from there. See you in the next lesson. In the previous lesson, we went over the six criteria that you need to know before starting your product research. In this lesson, you are going to learn exactly how you can find and spy on successful Shopify dropshipping stores. And the reason that you want to spy on other people's successful stores is because it will give you an idea of how successful stores are supposed to look like. But more importantly, you will be able to know exactly which products inside those stores are selling. And this is a secret method. Nobody is talking about this, but we are more than happy to share this valuable information with you. So let's get on with it, shall we? The first method to be able to successfully spy on other people's Shopify dropshipping stores is by using an extension called My Ad Finder. Now let me show you guys exactly what it is and how it works. First, open up your Google Chrome and search for My Ad Finder. Once you'll find it, simply click on Add to Chrome. And once you add it to your Chrome, what this does is it'll simply take all of your Facebook feed and it'll turn it into ads. So all you'll see in your Facebook feeds are ads, 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 and more ads. And what you'll be able to do with this is spot the dropshippers ads, go inside their site and see what they are selling. This won't help you to find out what they're selling, but it'll easily help you find ads to see what people are selling. And you will be able to differentiate the ads that don't work well to the ones that are performing well. So let's take a look at this extension and see how it works. Here's my Facebook account with the extension on. And the first product that I'm seeing is that toothbrush sterilizer that I was talking to you guys about. By the way, I didn't get to it through this ad, but because I went inside that website, Facebook started targeting me, other people who are running ads for this product because they saw that I'm probably interested in it. This is one way of how Facebook ads works. So here is one product. You can tell that it's a dropshipping product because I showed you guys, but if you just click on the link, here's the product. You have all kinds of accessories that go with it. So it looks good. You can tell that this is a niche store. He's going only for hygiene products, toothbrush products and so forth. So everything here makes sense, but that's just one example. If we just scroll down, we will see more ads, more ads, more ads and only ads. So here are some bed sheets. And if we continue scrolling down, by the way, this is also a dropshipping website. If I click on it, you'll be taken to the website. This niche is obviously for the bedroom. It's all about bed sheets, expensive ones at that. These are high ticket items. So that's another website. Keep scrolling down on Facebook. Here is some crazy cap bottle. It's a water bottle that probably has some extra features inside. And if you continue scrolling down, you'll keep getting more and more ads, 
Most of them will be dropshippers ads. This is not a dropshipping website, but let's scroll down a little bit more. And here's another dropshipping product. It's very easy to spot them out. It's usually an ad that's trying to sell a certain type of product. I personally saw this one. This is another high ticket item. Let's just go to the website. I'll just show you guys really quick. Okay, so here's the product page that we got to using that Facebook ad. He's selling this product for $199. For those of you who are curious, he's sourcing this product for only $130. This means that he's making a whopping 35% profit margin which is the minimum that you should make when you're dropshipping on Shopify. But making $65 per sale is a very good thing. But we're not talking about sourcing yet and profit margins and all of that. We're going to get to that soon. So that's the first method of how to spy unsuccessful Shopify dropshipping stores. Now, the second method that I want to teach you guys is a website called myip.ms. Let me show you guys. Here's the website. The first thing that we're going to do is click on websites and then world websites database. Once you click on that, you'll be able to create a search term for the niche that you are interested in. So if there is any niche that you have a certain passion for, I suggest that you search it in this search field over here. For example, I love pets. So let's go with the pets niche. We're going to search any website that has the words pets in it. And in the IP owner hosting field, scroll down until you get to Shopify Inc. Choose that and that's it create your search. Okay, so here is the search result on myip.ms for pets. Now what it does is it usually sorts it by world site popular rating. So the first the best rating is always going to be shown first. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to scroll to about the second or third page because there's a higher probability of finding the dropshipping websites on those pages. So here we are on the third page. Let's go into this sec pet supply. Just taking three random sites from the third page subscribe to our newsletter it's probably a dropshipping website let's see shop now and these totally look like dropshipping items i can tell you 100 percent that this is a dropshipping website okay here's the second site animal pet store and it looks like another dropshipping website it should be pretty obvious but let me just show you guys yeah so this is a random niche store he's not going for anything specific I doubt he's making too many sales, but I don't want to make any assumptions. Soon I'm going to show you guys a tool where you'll be able to see exactly which items are selling inside these Shopify websites and if these are even Shopify websites. So bear with me just a little bit more. This is going to get a lot more interesting with tools that nobody ever showed you guys before. By the way, all of these tools are completely free because I want you guys to succeed on a budget. So here's another website, PetIconic.com, that I got through myip.ms, and I can easily see that this is a dropshipping website. Site. I know these products, I've seen them around in all of the dropshipping suppliers that I'm working with. So using myip.ms is the second method to successfully find Shopify dropshipping websites. Now, the third method that I want to talk about, it's a less recommended one. I'm not going to demonstrate it. All you have to do is log into Facebook and create a search term which will direct you to other people's ads. For example, search on Facebook, buy now, shop now get yours now these are usually sentences that people are using inside of their ads and when you search facebook manually for ads you'll be able to find some in the video section now the fourth method that i want to talk about and this is a really important one this one has a lot of secrets inside and it's going to answer a lot of questions that many people have always been asking and nobody gave this answer so there is this extension called the koala inspector it's a chrome extension let me show you guys this right here is the Koala Inspector. It will help you inspect Shopify shops by seeing exactly which shops are Shopify shops, what apps they're using, other Shopify websites that are selling similar products to the one that you're on now, and you'll be able to also see which products are selling inside of those stores, which we will go over in the next lesson. But before we talk about those hot selling products, let's check out this extension and how it helps spy on other people's dropshipping stores. So once you add this extension to your Chrome, all you have to do is obviously install it and then go inside any Shopify websites using the tools that I gave you guys before. So using those tools, we got to these sites and let's see exactly how the Koala Inspector can help us here. So I'm on that website with a toothbrush, sterilizer case, UV light. All you have to do is click on that Koala Inspector icon on top. And as you can see, it dropped down this little menu and here is where the magic is. So in the structure, you can see exactly which Shopify apps this app is using. We're not going to talk too much about apps. It's very important, but it's not for this lesson. You can see new products that this store added to his site recently. 
You can check out the best sellers, which I'm going to talk about in the next lesson. Wait for this one. As you can see, this site is not selling, but that's not important. We're just using this as an example. If you click on find retailers, it'll show you other websites that are selling the same products as this site. As you can see, it's telling me to go to a specific product page for the comparison. So if I just click on that toothbrush holder, now that I'm in the product page, I'm simply going to click on that extension again. So here we go. Koala inspector find retailers and here you can see other websites that are selling this product you can see it on ebay and you can see it on walmart so this product not a lot of people are selling it i don't know if it's a good product to sell yet i don't know if it's a trending product all i know is that this website is not selling it and there's not a lot of people selling it if we do see that there's potential in this product we will go for it but once again that's for later on so here is another tool to see which other shopify websites are selling this product but since this guy is not successful in selling we're not going to focus on him let's move on to the next site that we saw so here is the duvai bed sheets let's click on the koala inspector and see what's going on with this site here are the apps new products that he added to the site as you can see everything is high ticket it's very very profitable best sellers so this guy is actually able to sell his products and he's probably making some good profit along the way let's see the third example this arctic chair site open koala inspector let's already go inside one of the products so that we'll be able to see other shopify sites that are selling the same products as this guy open up the koala inspector check out best sellers even though it's not important for this lesson but i know it's interesting for you guys so this guy is able to sell here is the product which we actually just saw a facebook ad on it and this is probably a trending product but since it's a high ticket and we're not starting with expensive products yet we're going to put that one on the side but once again we want to find other retailers and here is the example that i wanted to show you guys here you can see other Shopify websites that are selling the same products as this guy. So as you can see, I also had to do some research too to get to it. It's probably not going to show up on the first site, but the more you guys research, the more work you guys put in, the more success you're going to start to find. And now you're going to get your first assignment before moving on to the next lesson in this course. And in this assignment, what you're going to have to do is to find 10 Shopify dropshipping websites that are related to the niche that you want to go for. Bookmark those 10 sites and save them because we're going to use them for the next lessons to come. By the way, if you don't know which niche you're going to go for yet, it's perfectly fine. Just use the Facebook ads to see which ads are going well, which products inside those ads are going well and start bookmarking those sites. 10 Shopify dropshipping websites that are related to your niche bookmark them see you in the next lesson in the previous lessons we spoke about the six criteria for finding a good product to sell we spoke about how to search and find successful shopify dropshipping stores and before we move on to the next lesson on product research of how to find the best products that are selling within those stores and in others we need to make this small lesson in the middle and it's a very important one of how to find the best dropshipping suppliers to work with in our stores so that our products will ship out really quick and so that we can get very good customer support in case of item cancellations and returns we want to streamline the whole process we want everything to be working smooth within our business and we do not want to deal with unsatisfied customers and other subjects that will simply cause our business to stop growing many people are drop shipping from chinese suppliers which is totally fine it's a very good working method the items are very very cheap when they're coming from china but there are a few problems when working with chinese suppliers the first one being that their shipping times are considerably slow when compared to US suppliers. The second problem is on returns and order cancellations. They usually want proof of if the product arrived damaged, show us pictures. If the product is not working, show us how it's not working. So there's usually a lot of ping pong with Chinese suppliers. Return shipping is also usually not free. So the customer on the other end is just unsatisfied and he just wants to get this thing over with and he'll probably not buy from you again. But when working with US suppliers, this is usually a different situation. The return process is usually a lot easier and the products ship out much faster most of the customers receive their products within a week let's get on with the list and start talking about the best drop shipping suppliers that you need to work with in your drop shipping stores so the first supplier that i want to recommend a lot of people are not working with the supplier yet but this supplier is on the rise it's a huge online marketplace with a lot of sellers inside of it and this supplier is called etsy let's see what etsy is and what it's all about 
So here's the main page of Etsy. Once again, it's a huge online marketplace and it's on the rise. Let me show you guys Etsy stock to show you exactly where this platform is going. So as you can tell in the past year, there is a huge rise. If we take a look at the maximum real quick, you can see that Etsy has been here for a few years, but only in the last year was there a huge significant rise. If you look at the last year in the last one year, you can see that the stock was around $45 in the beginning of this year. And today one stock is around $130 dollars which means it more than tripled its stock just this year a lot of people are using etsy to buy products from a lot of people are using them to source their products for their dropshipping stores and as you can tell they have a whole bunch of categories it's very easy to find something that you need for your store for your niche or to get product ideas for example if you go inside the listings you can see that there are product reviews free shipping there's also high ticket prices which you can make great profit from but not in the beginning we're going to go for lower price items but as you can tell there's a great selection go ahead and browse around etsy i'm not going to go into it too much because i want to keep these videos very very short and very very informational so etsy is the first one on the list start browsing them now and check out all of the stuff that they have if you ask me they're going to get very close to amazon size in just a couple of years so go ahead and start working with them before your competition does the second supplier that i want to recommend to work with on your dropshipping stores is amazon on Amazon, there are tons of products. You can find anything and just about everything on Amazon. I'm sure that you've browsed them around. I'm sure that you've heard of them. I'm sure that I don't need to get into detail of what Amazon is all about. But if you sign up for their Prime account, you're gonna get free shipping on all of their orders instead of the $25 minimum. All of the products will ship in in the first couple of days and the products will arrive within the first week of the order it usually takes about three or four days and if we go back to etsy for a second if you go inside each product you'll also be able to see how long it takes for the items to ship so let's just go inside this product listing really quick if we just scroll down ready to ship in two to ten business days shipping from the united states so you want to find products that are shipping from the united states two to ten business days is not good in this particular example over here but if we just click on another product for example this picture over here once again just scroll down and see how long it takes and where it's shipping from this is a good example one to three business days from the united states it's very easy to find these products you have the reviews so using etsy is really really easy so on amazon if you have the amazon prime membership all of the prime products will ship in the first couple of days and the customer will get his product within that same week that he ordered the product the third u.s supplier that i want to recommend that you guys work with on your dropshipping stores is walmart a lot of people are also dropshipping from walmart this is nothing new but the products are refreshing really really fast on walmart just as they are on amazon so it's another huge marketplace with a lot of sellers inside that are selling their products and you can benefit from it on your dropshipping stores so walmart is the third option that i want to recommend to you guys and I only want to recommend one more supplier for you guys to work with because I don't want you guys to get too confused in the beginning I want you to focus on one supplier and then two suppliers and then maybe three suppliers at the most if you're gonna work with five or maybe even ten suppliers you're going to see that it's not going to be beneficial it's very very confusing and just very complicated work with two or three suppliers it's more than enough so the last supplier that I want to recommend that you guys work with this is the fourth supplier it's a supplier called banggood many of you have heard of it many of you haven't this is a very drop shipping friendly supplier with warehouses in the US and also in China so when you're searching for a product for example cat toys when you get the search results you have your ship from click on that and choose only United States warehouses now you can see all of the cat toys that they have from United States warehouses. Do that on each and every one of your searches. And there you have another supplier with thousands of products in US warehouses. So those are the four dropshipping suppliers that I recommend that you guys work with. Go inside each one of their sites right now, especially the ones that you guys haven't heard about. Learn about them, see how fast they ship their products, make sure that they're shipping from the United States. And this is where you're going to find the best dropshipping products to source with the best shipping times and very easy and convenient customer service. So we have Etsy, we have Amazon, we have Walmart, and we have Banggood. The top four US suppliers to work with on your dropshipping shipping stores bookmark them and in the next lesson we're going to learn about how to find the best drop shipping products in the shopify stores that you spied on the last lesson 
and new methods of finding more products that are selling well in other stores. That's it for this lesson. See you in the next one. In the previous product finding videos, we learned about the six criteria for finding a good product to sell. We also learned about how to find successful Shopify dropshipping stores, and we learned about the best dropshipping suppliers to work with to ship out our items really quick and have excellent, superb customer service along the way. Now, this video is going to be an exciting one. How to find the best and most profitable dropshipping products to sell on our stores that are trending today, products that don't have a lot of competition and have a high profit margin. One way to find dropshipping products is by seeing what's working well for other people with Shopify dropshipping stores. I showed you one example a couple of lessons ago and now I'll show you more. And another way to conduct product research is simply by seeing what's going well on the market without researching specific Shopify dropshipping stores. And with that, you'll get the best trending products that are selling today. So let's begin. Remember how I mentioned a couple of lessons ago that there are a few methods to find Shopify dropshipping stores. Some of those methods include using Facebook ads, using a site called myip.ms to search Shopify dropshipping websites. Let's use that Facebook ads example and try to find something through there. Now, one way to do it is using that extension called my ad finder or by manually searching Facebook for ads. If you guys don't recall any of this, I highly suggest to restart the product research videos because you guys need to understand the first part in order to move on to this one. Okay, so let's begin. We're gonna manually search Facebook for free shipping, which is one of the texts that I told you guys that you will find ads through this manual search. So let's go with this one, free shipping when you shop now. It got 1.9 million views, it looks very viral. So what we're seeing here is a pooper scooper for your pets, for your dogs. And if we click on see more, you can see the product description that he wrote for this product. And here you can see that it's a very viral post. It has about 9,500 likes and five and a half thousand comments. If we click on that, we can see just how viral it is and if it's still trending in the last few days. We don't want to go for a product that was popular six months ago or one year ago. We want a product that's popular now. So one way to do it is to check the engagement in the post itself. So I click to see the comments and instead of seeing the most relevant comments, I want to see the newest comments. This way I'll see if this product is still trending today. And as we can see, I'm going to click on view more comments. We have comments one day ago, six days ago, one week ago. So this product is still trending. This guy is probably selling this product. So let's move on to the next step. We'll click on his website and here's the pooper scooper website. Now there are a couple of ways to see where he's getting these products from, if they're selling and what other websites are selling this very product to check out the competition. You've probably already guessed it, but one method is using that Koala Inspector extension that I showed you guys a couple of lessons ago. So just open up the extension, click on Find Retailers, and you'll get a list of other websites that are selling this product. But as you can see, it's only Shopify website, so you can check the competition. But it didn't give me the information that I was looking for on where this guy is sourcing his product from. So using Koala Inspector is one tool, but the other tool that I wanna to talk to you guys about is using a reverse image search. By the way, if you haven't noticed, I'm teaching you guys how to conduct product research and spy on stores and do all these things using techniques that don't cost you guys any money at all. I know that it's really tough to start everything is on a budget. I'm giving you guys the best tools absolutely for free because I want to show you guys that anybody can do this. All you need is the willingness to learn a computer and a Wi-Fi connection. You can have successful Shopify stores generating sales and profit without spending a dime on your product research. You can use paid tools to research the market, but I'm showing you guys that it's still possible without spending a dime and you can still have successful stores that generate sales and profit. Once you start generating sales and profit, start putting in your budget on other things, on better marketing and paid apps and paid tools. But first, learn to succeed on a budget. After that, you'll be able to do pretty much anything you want. So moving back, reverse image search. All you have to do is right click on the image and click on search Google for image. Now Google will show you all of the websites that have this picture in them. So as you can see, we have Facebook. That's probably where we saw the post. You have the CodaScooper.com website, which is where we were at, CodaScooper. We got Best Friend Brand, which is probably one of the competitors. Let's go to the next page 
Organics Pets, another competitor. The Koto Scooper is also putting it on Pinterest. So, so far I found competitors, but I couldn't find the source. This is why you need to know about multiple techniques in order to get the answers that you guys are looking for. So we easily found way more competitors than the Koala Inspector showed me, but I still want to know the source. So another way to do it is simply by going into Amazon because it's one of the biggest retailers in the world. Here, we're going to just make a basic search for Pooper Scooper, even though that's not what they called it. Well, these this competitor called it Pooper Scooper, but this guy is calling it Coda Scooper. So the main search term for this product is Pooper Scooper. So once I search for it, you see these products, it's not related to the one that we just saw, but we're just gonna keep scrolling until we find the item or something that's related to it. So let's just go to the next page. And here we go. Look at this portable pooper scooper. Now let's look at this product and look at the original product. You guys agree with me that it's the same product, just probably in different colors. And if you scroll down and look at similar products, you can probably even find this product in a cheaper version. Check out this one, $14.66, and it's got cooler colors. So you can find the item very, very easily by creating a reverse image search and seeing the competition and maybe even finding the source, or by simply searching Amazon or other suppliers that I talked to you guys about earlier. You can try Banggood or Etsy or Walmart. And once you find the product, you can see how much profit these guys are making. So if we're buying it for $14.66, this guy is selling it for 109 this guy doesn't have a currency converter which is not user friendly but i'm just going to convert this for you guys 109.75 divided by 3.4 so this guy's selling it for roughly 32 dollars and you can buy it for less than half that price that's how much profit he's making he's making about 15 dollars 16 or 17 bucks a pop which makes this a profitable product and in order to see if this guy is selling the product all you have to do is use that koala inspector as you know open up the inspector see best sellers and as you can see here's the variation he is selling it and it's a one product store he's not selling anything else so we used facebook ads we found a viral ad that's still relevant that has comments within the past few days we went inside this guy's website and we can see that he's still selling it we were able to see that there's other competitors but not too much so there is enough room to put this product on our shops and sell it and we were able to find his source where he's buying the product from and how much he's paying for it it's a rough estimate it's different colors but it's the same product and i always advise to never copy and paste any one of your competitors not the pictures not the titles not the descriptions, everything needs to be your own. So it's a good thing that we found different colors and different variations for this product. So we talked about using the reverse image search. We talked about using the Koala Inspector. Both of them can show you the sources and the competition for the products that you are looking at. Now I wanna talk about another method of finding good products that are trending now. You will find a lot of best sellers this way. And this method doesn't have to do with spying on other people's stores. This method is called going to Amazon Amazon's movers and shakers. What is Amazon's movers and shakers you ask? Let me show you. Go to Google, search for Amazon movers and shakers, and here we go. Amazon calls this the biggest gainers in sales rank over the past 24 hours, updated hourly. So there's nothing more trending than this, there's nothing more updated than this. Every hour they're refreshing with the most trending products so you can catch the waves way before anyone else. There are many categories to look at. You guys need to know which products you should sell and which products are not meant for dropshipping. For example, Amazon devices and accessories, you probably can sell them, but it's better to not. It has Amazon all over it. Arts, crafts and sewing is a great category for dropshipping baby products but just be careful with the choking hazard cell phones and accessories you can find some impulsive products over there in clothing there's a whole bunch of products that you can also find for drop shipping but there's the whole dimensions and the sizes which can get confusing so you shouldn't start with the clothing you can try groceries some drop shippers are doing it but i want to take you guys to the best and most trending categories in home and kitchen you're going to find a lot kitchen and dining is also great home and garden all of these categories Patio, lawn and garden, pet supplies is great, sports and outdoors, tools and home improvement. These are the best categories for dropshipping. You can always find impulsive items over there. Let's just click on any of them. Patio, lawn and garden. And here's the number one movers and shakers in patio, lawn and garden. 
We're not gonna go into politics when we're drop shipping, so stay out of politics. We're not gonna sell products that cost between $200 to $750. So just start scrolling and see what products are trending in the last hour. And using that, you can do a reverse image search to see the competition, how many people are selling this product, and if there's enough room for you to enter. If there's over 10 pages of sellers on Google, forget about it. But if it's just a couple of pages, then there's more than enough room for you to get inside and gain some profits from that product. For example, let's check out this Guardians of the Galaxy pot. I've been seeing this all throughout this year. Let's right click on that one and search Google for the image. This product, by the way, is saturated, but it was just one example that I wanted to show you guys. Check out these grow lights for these plants. This looks unique. I haven't seen this product before. Let's see what else we can find. Inflatables are also going really well right now because it's Q4 and it's the holiday season. And by the way, we have blogs for the best products that you need to sell in every occasion, including Christmas. I also spoke about inflatables in that blog, just so you guys know. So there's a lot of potential that I'm seeing over here. And so use Amazon movers and shakers to find products, not from people's Shopify dropshipping stores in a different method to see what's trending in the past hour and in the past 24 hours, find the competition, see where there's not a lot of competition and get those products to your store. Now, those are the methods that I want to talk about, but now you guys have a very important assignment. Remember how a few lessons ago I told you to download a product research spreadsheet? Now you're going to have to use it. Your assignment before heading on to the next lesson, and this one is going to take you guys some time, which is a good thing because you guys need to understand that product research needs to take you time. The more you work on it, the more secret gems you're going to find. If you think 10 minutes of work are going to find you your next bestseller, you're completely wrong, just like most other dropshippers. Now let's take it to the next level, put in some real work, and then you'll see some real results. So your assignment before heading on to the next lesson is to open that product research spreadsheet. Here we go. Now, what I want you guys to do is to only fill in two columns for now. Those two columns are the product column and the source column. What you need to do now is to start researching the market using the tools that I provided you in this lesson and in the past couple of lessons to find Shopify dropshipping stores, see what's selling inside those stores using Koala Inspector, use Amazon movers and shakers to find more trending products, use the reverse image search to see more competition and sources that are selling those products to see that there is enough profit for you guys to get inside and that there is not a huge fierce competition for that product. So what I want you guys to do now is simply fill in the product and the source let's do the example of the product that we just saw here it is the pooper scooper so this is a good product with not a lot of competition and the profit margin is at least 50 percent if not more so let's add this product all you have to do is simply take the product's name i'm not going to use this name because that's the name of the seller portable pooper scooper with bag copy that name into the product and in the source simply fill in the url copy the url paste it inside the source so that's how you fill in one product for now we're not going to touch the rest of the columns that's going to be in the next video your assignment is to fill in 25 rows of products with the product's name and the product's link product name product link 25 times using all of the methods that we talked about so that's all regarding product research for this video in the next video we're still going to learn a few more things about product research and with that we're going to sum it up we still have so much more things to do we need to create our stores we need to market our stores we need to get our first sales so 25 products work hard on them see you in the next video Check out this product that's making over $1,000 in profit for every sale. And here's the super viral ad the seller's running for that same product. And here is the seller supplier. He's buying it for only $288 and selling it for $2,009. That's over $1,700 in profit on a proven winning product. There are tons of winning products just like this one on AutoDS's winning products hub. When I click on one of the products, I get all of the details, including the seller's website, the seller's ad copy, the audience targeting, the profit potential, and when I click on this button, it'll import to my store so that I could sell the same product in under five seconds. Wanna learn more?
subscribe to our YouTube channel and head over to AutoDS.com to start your trial. In the previous lessons, you got an assignment to add 25 products to the product research spreadsheet. And these are not just randomly chosen products. These are products that have been proven to work for other dropshippers. You used myip.ms to find Shopify sites or you search Facebook ads for them. It doesn't matter. Once you combine the tools that I gave you in the previous lessons and you added them to here, we can continue moving on to the next steps with these high potential products. So the first thing that I want you guys to do is start filling in the rest of the columns that we didn't fill in in the past lesson. So right now you only have your product and your source. Now let's move on to the next columns. The first one is asking you if you are passionate about this product. So if you have no passion whatsoever for this product, if you do not care for it, you probably won't do a good job trying to market this product and adding a good product page for it. So if you have no passion for the product, simply click on the arrow and click on no. But since we're talking about this portable pooper scooper, I'm not totally passionate about poop, but I am passionate about the product. So I'm going to mark this one. Yes. The next question is, is this product hard to find in stores? So this pooper scooper with the bag is hard to find in stores because you usually just have regular pooper scoopers or just a bag, but not the combination of them both. This is actually very, very convenient when you're walking out with your dogs. I did not see it in regular pet shops, so it is hard to find in stores. The answer here is yes. The next question is, is it hard to guess the price of this product? Let's take a look at the product again, just in case you guys forgot. So here is the product. Is it hard to guess the price? I would say yes, because a pooper scooper can cost up to $30 or $35 and it would still make sense to buy for this price. But if we would have had this product in other stores and it was easy to find in other stores, then people probably have bought it before and they would know that this product is supposed to cost around, let's say $20. And then you're losing the whole effect of is it hard to guess the price? But in this case, it is hard to guess the price. So I'm going to say yes. The next question is, is this product safe to sell? Now, the meaning in safe to sell is, is it a safe product? For example, toys for children that are relatively small are not safe products to sell because there is a choking hazard. Beauty products have all kinds of formulas inside them and you have no idea what it's actually doing to your skin and so forth. So those are also not safe products to sell, even though a lot of dropshippers are selling them. You can kind of get the idea of what products are safe to sell compared to products that are not safe to sell. So this pooper scooper, there's nothing not safe about it. It's totally safe. So let's go for it. The answer is yes. The next question is, can this product be bought without research? Remember how I told you a couple of lessons ago that you need a product that it's hard to make any research on it. For example, if you're selling t-shirts and the buyer doesn't know his exact size or shoes or socks or whatever, and he needs to go and check it, or maybe he needs to talk to his wife about it because it's a product that needs a conversation with his wife, needs some kind of approval before buying any product that will make the buyer say, wait, okay, before I buy it, let me just go check something about this product. And then maybe I'll come back later and buy it. Most chances are we're going to lose those buyers, but this pooper scooper, there's nothing much to research about it. It does exactly what it says it's going to do. There are no sizes. There are no different dimensions. There's not much to be researched about it. It's a one problem, one solution product. So this product can be bought without much research. So the answer here is yes. Does this product solve a problem or stand out? Obviously the pooper scooper solves a problem. I can pick up my pet's poop and I got the bag connected. So it's very easy. It's very convenient. This solves a problem that a lot of people have when they're walking their dogs. They got the bags in one pocket and they're putting their hand inside the bag and they're turning it inside out with the poop inside. So that's a big problem that pet lovers have people who have dogs. This takes care of your hygiene and it makes it much more convenient. So this solves a problem and it stands out. The answer here is obviously yes. The next question is, does the product cost less than $30? In this case, it costs $14.66. So once again, the answer is yes, it costs less than $60. And the final question that you're going to get in this spreadsheet is, does this product comply with Facebook ads policies? This is a very important thing that you guys need to read and understand before you start creating your Facebook ads. We're going to get to that in a couple of lessons and it's going to be super interesting. You're going to learn everything about it. But before you start it, you have to learn about the policies and make sure that you comply with them. So in this course, you have a resources PDF, which you can find below this video on the course page. 
inside this resources PDF, you have the links to everything that I'm talking about, all the links inside a PDF. So it's going to be very well organized for you. But just to give you guys a quick glance at the Facebook policies, it's also going to be in the resources link. So here is a whole bunch of stuff that you just cannot do when you're running Facebook ads. For example, you cannot run ads on tobacco products or knives and things that are dangerous, drugs, weapons, ammunition, explosives, adult content. Just go over this policy, read it. It's going to take a few minutes and it's definitely worth it because nobody wants to put up with banned ad accounts. It's super annoying. You can just waste a lot of money on it. So make sure that you are well familiar with Facebook's ad policies. So once you go through that, you will know if your product does comply with Facebook policies or not. In this case, it does. And now I have answers for my first product. Now what I want you guys to do is to fill in all of the 25 products, fill in all of the columns, all of the questions that they're asking you. It's easy to find the answers. Once you fill in all of the 25 products, we can move on to the next step. So I'm going to do it on my side really quick. You do it on your side really quick. And I'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Okay, after we're done filling in the columns, the next step is to take all of the products where you answered yes to each and every one of the columns and keep only those rows. Delete the rest of the rows. What we're trying to do here is to narrow down the products so that we will have anywhere around five products that we will be able to create our store around those products. So in order to delete the rows, all you have to do is right click on the row on the left side and click on delete or hide the row, doesn't matter. So I'll start it on my side, you start it on your side, and I'll see you again in just a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm done. I'm down to about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight products. Now you should have anywhere around five to 10 products. It really depends on the answers that you guys gave down here. The point here is that we already narrowed down winning products that we can start building our stores around. Now, since we're not going for a general store, let's see what products we have here and think about which niche we wanna go for. So I got that portable pooper scooper. We got that toothbrush sanitizer. We got a double retractable dual leash for dogs. We have an elevated raised dog bowl, a wireless phone charger, a wall decoration canvas, a night star projector, and a cell phone disc, which I want you guys to see this by the way. It has nothing to do with, with what we're about to do, but this is a, actually a really cool product that I just found while doing this product research. And it already sold over 10,000 units. And what it's supposed to do is balance the energy that your cell phone is transmitting. So that's it, I'm just gonna put this away. I already have an idea of what I'm gonna do once I'm done recording this course for you guys. So moving on, now I can see one niche that's going well for me here, and that's the pet niche. And it makes sense because I love pets. My ads took me to pets, so I found a lot of pet items and also other products which I'm sure would go well if you built your store around them. But since we're going for a niche store, the pets looks like a good niche store to go with the product research that I made. You guys will have the solutions to what niche you need to go for with the product research that you did on your side. So let me just delete the products that are not relevant. Even though they are relevant for dropshipping, they're actually even very relevant, but not for the store that we're about to create. So we're just gonna hide these rows. Okay, so I want to create my store around these four products. We're gonna choose one main product with the highest potential. That's the product that we're gonna market. And if we wanna add more related products, we can, but this is enough to already create a store around it. This is what we're going to go over in the next lessons. So that's all I want you guys to do for this lesson. You have your 25 products, you answered all of the questions in the columns, and you narrowed it down to anywhere around five products that we can finally create a store around. Even if you have four items, it's also totally fine. It's enough to create a store, market the product that you want, and start generating sales and profit. So that's it for this lesson. That's it regarding product research and suppliers and how to find the stores and what's selling and whatnot. Now we're ready to move on to the next lesson. You are going to start creating your Shopify store. So now that you have your profitable and high potential winning products, save them, move on to the next lesson, how to create your Shopify store. See you there.
Okay, before we begin the next lesson, I want you guys to give yourselves a little pat on the back because you guys really deserve it. You've worked really hard until now with the product research, you added all of the products and you narrowed them down, and you watched all of the videos and learned up until now. By making it this far, you're already showing that you're serious in running and creating your own online business, so let's continue with that and reach our road to success. Now, what is Shopify? For those of you who don't know, Shopify is a web application that allows you to create and run your own online stores and it's one of the most used selling platforms worldwide by entrepreneurs all over, small, medium, big, large, the sizes don't matter. A lot of people are using Shopify because it's easy, it's simple and it simply makes the whole process of creating an online store much much easier than it was a few years ago when there was no Shopify and people were simply creating their websites using third party services and companies or those who have knowledge in HTML and JavaScript and so they just went on and coded their own websites. Today anyone can create their own online store and it's super easy and Shopify is the platform that you want to do it on. So that's a brief explanation of what is Shopify. Now the next question is why Shopify? They must not be the only ones who can allow you to run your own online store, that's true. But Shopify still makes it really really easy to create your store. No technical skills are required in order to create your store, you don't need to know HTML and coding and all of that. They also have a 99.99% uptime, their host is very very reliable so you won't have to worry about your website going down because of host, database, maintenance and all those kinds of issues. Another reason is that Shopify has a whole bunch bunch of apps inside of their app store they have developers working on them all the time and I'm not talking about developers who are working for Shopify I'm talking about freelance developers developers who work in all kinds of small and medium companies to make great apps for Shopify so there's a whole bunch of apps there's a lot of competition on those apps many are free many are paid and their goal is to simply help you convert sales or retarget your ads for email marketing and so forth and at the end of the day it'll simply allow you to have your own online asset which generates sales generates profit as long as you did your product research correctly marketed your product correctly that's more than enough to start converting those sales so it's got a super friendly entry barrier because you don't need any technical skills to create a trustworthy brand in a great looking store it's fully customizable with the apps and the themes and all of the stuff that i'm going to show you you're creating your own profit generating internet asset and those three reasons should already be enough to convince you that shopify is the right platform to sell your products on that's the quick intro on Shopify, now let's move on to the next lesson, create your own Shopify store. See you there. Okay, so now that we've used all of the tools that we had in the product research stage, and we've narrowed down our best selling products, we are now ready to create our own Shopify store. So let me walk you through this process. This is probably one of the most easiest lessons in this whole course, so enjoy it. So now all that you have to do is sign up for Shopify and get your 14 day free trial using the sign up link that we have in the resources PDF for this course. I once again remind you guys to use this resources PDF because in that PDF you have links to everything that we're talking about in this course, including the suppliers and the links and the tools and everything that you guys need is simply organized in the resources PDF. So use that resources PDF to sign up for Shopify and then you'll get your 14 day free trial which you will need to build your store and import your products and market your products. All of those things we are going to do together so don't worry about it. Just get your 14 day free trial by clicking on the link. Once you click on that link you'll be taken to this page as we see in front of me. Don't worry about these prices you won't have to pay them because we're just going to use our free trial and once our stores will be completely ready we'll subscribe for the first plan. But don't worry about that for now, we are going for low budgets. We want to succeed on low budgets and I want to show you guys that it's possible. So just scroll down, click on start free trial. Now simply enter your email address, your password and your store name. Now your store name is going to look like this. Let's say I'm calling it pet shop. This name is obviously taken, but let's say we're using this name. Your website is going to look like this. Your store's name, mypetshop.myshopify.com. Now you don't want your store to have this address and that's perfectly fine. This is just a store name that you will use, but later on you're going to connect it to your own domain name, www.whateveryouwant.com, and that's going to be your store's website address. I'm also going to show you how to do that. 
but we're gonna get to that step by step. So first, just choose a name for your store. Later on, you'll be able to connect it to a different name, but this will be your main name, which only you will see. So let's go ahead and choose a name that wasn't chosen in the past so we can continue the sign up process. Let's say Pet Shop Discounts and it's not taken. So Pet Shop Discounts will be our store name, which we will later change it to our own domain name. Okay, so this is the first screen that you're going to be greeted with. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You don't have to answer any of these questions. You can just go ahead and click on skip. Next, enter your basic information. So first name, last name, your address, postal code, city, phone number. Choose if you have a registered business under your name or not and then just click on enter my store. And so here we are with our brand new Shopify account. We have 14 days to do whatever we want. Now we're gonna start optimizing our stores, adding products, making our logos, and everything else that we need to do to get this store up and running with the best dropshipping products. And this is where we are going to get wild and creative. So get ready. Your assignment for this lesson is to create your Shopify store using the sign up link in the resources PDF to get your 14 day free trial. And I'll see you on the next lesson where you will choose a name for your business for everyone to see. See you in the next lesson. Now that we have our Shopify accounts and 14 day free trial up and running, let's go ahead and get to work. Now, the first thing that we want to do is get a name for your business. The best way to go about this is using a business name generator tool. They're completely free to use and they help us get some great names for our business. Let's take a look. Here is a business name generator. The link to the site is businessnamegenerator.com. You have the link to this website in the resources PDF. Let me just remind you guys once again that in the resources PDF for this course, you have links to everything that I'm talking about, including this cool free tool. So let's go ahead and use it. So the first thing that you need to do is think about the niche that you are going for. Remember that product research spreadsheet that you use, you narrow down your products, you narrow down your niche, you know what niche you're going for. If you don't know which niche you're going for yet, I advise you to go back to the product research stage, work on your product research. You need to have that stage done and filled in before moving on to these steps. So I know that I'm going for the dog niche using my product research. I narrowed, I narrowed, I narrowed it down to dogs. So I want to go for the dog niche. So I'm just going to search dog pet shop and see what kind of results I can get. By the way, it's also going to check the domain availability with GoDaddy, which means the results that I have, I will be able to connect a domain name with them. Let me show you guys. So upon searching dog pet shop, it's showing me all of these cool business names that I can use and that I can also connect a domain name with them. For example, let's see these names. Let's see some results that I got. Petqualified.com sounds like a cool site. Let's see what else. Dog Duke also sounds pretty cool. Pet get also has a nice catchy name to it. So as you can tell, you're actually getting some pretty good results to name your business with your niche. Once you find something that sounds catchy, let's say for example, we wanna go with pet style. I'm gonna click on that. Now, as you can tell, I'm getting all of these domain name results that I can use for my site. For example, petstyle.co, I can go with petstyle.mx. Now, here are a few tips. First of all, you don't want too many syllables in your domain name because you don't want it to be too long. You want a short, catchy name that people will be able to remember. If your customers memorize your domain names, it's going to work that much better. So for example, you can go for .org, it's okay. But once again, .coms usually have the best impact. They usually cost a couple dollars more every year than other domains, but it's still definitely worth it. So go for short names and try to catch those .coms. So that's how simple it is to get a great name for your business, which soon we will also be able to connect our domain with it. This is your way to find unique names for the niche that you are going for. It's giving you great ideas. You can even use these words and generate more ideas for your domain and for your business name. But this tool has it all and it's completely free to use and it's checking the domain name availability on the way. So it's a great all in one tool to use to name your business. That's it for this lesson. Your assignment is an easy one. Get a name for your business. Make sure it's catchy. Make sure that there's not too many syllables and make sure that you'll have that dot com, which we will learn in the next couple of lessons, how to implement it in your Shopify stores. Get a name for your business. Write it down on the side. See you in the next lesson. 
In the previous lesson, your assignment was to create a name for your business using helpful tools like the business name generator, which is provided in the resources PDF for this course. Now, in this lesson, what we are going to do is connect the name that you found for your business to your own unique domain name. Now, you've already searched for your domain name's availability using the business name generator tool, which gives you that ability. But if you didn't check your domain availability yet, you can simply do so by entering godaddy.com and simply search for the domain that you want. Now, using the help of the business name generator tool, I was able to think of a pretty cool domain name, which goes by doggydogclub.com. Now, as you can see, this domain is available for $12 a month. I could have gotten the availability for this domain using the name generator, which I showed you in the lesson before. So to connect your domain to Shopify, once you found out that the domain name that you want is available, what you have to do is on your Shopify dashboard, click on online store, then click on domains below. And here you can see your default domain, which we chose when we created our account, petshopdiscounts.myshopify.com. I told you to forget about this name because your audience are not going to know about this store name. Now what we're going to do is simply connect it to the domain name that we want. So since we already know the name of our domain, what we're gonna do is click on buy new domain and check the price if we're going to do it directly through Shopify. So here I already know that I want my domain name to be doggydogclub.com. Now Shopify is also checking the domain name availability. And as you can see, it's showing me that it's available. So doggydogclub.com is available for $14 a year. You can go ahead and click buy if you want to buy it. But wait, remember how I told you that we're going to do everything on a budget and we're going to pay the lowest prices possible to get the store to succeed since we're only in the beginning and you need to see that everything can still be done on a budget. So we're seeing $14 a year, which isn't a high price but let's check if there are better. Head to godaddy.com. The link to godaddy.com can also be found in the resources PDF for this course. So once you're in godaddy.com, check this out. Move over to the right and click on promos. Now, as you can see, there is a promo on godaddy.com. Get your own domain for $4.99. $4.99 for a whole year already sounds a whole lot better than $14. So there's your way to get your promo for your first year of having your domain. All you have to do is click on show code and we got our code for getting our domain for $5 a year. Let's copy the promo code and now let's buy our domain name and connect it to Shopify. So we're back to the main page. We want doggydogclub.com. Now we can see doggydogclub.com is available. We're going to click on add to cart. Now in the cart, we're going to update it to just one year. Here is our $4.99. We're just going to click on continue to cart. Here, simply click on no thanks. We don't need this and we don't need this. We don't need anything other than our coming soon page, which we have for now. We don't want to create an email address for your domain. You can do it. I'm just not doing it for this example. It's another two bucks a month. There are also other ways to do this. So it's not a now or never choice. Click on continue to cart. And now we're in the cart. As you can see, the promo code is already inserted. Our subtotal is $4.99, which is 72% off for the whole year of having this domain name, doggydogclub.com. Everything looks good. Everything sounds good. Now we're just going to click on check out. Create your account if you haven't already done so. And click on create account. Now let's move on to the billing information. After the billing information, you have your payment information. So add your credit card. Finally, make sure all of the information is correct and hit complete purchase. So we got doggydogclub.com. The total cost is $4.99. We got a little bit of tax, so $5.17 is the total order price. Here's the payment information and the billing information. Once everything looks good on your side, simply click on complete purchase. And that's it. We have our order. We have our domain name. The next step is to activate the domain that you just purchased. So head over to your email that you use to sign up with GoDaddy. And in the email, scroll down to get started in order to activate your products. 
Here they're asking you to verify your email. So I went back to my email and I noticed that they sent me a verification link. We're just gonna click on verify email now. Success, we've now verified your email address. Now if we go back to products and refresh that page or just click on view my domains, it doesn't matter. It'll take you to the same place. So here's the domain, doggydogclub.com. We verified our email addresses and now we can connect it to Shopify. So now head back to Shopify. Now we don't want to buy this domain for $14 because we just bought it for $4.99 or was it $5.17? So let's just go ahead and go back. Now what we want to do is instead of buying a new domain, we want to connect an existing domain that we already have, which is the one that we already bought. So I clicked on that. Now it's asking me what is the domain's address. So it is doggydogclub.com. Click on next. Now choose whether you want to connect it manually or connect it automatically. First, we're going to try to connect it automatically. And if there are any problems, we're going to go with the manual method. And if you need help with connecting it manually, just know that I added a tutorial link in the resources PDF for this course. So let's go ahead and click connect automatically. And here we go, connecting your domain doggydogclub.com to Shopify site from Shopify requires that they change some DNS records. It's fine. Just click on connect. Success, you have successfully enabled the service Shopify site from Shopify for doggydogclub.com. This means that we were able to automatically connect our domain, which we bought separately from GoDaddy.com for just $5 instead of paying Shopify the full $14 for that whole year. So now we're just going to click on close. Now you can see it's verifying the connection. Let's let it connect. And now, as you can see, our domain has successfully connected with Shopify. The old web address was petshopdiscounts.myshopify.com. No thanks. The new domain is doggydogclub.com, which sounds a lot better. And it is definitely a name that our audience can connect to. They can memorize it and they can feel like they themselves joined our doggy dog club. So that is how you can find, purchase, and connect your own unique domain name to Shopify. And so your assignment for this video, if it's not obvious enough already, is to purchase your own unique domain name, add it to your Shopify store, and now you'll have your own store, you'll have your own domain name, and we can move on to the next lesson, create your own unique store logo. No technical skills required, no graphic skills required, just the free awesome tools that I'm gonna show you to create your own professional website. We're moving forward, it's looking good, and soon it's gonna look great. Get your domain name, purchase it, connect it, see you in the next lesson. In the previous lessons, you've created your own Shopify account, you've brainstormed and generated a unique name for your business, you purchased your own .com domain and connected it to your Shopify account, and now in this lesson, you are going to create your very own professional store logo, as I've mentioned, you don't need any graphical skills. You don't need friends or to hire any professional graphic designers. You're going to do this completely by yourself. It's not going to cost you a dime and it's going to look totally professional for your new brand. So let's get on with it. Head over to a website called hatchfold.shopify.com. Needless to say, the link can be found in the resources PDF that we have for this course. So always check out the resources PDF. You're going to find all of the information that I'm talking about in this course. So let's head over to the Hatchful website. Okay, here we are. Now we're just gonna go ahead and click on get started. Now they're asking you to choose a business space. So just choose something that's connected or related to your niche. For example, we have fashion, health and beauty, home and garden. But since I'm going for doggydogclub.com, it's obviously the pets niche. So I'm going to go ahead and click pets and choose next. Now they're asking you to choose your visual style. So once again, choose something that connects to your niche, that connects to your brand. So you can go for something calm. You can go for something classic. You can go for something innovative if you're going for tech gadgets and so forth. I think that friendly is the most relatable visual style that I can have for pets because it's a very, very friendly niche. So I'm going to choose friendly and click on next. Now they're asking you to add your business name. So the store that I'm creating is called doggy dog club and it matches the business's name you can also choose a slogan because some of the logos that they're going to give you will have the ability to add a slogan under them so let's just choose a slogan for all dog lovers next now they're asking you to tell them where this logo will be used so we're going to use it for an online store or website but don't worry because hatchful will create and save your logo in a directory in many different file formats for your website for social media and for ads 
So just choose online store or website and click next. Now Hatchful has already created logos for me with all of the information that I've provided. So let's take a look. We have Doggy Dog Club in each and every one of them and you can see the icons. So this one actually is a pretty good match. Doggy Dog Club, I like the colors. You have a dog paw slash D for dog. So this logo really looks good and it makes sense. This one has a fish aquarium, so it has nothing to do with dogs. So as you can see, some of these matches are really spot on and some are less. Take a look at this one, Doggy Dog Club with the dog in the middle. It's a very simple logo and it looks clean and professional. I also really like this one. Let's see some more. Doggy Dog Club with a fish, not relevant. This one also doesn't look relevant. Doggy Dog Club with a bone in the middle. I also really like this one. It looks professional. So as you guys can see, some of these logos look really, really good and really professional and you really don't need anything more than this to start a store and have it generate sales and profit. This is completely free. This one also looks really cool. A circle with a dog house in the middle, doggy dog club. So once again, this is really all you guys need to create your professional logo. You don't need to pay anyone for it. You don't need to open up your phone and see who is a graphic designer in your contacts that will have to do you a favor. This is completely free and it's professional and it gets everything done. So let's just go ahead and choose a logo. Okay guys, it was really hard to choose because there's a lot of good variety and good choices here, but I'm just gonna go for this one, Doggy Dog Club for all dog lovers. And as you can see, there's a dog logo up here, which is like multiplied three times. So it looks professional, it looks good, it gets the message through. It looks clean and simple, and I simply really, really like this one, so I'm gonna go for it. So once you found your logo, on the left side, you can change the name or the slogan. You can change the fonts, so you can play around and see whichever font looks good for your logo. I actually like the default one, so I don't think I'm gonna change it. On the left side, you can also change the logo's colors. So if you didn't like this blue one, you can go for different colors. I'm gonna go with the original one for now, but just so you know, you have the colors and the fonts and the name and the slogan on the left side. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on next. And that's it. The next step is to simply download your logo and remember where you're saving this directory because we're going to use it. And now Hatchful sent the ready logo to my email address. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here we go, your Hatchful brand assets, your files are ready. All you have to do is click on the download Hatchful export zip file. And as you can see down here on the bottom left, it downloaded the zip file onto my computer. Let's go ahead and open the directory and see what we have inside. Okay, here's the extracted folder. Let's take a look at the files inside. So as you can see, we can see the logo here in many different file sizes, many different file formats, which once again, you can use for your website, for your ads and for social media. So keep this directory, hold on to it. And once again, look how easy it is to create your own free logo. You didn't have to ask for anyone's help. You can customize it in so many ways and you can choose so many logos out of the bunch. That's it for this lesson on creating your own store logo absolutely for free. And I've tested a few tools before going out and recommending this one. It is definitely the best out of the bunch, which is also completely free. And it's also one of its greatest advantages because between us, software this powerful does deserve to get paid. But as long as it's free, we're going to take full advantage of it. Your assignment before heading on to the next lesson is to create your own store logo using Hatchful, play around with all of the options, check out all of the designs before deciding which one is the best for your niche, download and save it onto your computer, and I'll see you in the next lesson where we are going to choose your very own theme for your store. See you there. How to create a unique and professional logo for your e-commerce stores. There used to be a time when we used to pay so much money to graphic designers to create a good looking logo for our business. But those days are over because today I will show you how you can do that absolutely for free and actually get a really good looking, unique and professional logo for your e-commerce stores. All that and a bag of potato chips coming up in this video. So do not go anywhere. Quick intro and let's go. Welcome back to how to create a professional logo for your e-commerce business, no matter what selling channel you are selling on, whether on Shopify, Wix, eBay, WooCommerce, Facebook Marketplace, Facebook Shops, and so much more. You can use these services that I will show you in this video, and I will even show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a good looking logo from A to Z. All of that, absolutely for free. One second before that, if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel to always stay updated on all of the latest and all of the hottest topics that are coming out in the world of dropshipping and learning about so much more, including case studies, success stories, live podcasts, what to sell, how to sell, dropshipping tips and strategies, and so much more. 
subscribe to our YouTube channel and like and share this video if you appreciate the value. Let's take it from the top. Everything that I'm going over, you can also read about it in our blog article, which I'll leave a link to right below this video. So why do we want to create a logo in the first place? If we're not really branding our stores because we can't brand our products since it is the dropshipping business model. So we're not purchasing the inventory in advance. And if we're not purchasing inventory up front, the manufacturers who are creating these products are not going to brand our business name on it. Because if we're not going to buy that inventory, then somebody else will. So most people who want to have a branded store usually purchase inventory up front and then they're not really dropshipping anymore. They are now becoming their own inventory sellers. However, you can still brand your e-commerce store. You can still brand your dropshipping business when you have a good looking logo, a nice cover image, and your whole layout, your whole theme, your whole store is complementing to the brand that you created. Doesn't matter if your products don't have your brand on it or if the product packaging doesn't have. Of course, it does help to have, but even if you don't, you can still brand your business and this is the way to do it. Starting with your store logo. Now, a store logo is good because it helps you brand your store. And why do we want a brand in the first place? Because because branding our store increases customer loyalty and trust because when a customer sees that they are looking at a real business that has its own brand, it has its own design, it's got its own unique colors, and it's got its own unique look. When you have all of that, your business looks more serious than the other dropshippers who have stores without using any type of branding technique, without having their own logo and their own store design. So this is going to take you one step further in the competition and it will help you increase your sales conversions and make more profit. Of course, there is much more than just creating a good looking logo. We also want to sell the right products and there's also so much more. So if you want to learn about dropshipping, also head over to our blog page at autods.com slash blog and our YouTube channel, which I already talked about, which you can learn so much more about how to create a successful dropshipping business from A to Z, no matter what suppliers you want to use, no matter what audience you want to sell to, and no matter what selling channel you want to sell on. So we know that having a good logo on our store can help grab the attention of our target audience, increase our brand awareness and build customer loyalty. All of that will sum up to making more sales on the products in our stores. Here is a list of the top 10 best free dropshipping logo generators. So everything here is absolutely free. I'm going to start with a free list and then I will move on to the paid list. But make no mistake, the free is more than enough to get started with a good looking logo. Starting off at number one in no particular order is Canva. Then we've got Hatchful Free Logo Design Logo Maker, Wix Logo Maker, which you don't only have to use only on Wix, Zarla Free Logo Service, Free Logo Creator, Namecheap and place it. Those are the top 10 free logo generators. And here we also have a list of the differences between them. You can read about it once again in the blog article, which is linked below this video. Here's a brief overview for each and every one of them. Starting with Canva. Canva is a free graphic design platform that allows us to create a variety of graphic content in different formats. Most importantly, it offers the tools and formats that we need to create good looking logos. Some of their key features is that their platform is very easy to use. It has a user friendly user interface, which simply allows you to create good looking logos without needing to have any design skills and anything of that sort. They also have a large number of free templates that you can use right off the bat that can help you get started creating a good logo and their content is shareable. Number two on the list, and this is my personal favorite, Hatchful. Hatchful is a part of Shopify and this is a free logo creator that can help you create very good looking logos for your store. It's absolutely free to use and you don't have to use it only for Shopify. They also help you create your logos for more than one place. You can have the logo on your eBay or Shopify or Facebook store, but it'll also export your logo to many other different types of formats. And the logo that you will create will have its own favicon too. So branding really goes a long way and Hatchful helps you create it again absolutely for free. Free logo design also helps you create your free logos right off the bat, no credit card required, absolutely for free to create professional level logo designs. And it also gives you ideas of what types of logos you should be creating. In other words, it gives you inspiration of what types of logos could be good for your business. And it's fully customizable. Ucraft Logo Maker takes a different approach by giving you vector and PNG download options. Many images today come out in PNG file format and Ucraft Logo Maker supports it. They also offer lots of free elements that you can use to get started with your logo. So you don't have to start from scratch 
and it's easy to generate one from there. Wix logo maker is similar to Shopify's Hatchful logo maker, only here Wix is doing it in their own way by helping you not only generate a logo for your business, but also generate a name for your business. So if you already have a niche store and you know exactly in what direction you're heading with your e-commerce business, you can also create a good name with Wix's free logo maker. Next, you have Zarla. They have a more cartoonish look and they also help you create beautiful logo designs. One of the things that helps Zarla stand out is that you don't need to sign up in order to create your free logo, at least as of now. The other websites need you to at least sign up and provide your email address, but here, you don't even need to do that. So if you have a problem leaving your email addresses or if you just don't like signing up to all kinds of services before you actually know that you like them or that they will be beneficial to you, Zara can be your way to go. Free logo service offers many pre-made designs for you to start working with. So if you're not sure where you wanna start and in what direction you wanna go with your logo, free logo service can be a good choice. It's very customizable and they've got a large number of pre-made designs. Then you've got Free Logo Creator, another great free logo creator website. There is no limits to the amount of logos that you can make here, and they support all kinds of different file formats, including JPG, PNGs, SVGs, and PDFs. Then we've got Namecheap. If you haven't heard of them before, you might not go in this direction because what helps them stand out besides helping you create a professional business logo is that they also integrate it with the other name cheap tools. So if you're not using those, skip on to the rest of the logo makers that I mentioned earlier in this video. Then we've got Placeit. These guys have some unique graphics that will be very difficult to find anywhere else. You can check out this screenshot as an example. They have bold designs for their logos. It looks different than other places and this is what helps them stand out the most. So if you like this style, check out what they have to offer. Now let's briefly go over the eight best paid dropshipping logo generators, and then I will show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a professional looking logo from A to Z. 99designs, Luca, Fiverr, Creative Market, Taylor Brands Logo Maker, Design Hill, Graphic Springs Logo Maker, and Brand Crowd. Those are the eight best paid logo generator tools Let's go over them really quick. First, we've got 99designs. And once again, you have the links to everything that I'm talking about in the blog article link below this video. So 99designs helps you find a designer to hire to help you create your logo. So it's similar to other websites like Fiverr and Upwork and so forth. So if you're looking to hire a graphic designer, that is one good option. Then you've got Luca. Luca helps you create your logo using sophisticated artificial intelligence. Now, if you need to create more than one good looking design, this is your way to go because their subscriptions start at $96 a year, which isn't so cheap, but it's also really not that expensive. But if you only want to use their service one time, or if you only want to create one logo, you might want to move on to another service provider. Then you've got Fiverr, which is just like Luca, the first one in this example, where you can simply find a graphic designer for hire. And here you can find people to create your logos starting at $5 per logo. So that's really not a lot of money and you can get everything done for you without you having to intervene whatsoever, except for once you get the design and you wanna make some changes, you can let them know on Fiverr and they will make the revisions for you. Each freelancer there has a limited amount of revisions that they will be willing to make for you. So be sure to go over the sellers, what they have to offer, how many reviews they have from their previous jobs, and that will help you land a good freelancer to create a logo for your store. Now, if you are a graphic designer yourself, but you're looking for a good place to start from that has all kinds of ready-made templates for you to continue your work from there, Creative Market is your choice. Here you have lots of ready-made templates as you see here in front of me, and you can use these templates to continue editing them in either Photoshop or Illustrator to create a really good and very unique logo for your store. So once again, if you have some graphic editing skills and you wanna put your work to test, try out Creative Market. This is a good solution for those who actually have experience in the graphic design field. Next, we've got Taylor Brands Logo Maker. This is another unique and professional logo maker tool that you can use and even start off for free. And once you create a logo that looks really good that you're willing to put money on and you wanna download it, only then will you have to pay for it and you have a basic plan starting at just 10 bucks a month. So it is affordable for anyone who wants to get started and they do want to pay for their logo makers. But once again, if you're getting started and you're on a budget, the free logo makers that I listed in the beginning of this video are a perfect choice for getting started. And once you really start to scale your business and you start making great sales and you're ready to make your store look even better, 
Only then should you, in my opinion, turn to the paid logo providers. Next, you've got Design Hill, another logo maker. And as you see, there are many of them. Design Hill starts at $20 per logo file. So after you create your logo and you're ready to download it, it's going to cost you 20 bucks per logo. But what's also special here is that they also help you with your social media file kit. So they're going to help you create your logos for all of your social media channels and increase your brand awareness there. Then you've got Graphic Springs Logo Maker. Here, your packages start at $20 a month and the platinum plan goes up to $200 a month. So it really depends on what type of graphic solutions you need. And you also have the option to hire a professional to create your logos for you. One of the things that stand out about Graphic Springs is even after you create a logo and you finalize it and you save it and you download it, and then later on, even a year later, if you want to come back and make some changes to that logo, you have that option. Then you've got Brand Crowd, another paid logo maker, and of course, a professional one at that, that allows you to have unlimited customization options and also creates handcrafted logos for your e-commerce business. Starting at just $9 per month, this is a very affordable service that you should check out if you want to put a budget aside for this. That sums up the list of the best free and paid dropshipping logo maker tools. And now, as promised, I will show you how you can create a professional looking store logo for your e-commerce business. Here's how it's done. First, head over to hatchful.shopify.com link in the blog article below this video. And here you simply need to log in or sign up if you haven't done so yet, doesn't cost any money, enter in your registration details, and then go ahead and log in, which I am doing now. Once inside, click on get started. Now choose your business space. So what niche are you going for? What type of store is this? What type of products are you going to sell here? Now, if it's a general store, just go with none of the above. But if you have a specific niche that you're going for, like for example, technological gadgets, then in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on tech because here, Hatchful is going to help me generate a logo according to the information that we provide. So I clicked on tech and I'm going to click on next. Choose your visual style. So if you have a style here, a specific design, this isn't how your logo is going to look at the end, but this is going to give you a good indication of how your logo design will look. So if there's anything here that you identify with, that you feel connected with, that you want your logo to be based around that, you can choose one of the designs from here. And if you don't like any of them, go with none of the above. In this case, because it's a tech store, I'm going to go with something futuristic and I'm going to click on next. Now we want a business name. So this was my old business. Now let's create a new one. So because we are going for tech gadgets, I'm going to go for a name like tech gadgets are us. And you can also add a slogan. Some generated logos will support it and some won't for all tech lovers. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and click on next. Tell us where the logo will be used. Either you're going to have it on your online store or website, or maybe you want it for your social media channels. Maybe you also want to be able to print it. Maybe you also want to have business cards. You can choose one multiple, all of the above or none of the above. So choose the right option. In this case, I'm going to go with online store and also social media, and I'm going to click on next. That's all there is to it. So as soon as I clicked on next, it took less than a second. And here are the logos that we have. So these are futuristic logos with tech gadgets are us. Now, if you like any of them, you can click on it to begin the editing process. And if you don't like it, go back and change some of the pre-made settings. In this case, since I went for something futuristic, this one actually pretty much answers what I'm looking for. And now what we'll be able to do is edit our logos if we don't like the colors, if we want to add other text and anything else. So here we go. You can change your your business name and the slogan, which we already wrote in advance. So that is what we're seeing here and here. Then we've got the fonts. So the fonts for the text and we can preview any of them before continuing. So you can just continue clicking on each of them one by one and see which one you like the most. I'm going to stick with this one. Then we're going to go with colors. So if I don't like the purple theme, I can go with something else, like maybe the turquoise one, the greenish one, maybe a gray one. I actually like this one. Tech Gadgets Are Us for all tech lovers took me, I think, less than two minutes to create. Congratulations on your new logo. Download your free logos now. That really is all there is to it. So here included in all this logo package that they will send to my email, I will have a high resolution logo with unlimited revisions, a favicon, which I went over is the icons that we see on top of the Chrome browser, a Facebook profile image. So for my Facebook page for Tech Gadgets R Us, I'm also going to use that logo and a Facebook cover photo, two different variations of it to also add as your cover photo on Facebook. And in 
Instagram profile image. So also for my Instagram business page, I'm going to add this logo there. A Twitter profile image, same goes for Twitter a Twitter banner, just like the Facebook cover image, a Pinterest profile image and a banner there too, along with LinkedIn profile image and banner and a YouTube profile image. Now, if that is not enough for a free logo maker that you can create in under two minutes, I don't know what is. As I mentioned, this is more than enough for getting started, especially when you're in the beginning of your journey. So I went on and clicked on download. This is my old one, by the way. If you've been watching my older videos, you know about Doggy Dog Club for all dog lovers. And that is for when I created the Shopify store with our free Shopify course that you can find on autods.com, hover over resources, and you have the dropshipping courses there. But that is not what we are here to talk about. Check out Tech Lovers. I want this one. So I'm going to click on download. And now they're going to send it to my email address. Here's my email, Hatchful, your files are ready. Download Hatchful, export all zip. So I'm gonna click on that and here's the download process already complete. I'm gonna click on it and here is that folder. So here's the zip file with all of the logos that I got really easily. So I'm gonna click on one of them. This is the Facebook cover photo and you can see it right here. Let's try the transparent logo and here's the transparent one. Let's try the regular logo, here you go. and you have the rest of the files here. So that is how simple and easy it is to create a free, unique and good looking logo for your e-commerce business. In the previous lesson, you learned how to create your very own logo for your brand. And in this lesson, you are going to learn how to create a theme, which is the whole visualization concept and effect around your store. Now, there are paid themes and there are free themes, and you can definitely take my word for it. The free themes are more than enough to create a professional looking store and start generating sales and profit. You don't need to start with pay themes, just like how you didn't have to hire anyone to create your logo. Same goes for the store theme. You can have it done totally professional and you don't have to pay a dime. Once again, when you start generating sales and you start having some profits in your store, you can use that money to invest on things like store themes, paid apps to convert more sales and so forth. So let's head over to your Shopify store, click on online store, click on themes. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see your theme library here. Click on explore free themes. And here you have some free themes, which is once again, more than enough to get started. As you can see, each theme looks a little bit different from the next. For example, here you have the menu on the left and the photos on the right. Here you have a banner on the top and the products on the bottom. Shopify's default theme is the debut theme. And once again, this default theme is more than enough. But if you want to choose a different theme, simply click on it. Here you can read about its features. You can choose different styles for the theme. And after you choose your style, simply click on add to theme library. Now you can see that it's adding the simple theme, but it didn't activate it yet. In order to activate it, simply wait for it to load. Now you have to click on actions and publish. Now it's asking you if you're sure that you want to publish it instead of the debut regular default theme. Once again, click on publish. And that's it, your theme is published. And now your store will be going with that simple theme instead of the debut theme. Now the themes are totally customizable inside. So just because you chose a theme doesn't mean that this is where it ends. You can always change the current theme and you can always customize the theme that you're working on. So there's a whole bunch of options to play around with. And once again, the free themes are enough. Your assignment before heading on to the next lesson is to choose a theme that you liked for your store. Apply it to your store by using the publish option and I'll see you in the next lesson where you will finally add products to your store. In the previous lessons, you learned how to create your very own unique store logo and locate and apply your very own Shopify store theme. In this lesson, you're going to learn about a dropshipping tool that will help grow your business. And the reason that you need a dropshipping tool is because it helps automate many of your daily tasks so you can save a lot of time and use that time to invest in growing, scaling and multiplying your success in your dropshipping business. It's only a matter of time before your store starts to grow and you and your employees simply won't have enough time in the day to take care of all of the important tasks and also grow your business at the same time. If you're in it for the long run and you want to fulfill your store's full potential, you have to use a dropshipping tool. And it's better to connect to a dropshipping tool before you start adding products to your store and before you start running your store in general. Therefore, I would like to introduce you to AutoDS for Shopify. AutoDS has been around for a few years now, helping automate thousands of dropshippers businesses and simply scale their way to success. Now you can enjoy the features and benefits of AutoDS while running your Shopify stores. 
you will enjoy such features and benefits as price and stock monitoring so you won't have to worry about prices changing at your supplier AutoDS will change the price accordingly at your store and you won't have to worry about your supplier running out of stock because AutoDS will change the stock in your store too you'll also enjoy the one click importer where you can import products in just one click from your suppliers to your store optimized and ready to go on top of that you also have automatic order fulfillment so you won't have to worry about logging into your supplier's site and purchasing the product to your customer's address and hoping that the price didn't change anywhere in the middle you'll also enjoy automatic tracking number updates therefore your customers will always be able to track their packages and they'll be updated as soon as possible once their tracking information is available and AutoDS also supports over 10 suppliers that you can work with starting now including Amazon, Ali Express, Banggood, Walmart, Home Depot, Wayfair, Costco, Overstock, Costway, Etsy, Lowe's, eBay, Target, CJ Dropshipping, Gearbest, and more. That's already 15 suppliers and we're always working hard and adding more so you can differentiate yourself from the competition and have an advantage over everyone else. So I hope that by now you understand the importance of having a dropshipping tool and in the next lesson we are going to connect your Shopify store with AutoDS. Trust me, you are going to enjoy this. See you in the next lesson. Okay, so you're ready to invest in the long-term success of your dropshipping business. And now we are going to connect your Shopify store to AutoDS. The first thing that you need to do is head over to that resources PDF that you have for this course. Over there, you'll find a link called register to AutoDS for Shopify. Click on that link and you'll be taken to this page that we have over here. Now click on the start button over here and wait for the welcome to AutoDS pop-up to show up. So the first thing that you need to do is enter your email address, click on continue, enter your full name and your password, and then choose which platform you would like to sell on. And now since we're obviously talking about the Shopify platform, we're just going to leave it as it is and go ahead and click on that sign up button. Now you have to choose a payment plan for your AutoDS subscription after your seven day free trial is over. So choose whether you want to go with PayPal or credit card, enter your details and continue to the next screen. Once you're done filling in your payment details, congratulations, you're in. Now on the left side, click on add store and here enter your store's web address. Now it's not referring to the domain name that you purchased, but rather to your Shopify web address before you purchase your own domain name. So we're just going to copy the web address. In my case, it's petshopdiscounts.myshopify.com. So we're just going to copy and paste that address over here without the slash in the end. And then you're going to click on add store. Now it automatically took me to install the AutoDS app on my Shopify store. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on install app. Now, as you can see here on the left side, my shop was added to AutoDS. So my Shopify store is now connected to the AutoDS platform. And here you have your brand new dashboard, which is ready and waiting to be worked on. Your assignment for this lesson is to connect your Shopify store to the AutoDS platform. And I'll see you in the next lesson where you will finally add a product to your store using the wonderful benefits and features that we have on the AutoDS platform. Good job on making it this far and I'll see you in the next lesson. In the previous lesson, you learn how to connect your Shopify store to the AutoDS platform. In this lesson, you will learn about the one-click importer where you can simply import products from any one of your suppliers in just one click to your Shopify stores. So let's get to it. The first thing that you need to do is download an extension called the AutoDS Helper Chrome extension. You have the link to it in the resources PDF that you have for this course. Once you click on the link, you'll be taken to this page where you can install the AutoDS Chrome Helper extension by clicking on the install button on the right. Once you do that, go ahead and open up that product research dropshipping spreadsheet that we worked on a few lessons ago. Now the last thing that we did here is we narrowed down the products to the products that have the most potential of being our next winners. So we're going to choose one product out of the four or five products that you saved. So I'm going to start with this one, the double retractable dog leash for two dogs. Simply click on that source link that you added in that Excel file. And here we have the product. 
Now, as you see, an import to AutoDS link showed up over here above the title. This link is from the AutoDS extension that we installed. So all you need to do now is click on that import to AutoDS button and give it just a few seconds. There we go. Once it turned orange, you know that it already imported this product to your store. Let's go ahead and have a look. So here is the AutoDS platform where you connected your Shopify store to. Now, if you look on the left side, you'll notice a number one next to the drafts. If you click on it, you'll see that the number one refers to that one product that we just imported to our store using that one mouse click. Now, there are a couple of more methods to adding products to your stores. And if you click on add products on the left side, you will see those options and you can go ahead and choose which option suits you best. Here, you can enter the product's web address or the product ID. So for example, if I want to import this product to my store too, I'm just going to copy the whole product link and I'm going to paste it over here and separate each product with a line break. And then you can add as many products as you want this way. This is one way to do it. Another way to do it would be by uploading a CSV file, but I'm not going to go over these options now. If you guys want to learn more about these options, you can check out our Shopify technical page where you have all of the knowledge base and all of the tutorials on everything that you might need for every option that you have on this platform. So those are the ways to add more products to your stores. Now the drafts page is where you can work on all of your products before importing them to your store. Once you're finished optimizing them and you import them to your store, AutoDS will start monitoring the product and the product will go live on your stores so your customers can go in and start buying them. But once again, before we import them to our stores, we want to optimize our products. And that is exactly what we are going to do on the next lesson. Your assignment for this lesson is to add those products to your stores using the one click importer from the AutoDS Chrome helper extension. So once again, simply head over to your product research spreadsheet, open the source links, click on the import to AutoDS button, and watch how all of the products show up in your drafts page. Once you do that, I'll see you in the next lesson where once again, we will start optimizing your product pages. See you in the next lesson. In the previous lesson, you learned how to import products to your store using the AutoDS platform to help optimize and automate the process. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to create a powerful product page which will help you convert one-time viewers into buyers. Now, for those of you who don't know, the product page is a very, very important page which showcases your product. This is the page where the viewer will view the product and decide if he wants to click on that add to cart and proceed with the checkout process. Therefore, it's very crucial to know how to create a very good converting and powerful product page. Also, don't forget that in a few lessons from now, when you will finally learn how to create your own Facebook ads, you are going to target your ads to the product page and not to your home page or any other page. So let's go ahead and get started. In the previous lesson, your assignment was to add those products from the product research spreadsheet and import them to your stores using AutoDS. Now that that's done, let's head over to the platform and on the left side, click on drafts. And here we have that product from the previous lesson. You should be seeing your products from the product research spreadsheet. Let me just add another product just for the variety. This time, instead of using the import to AutoDS, I'm going to show you the second method where you just copy the web address, click on add products and simply paste it over here. Now just simply click on next and keep clicking on next until you get to the last option. Add as a draft instead of publish it straight to your store. Here we go, here it is. Very quick and very efficient. So now we have two products in our drafts page. Now let's start optimizing them and import them to our stores. Click on the arrow that you see over here to begin the edit process. You can also do it on multiple items at once. So let's start with this one, the two dog reflective retractable pet leash. So first of all, let's work on the product's title because at this point it's copied just as we saw it on the source site. I'm gonna start off by deleting the brand name. Two dog reflective retractable pet leash. This is a product feature which we don't need in the title at this point. Two dogs each up to 50 pounds. That's more technical information that we do not need at the title at this point. Reflective orange, green LEDs. Dual lock. Let's see if there's anything else that we can add to the title. So it has an untangling mechanism. So let's just add tangle free. 
Okay, and this title looks good. Now let's move on to the next tab. We have collections. So on Shopify, you can add your products to certain collections and then showcase those collections anywhere you want on your website. So in this case, I will just add it to the homepage collection. In the next lesson, we're going to go over the homepage and you'll have a clearer picture of what's going on. Now the product tags is an important feature where you will be able to tag your products and then you'll be able to later on come back and see exactly how those products performed. For example, since we're in the pet niche, let's create a tag for pets. And let's say I want to add a whole bunch of dog leashes onto my shop. So I also want to check out how the dog leashes are going for me in my store. So let's create another tag called dog leash. Next, choose your shipping method. So AutoDS will know exactly how to price this product for you. So I'm gonna go with the cheapest with tracking because providing tracking information is very important for your own protection. Next, in the country location, choose which country this product is being shipped from. So since in this case, I went with Amazon US, I'm going to keep it in the United States. And here you have to choose the city location which connects to the country location which the product is being shipped from. If you don't know the city location, you can just leave it as it is. Just make sure that the country location is correct because you don't want customers complaining that you said that the product is gonna be shipped from the US and at the end they're gonna see from the tracking information that it's being shipped from China. So just make sure that the country location is correct. And moving on to the brand. You can choose if you want the customer to see the brand's name and if you don't want the customer to see the brand's name, you can just change it, for example, to branded since it's a small brand and nobody's going to go and look for that specific brand anyway, but that's just another way to do it. And here on the bottom, stock monitoring is enabled, price monitoring is enabled, and auto ordering is enabled. So that's it for the products tab. Now we're gonna move on to the products description. And here is where you have to get creative. Now for starting off, AutoDS took all of the products description from the source site as we can see it over here on the right side. So all of the products description that you see over here is exactly what we can see here on the products page. But we're not going to leave it exactly like this because once again, we want professional product pages. And it's not that there's nothing not professional with Amazon's product descriptions, but you simply do not want to work in a copy and paste form. This is not smart for the dropshipping business model. I've seen many dropshippers who just copy and paste the product descriptions without going over them. And it just doesn't look good. And I really doubt that they're making any good sales this way. So here's the product description that we already have. Let's just go over it really quick and see what we can improve. Okay, so I wrote a product description. I made bullet points that are similar to the bullet points that already existed. I simply wrote them in my own words and made it sound a little bit more convincing. So that's pretty much what you need to do in the product page. Keep in mind that you have to use your creative mind in the product page to convince the customer why he needs to buy this product and what problem it solves. So let's see the opening line. The struggle of walking two dogs with two separate leashes is over. No more tangles, no more hassle. With this dual dog leash, you have full control over each dog. Your dogs have the freedom to enjoy their walk and you have an extra hand to help you open doors or hold your umbrella. This is the problem that it's solving for many, many people. When they're walking two dogs with two separate leashes, they have no hands available to help them with anything that they may need. Practical, convenient, cheaper than having two separate leashes and much more comfortable. Join the thousands of satisfied customers who are enjoying their dual dog leash and their pets. Then you have the bullet points, which are showing all of the product's features. I will delete the bullet points that the supplier wrote since we already have our own much more convincing bullet points. And don't forget to add the product specifications. Every specification that you have from the supplier page, make sure that you're adding it to the product page because most viewers have questions that they may wanna ask. And when you answer those questions in advance, they won't have to bother reaching out to you and most of them won't reach out to you. They'll simply move on to the next competitor. So make sure that you're adding all of the information that you have possible from your source page. Now let's go to our source page and see if we missed out anything that might be relevant. So we have the product's title, we have bullet points, we have a good converting product description, all of the features that we're seeing here, 360 degree technology, control each leash individually, color coded, reflective, up to 50 pounds each dog, 10 foot length each one, and a soft and comfortable handle. So all of these features, I already have it on the product page. And here is a converting product description in words, which we already did also. So there's nothing left to be added. The product description is on point. Make sure that you're going through all of the text options that you have available to change up the text 
the sizes, make some words bold, italic, underlined, and so forth. You can even add links and images and videos to your product page. And I definitely encourage you guys to add product videos and GIFs if you have them available, because on Shopify, it's super easy to add product videos to your product pages. But more importantly, it's playing a crucial role in convincing the viewer to buy this product. But don't worry, you're going to learn all about product videos soon. I'm going to teach you guys how to create your own videos for your products, and then we'll also add them to the product page. So let's skip that for now. Next, you have your product variants. So since there's only one variant here, we're just gonna go with that one and click on edit. And here you can change the product's quantity, the break even, which is how many fees you're paying for this product. You have to make sure that you know exactly how many fees you're paying. It depends which platform you're selling on, which in this case, it's Shopify. And it also depends on your payment providers. And if you want to know how much fees you're currently paying, simply head over to Shopify, click on settings and payment providers, and you'll be able to see your third party payment providers over here. And also check out your Shopify subscription, where here you can see your Shopify payments. The subscription that you chose will show you the transaction fees that you're paying for that current subscription, as you can see over here. So calculate your break even, add it to the break even line over here. Next, you can choose the price that you want to sell for. And if you don't know exactly how much you're going to profit, that's exactly why you have your break even. So AutoDS knows that if the product costs $32.24 and on that you have to add another 17% because that's your break even fees, then your total profit will be $3.52 if you're selling for $43.09. So for example, on this product, I want to make 20% profit and another 30 cents because that's another fee that PayPal takes from me, which is not counted in the break even percentage. So, in order to make 20% profit, I need to sell this product for $46.97. My total profit will be $6.75, and I have no problem with that whatsoever. Here, you can choose if you want to include the shipping price inside the product sell price. So, let's keep it as it is and click on save. So now we've priced out our variant and we're making exactly the profit that we want to make. Now let's move on to the images. And here are the options that you have for each image. First, you can add more images by clicking the plus button. And if you hover over each image, you'll have the option to copy this image, which means make another copy of this image on the product page. You can rotate it if it's not straight. You can flip the image, which means make a mirror flip like this. And you can add a watermark if you have one and you don't want people to steal your product images. Now, if you want a different picture to be your main image, it's also no problem. Simply hover over it and click set as main image. So that's pretty much it when it comes to product images. In this case, I'm not going to change the image. I'm going to keep it as it is and we're going to move on. And here, last but not least, you have your item specifics. Now, as you can see here, AutoDS took the item specifics from the source page and added it over here. So it's already saving you guys a lot of time from going to your sources page and trying to find that information. It has the exact dimensions and the product's weight. And if you have any more information on the product, which isn't showing up on the product's item specifics, you can simply add more specifics by clicking on add item, enter the exact specific that you want to write, for example, color and in the description, you can write black, green, and red because it's a combination of all three colors. Click on add and that's it. You can edit each item specific one by one, delete them one by one, or edit all of them at the same time. As you can see here, edit whatever you want, finish editing or cancel editing. So once we're done filling in all of these columns, we know that our product is ready to be published to our stores. So the next step is to simply click on save just to make sure that nothing will be changed or deleted. And now click on the import button. Now what AutoDS is doing is it's taking the product from the drafts page over here on the left, and it's going to move it to the products page. There we go. That is done. Now, if we click on the products page, here it is. 
Now this means that AutoDS is monitoring this product, it's monitoring the stock, it's monitoring the prices, but more than that, the product is now live on your store and viewers can already go in and start buying this product because they see it available in your store. Not that they can yet because you're probably still under your free trial and you didn't open any Shopify subscription yet, but once you do, your store will be live and this product will be live inside that store. So now that the product is live on our stores, let's head over to Shopify and check it out from there. So here you have your Shopify dashboard. Click on products on the left side. And here, as you can see, the product is available. The status is active, which means it's alive and people can go in and buy it. If you click on it, you'll be taken to the product editing page through Shopify. And here on the top right, go ahead and click on more actions and preview to get a glimpse of how the product page looks like. So you have your title, you have your price, you have your product photos, and you have the product description which you wrote. Going over everything that the product does and the problem that it solves. Don't worry about how everything else looks. For example, the logo and the banner and the links on the side. This is just a rough draft of your first product. What's important is to nail down all of the important things a good title, high quality photos, and a good description which goes over everything. As you can see, AutoDS did all of this work for us. We didn't have to use Shopify's platform. Everything was done through AutoDS. And that's how simple it is to create your own product page with the help of the AutoDS platform, which helps you automate and optimize your product page without you having to do all of the hard work. All you have to do is be creative, know exactly what problem your product solves, make sure that it's written out really well in your product description, make sure that you have enough photos, and regarding a video for the product, once again, we're going to get into that soon. We're doing everything step by step, so make sure that you understood each and every step that you need to take in order to create a good, high quality converting product page, and that is definitely good enough for the stage that you are on. Your assignment for this lesson is to create a product page for each and every one of the products that you added to your stores using the AutoDS platform. Once again, everything needs to be done through AutoDS so that everything will be optimized. AutoDS will do most of the hard work for you. So go ahead and do it on each and every one of the products that you added to your stores. And I'll see you in the next lesson where you will learn how to create a killer homepage. See you in the next lesson. Artificial intelligence is finally here and we can now use it to help automate so many daily tasks like optimizing our product pages, brainstorm winning products and ideas, get free organic traffic to our stores without having to market our products, write engaging ad copies and so much more. And in this video, I'm going to go over all of the details and best strategies to use with ChatGPT to use it to its full potential in your e-commerce business. Best of all, ChatGPT is 100% free and easy to use. So now I want to show you how you can take a product, okay, and completely revise its product description. And the reason that you want to do this is because most of the suppliers that you're going to work with are going to offer really bad product descriptions, especially if you are working with Chinese sellers. Now, you could be working with a US supplier, but the product descriptions that the US supplier works with are still going to have some bad English because it could be a Chinese seller that simply imported goods to the US and now he's holding them in a US warehouse under a US a seller's name but it's still a Chinese man who wrote down the product description in really really bad English and those of you who have been drop shipping or in the e-commerce business for a while you know exactly what I mean and even if you do have good English in your product description but you know that so many other e-commerce sellers are using this product description then now you can completely revise it and write a new product description so here's how you're going to do that with chat GPT okay let's go for this product right here that I have in one of my Shopify stores so it's this winter coat right here here's a supplier AliExpress and and the product description is pretty bad. I mean, this coat makes you look taller and as handsome as a man. Plus, you will be the spotlight and attract a lot of attentions so that you will be more confident. I'm not going to go on, but of course, the English here is really bad. And we're also going to optimize the product's title. So product title and product description. Let's read the title. Temperament, cashmere coat winner, coat double breasted, color match, mid length, blah, 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 blah. Whole bunch of words that don't connect to one another. So let's start with the title. I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to head back to ChatGPT and I'm going to ask it, rewrite this product 
title. Okay, I'm going to paste it and hit enter. Now it's going to make more sense. So let's just kind of read through the title and see how it sounds. Mid-length double-breasted cashmere coat with color matching turned down collar and pockets for women. So that actually makes sense. And when I read it out like that, I don't sound like a Chinese robot trying to translate words to English. Okay, so that's one thing that it's going to do for us. Now let's go with the product description. Okay, so first I'm going to copy this perfect title. Then I'm going to go to the product right here in AutoDS and I'm going to change the product's title to the better title that we got. Okay, I'm going to save that. But now let's work on that really bad product description right here. Okay, so I'm just going to copy it from the AutoDS system. I don't really need AliExpress for this, but just check out all of the information and it's not being spaced out so well and not structured well, just a whole bunch of text overlapping one another and without a good structure. So I'm just going to grab all of this text. Okay, I'm going to copy it. Then we're going to head back to ChatGPT and rewrite this product description use bullet points okay and i'm going to paste it and hit enter product description made of high quality polyester and wool material available in sizes medium large extra large and so forth suitable for work shopping daily wear and dating features include a double-breasted design turned down collar mid-length and long sleeves color matching contrast as a fashionable touch keep warm with oversized pockets anti-wrinkle for easy care makes you look taller and more confident but hold up a second you, you guys understood what's happening here right we've got all of this really really bad text let's take another look from the supplier so all of this really bad text that nobody really wants to read and that nobody's really going to read plus this really bad looking size chart now check out what chat gpt did when it comes to the size chart it actually created a size chart inside a spreadsheet that looks this good and i didn't even ask it to do so so we've got the bullet points right here which are all structured out really well starting with the material and the available sizes starting with the right information first and moving down to the less important information later and then we got this wonderful sizing chart where we can see it in a much much better way and now imagine this many people are probably drop shipping this product and 99.5 percent of them are using the same really bad product description right here but now you the smart drop shipper the smart e-commerce store owner you're gonna have this product description right here and you're going to be the only one with this unique description no other online seller will have it you will outrank them on google and you will get more traffic to your store and more customers will buy because they actually understand what's going on and they won't see you as an unprofessional business that can't even speak the english language the right way note please refer to the size chart and choose the right size due to light and screen setting differences the items color may slightly vary from the pictures so of course we're going to leave that for the end let's copy this product description copy go back go back to auto ds and i'm going to paste it right here so just check it out now much much better with the size chart with the bullet list with the right information on top we're going to save this and we're already looking much better with the help of artificial intelligence so here's the draft section of my auto ds account and as you can see, I have products here that I can completely optimize before importing them to my store and having them go live for everyone to purchase. Now, if I open this product draft right here, and you can see here in the product description that the English really isn't that good. I mean, the level is really low and there's just, just a whole bunch of text here that doesn't look good. And we've got the seller's name here and dog collar is made of pvc fiber dog collar and leash set comes with one pieces of dog collar and one piece of anyway we want to revise this product description and make it better now you're going to find some product descriptions that have really really bad english and some are just not that good and also not structured well like this one so what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to copy all of this text then i'm going to move over to chat gpt now it can do so many things but i'm going to keep it very simple for product descriptions okay so i'm going to write right here in chat gpt and it's public it's free to use and once again this tool is simply unbelievable mind-blowing but once again product description so rewrite this product description use bullet points and let's also add emojis okay then shift enter paste the text and enter. Now in just less than two seconds, we're gonna get exactly what we asked for. Okay, so FGY, I think that's the seller's name, so I'm gonna remove that. Dog collar and leash set in line in gray, set in line in gray, made of durable, comfortable PVC fiber, quick snap, stainless steel buckle, easy on and off. Color is adjustable for maximum comfort 
and reliable fit, suitable for small, medium, and large dogs, leave two fingers between the collar and the dog's neck for proper fitting, three sizes available, perfect for daily use, and we got the emojis right here, convenient and easy to use indoors or outdoors. So what we did was we took this really bad description and turned it into this really great description with the right amount of information, not too much text. It won't make the consumer tired of reading it and they will get all the right information in bullet points, get the value that they need, see what problem this product helps them solve and continue with the checkout process. Now, the great thing here is that nobody has this product description. You're gonna be 100% unique and you can also have it revise things like remove FGY, from the text. Of course, you could also do that manually, but let's say we had it in more places. As you can see right here, now we've got dog collar instead of FGY dog collar. So of course it helped fix that issue. And anything else that you need, you can continue revising and have it do more things like brainstorm a better title for your products. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the power of artificial intelligence to create a much, much better product description page. So I've just copied all, all of that text and I'm gonna paste it right here with the emojis, with the bullet points and save that product description. So this is the power of artificial intelligence and you don't have to have a virtual assistant today to optimize your product pages or simply you can have virtual assistants and save the money that you're paying them hourly for their work because now instead of spending hours and hours optimizing your product pages, they can do it in just a couple of seconds using artificial intelligence. So let's move over to another product that has a bad title like this one, Men USB. So are we purchasing a USB that's male here. So this obviously is a bad title. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this really bad title, copy it, back to artificial intelligence and hello chat gpt rewrite this product title now i'm not giving it any specific instructions besides rewriting so it's just going to rewrite it in better english so that you can better understand what this product is so instead of men usb it's men's usb infrared heated vest with 17 heating areas, perfect for winter sports and hiking, available in oversized size 5XL. Now it's a really long title, but you can continue optimizing it from here. But what it already did is helped you create a better title that's more understandable when you just read it out loud just like that. Here you can see that the supplier doesn't have a really good product specification. That is where ChatGPT can come in, an AI tool that can help us write much, much better product descriptions. Here's an example of what we could do here. So I'm just gonna copy this product description, which doesn't look really good. I'm gonna head over to ChatGPT and I'm gonna tell it, rewrite this product description for my e-commerce store. I always like to use bullet points and emojis because it just comes out much, much better. Okay, so I'm going to paste it. Then I'm just gonna click on enter and I'm gonna let ChatGPT work its magic. And as we can see right here, as I speak, it's already writing out the product description using emojis and using a bulleted list. So it's starting off with the material, which is really important. This is what you wanna start off with to just let the buyer know exactly what he's getting because at the end of the day, that's what they're looking for when they're clicking on your product page. So we've got the different materials right here, how to care for the product, suitable for what types of occasions, multiple colors, and we're going to not include the dropshipping package does not include price or invoice. That's for you, the dropshipper, but not for the customer to know. And you can always revise ChatGPT and tell it, for example, don't include remarks on dropshipping or seller's names and things like that. But that's for later on, not for right now. I just wanna show you how you can write great product descriptions in just a matter of seconds and really make it look good and engaging. All right, so this one right here doesn't really have a good description. We just see a whole bunch of words right here that were added that are related to the product, but they're just in a bad order here and no real product description just you know some item specifications so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to copy this product description which isn't that good head over to chat gpt which is free to use and then i'm going to say rewrite this product description for my online store all right shift enter paste that text and hit enter and let's see what product description I'm going to get. So up until now, we didn't have any good text, just a pretty bad looking title and some item specifications. And let's see how we can turn that into a converting product page, which actually explains what this product does. So here we go, introducing the double wheel, single rebound abdominal wheel, a versatile and highly effective piece of fitness equipment for building and toning your abs and arm muscles. Now guys, you understand that it's, it's creating this text out of this really, really bad description, which doesn't really 
talk about the product. It's just showing you product specifications. All right, let's go on. With a durable design and a safe braking system, this abdominal exerciser is built to withstand weights of up to 500 kilograms, making it suitable for users of all fitness levels. This equipment comes in a sleek blue and black and orange colorway, and its overall length is customizable reaching up to 37 centimeters, the intelligent, okay, so here we got some explanation on the product specifications, suitable for use at home or in the gym, this abdominal wheel will help you strengthen your core and achieve a lean tone physique. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned athlete, this abdominal wheel will help you achieve your fitness goals. Get your double wheel, single rebound abdominal wheel today and experience the difference. I have no idea how it got all of this precise product information from this really bad product description that we gave it. But now, as you can see, our product pages are going to be 100% unique. And this is what I encourage you to do with the help of artificial intelligence to make your product pages stand out and be much more unique than any other dropshipper out there who's selling the same product. Your customers will appreciate it, knowing exactly what they're purchasing, getting a better product description, and there will be a much higher chance that they will purchase from your store rather than your competitors who are simply copying and pasting from one another from their suppliers. I want to talk to you guys about the best e-commerce upselling and cross-selling apps to use for your Shopify stores so that you can increase your average order value and simply make more profit on each order and more profits at the end of the month, which is what we're all here for. The first Shopify upselling app that I want to recommend you guys to use is called Reconvert Upsell and Cross-Sell. So in this case, you guessed it, this application is going to help you with upselling and also with cross-selling. So it's gonna help you change the main product to a more upgraded, more advanced, more expensive version of that product. And at the same time, it'll also help you cross-selling so you can add more accessories to go with that main product and increase your average order value even more. There are more apps. I wanna show you a small example of how this one works. So I'm going to click on add app. And as you see here, it's synchronizing now with my Shopify store. You're about to install reconvert post-purchase upsell. Going to click on install app. So as you see, installing apps is as easy as clicking on the link and clicking on install app. Okay, so here they're letting me know that we're getting a free trial. We're gonna click on let's go. And once again, I want to approve my subscription. So I'm going to click on approve subscription, zero dollars. Okay, so this is what it looks like after you install the app. There's a few things you can do here. For example, enable the app to actually start working on your website. But before that, you do want to customize it and set up your settings. So you can start by creating a new template and taking actions on your existing ones. If you scroll down, you'll get a dashboard to see exactly how much sales this app helped you to get and an overall dashboard on everything that's going on with the impressions, the bounce rates, total orders, the average order values and so forth. And as you see here, you can create a template for any type of situation that you can come across when it comes to upselling and cross-selling for the products on your store. Here, for example, you have a thank you first name. So this is after a customer purchases something from your store and they get a thank you message. So you can completely customize that and get them to buy more products even after they buy from your store. Here you see people who bought this also bought. So this is another way of upselling as I've showed you in some examples before. So you can get a product and when someone is looking at a specific product, you can tell reconvert to tell them that people who bought this product also bought these three products instead. And of course, they have to be a more upgraded, a more expensive version of that main product. So this is another upselling technique that we have using reconvert. Here you have another order is confirmed page, so you can customize that. You can also share your order on social media. So customize that however way you want it. And that way your buyer can also share their purchase and maybe get some of their friends or family to see that post and get to your store and also buy one for themselves. Another one here is how they will see it on the cart page. So you can customize that too. Let us know your birthday, a special gift will be heading your way. So this is a nice way to get your customers birthdays or even get them on your mailing list and start building your email subscriber list. So you know that this app can help you with that too. Get more for 30% off. Offer expires in and then you got a countdown timer. Here you can put a product and simply give your buyers a nice discount. This may not be an upselling or cross-selling technique, but it's a nice little feature that this app can help you with. 
And as you see here, you can completely customize everything and anything. I will not do it in this video because it will simply be too long. But as you see here, for example, on the left area, you can add more sections. And in those sections, you see all of the things that you can do. For example, product upsell. Now I added another product upsell on the left side of this page, but we already have it. So this is just creating some kind of a landing page. You need to create the right pages for your store and also show them all of these nice upselling techniques because this app is really one of the best upselling apps that we were able to find on Shopify today. The best part is it also has a free plan which you can use for up to the first 50 orders that you get on every month. So that makes it a lot more comfortable. Only start spending money after you start making money. That is one of the best business models that I can think of. Reconvert Upselling Crosssell is number one on our list and it is one of our favorites. Here's a nice little screenshot of how it looks like after you implement those upselling features so you can see it here. And that is number one on our list. Number two, we have an app called Honeycomb Upsell Funnels. What this does is it helps you create cross-sell and upsell funnels on your Shopify store. So if I click on it just to show you some examples, but I will not install every app right now. So as you can see, their main goal is to help you create upsell and cross-selling funnels. So they're good at creating upsell funnels for our stores. And using the media gallery, I'll show you some of their examples. So here you can create an offer. As you can see here, this is a limited time offer that will expire in this much minutes and this many seconds. So here they can add it to order or check out, continue to check out. Here you can start to split A-B test your upselling funnels. So in this example, you're creating a certain type of offer. So grab this deal, leather dog leash for this much money. This is how much you're saving. Choose your variation color choose your size and choose your quantity. Then you got vegan treats, where in this case you're choosing a pack size, so one, two, three, four, five, six pack in this example, and what flavor you want. So it's different options than what we're seeing here. You can completely customize the drop down menu and even make it an open text field as you can see here. So custom pet head cover, your pet's name, fill in your pet's name, and they will simply print it out on that pet head cover. So that's another way of using this upselling funnel. And this screenshot is showing you that you can simply split A-B test your upselling funnels and see exactly what's working well, what's not working. And the more you test, the more you analyze, the more results you are going to see on your dropshipping stores. And that goes for just about anything. Here's a nice example of what I just explained. So split A, B testing, two different split test funnels. And as you can see here, B did much better than A, giving us 13.3% better conversions as opposed to A with a negative 5.8% which means this one decreased our conversions and this one increased them. So obviously we know which one we are going for. So this is what the honeycomb upsell and cross sell funnels is good for. And that's why it is number two on our list for the top upsell Shopify apps. Let's move on to number three. Here we got an app called frequently bought together. And this one is self-explanatory with its title. I will just show you the image for this app because once again, it's very self-explanatory and this is what it does. So we talked about how Amazon and other big online retailers, dropshipping suppliers, and anything else you wanna call them, they are using upselling techniques like frequently bought together, like what we're seeing here. So this one goes inside the product page and what this app is going to do is it's going to create your frequently bought together on every product page that you have that you choose where you want to have that frequently bought together. Now, I'm not sure if you guys noticed this yet, but this is a cross-selling example as opposed to upselling examples, which is what we saw up until now. In this example, we are not switching the main product. We're not upgrading it to a better, more expensive version of that product. What we're doing here is we're telling the buyer, hey, anyone who's buying this bike is usually buying this and this lock too. So all these accessories usually go together with this bike. That's what customers usually buy. You might want to go ahead and do that too, or at least consider doing it. That's why we're giving you this option. And then in this case, instead of a total cost of $329 for that bicycle, we're going to end up paying $637.99, but we are going to get it with these accessories that we need. So Frequently Bought Together is a great cross-selling app to have. And as you guys know, the biggest online retailers, dropshipping suppliers, whatever you wanna call them, the biggest e-commerce stores in the world today are using upselling and cross-selling techniques such as this one. So there's no reason for you not to take those practices and implement them on your dropshipping stores too. Our fourth app on the list is an app called UFE 
2.0 upsell funnel engine. As you can see here, let me show you the image. So here, once again, we're inside a product page, just like frequently bought together. Only in this case, what this app is telling us to do is buy more quantities of that same product. And this way, get a discount. The more quantity you buy, the bigger volume discount we are going to give you. So while we're not upgrading the current product with a more expensive, more upgraded version of that product, and we're not adding in more accessories, we are increasing our average order value, our AOV, which means at the end of the day, we are going to profit more. Even if we give them 15 or 10% off for buying a higher quantity, we're still going to make more profit because the average order value inside our cart continued to increase and we are working by percentages. So as long as we're not profiting small numbers like 10 or 20% per order, we need to make more profits than that. That way, no matter what quantity they're buying, we're just going to profit more and more. The last app that I want to talk to you guys about is called Candy Rack One Click Upsells. This is a great app to use for every buyer or every potential customer who added a product to their cart. So once they click that add to cart button, you can trigger something really special to happen on your stores. And that can either be a cross-selling or upselling technique. Here you can see that we're in a product page, an analog alarm clock. And what they're giving you is an option to upgrade to a better version of that product or add accessories to go with the initial product. So the upgrading options here are upselling techniques and the options to add are cross-selling techniques. You can use them both. And that's what's so special about this app called Candy Rack. So once again, it's a mix of upselling and cross-selling and you can do it all once the customer adds a product to their cart. Let me see if there's an example where we can see from their store, from an example store right here. So I'm going to click on view example store and this way you can see exactly how it's going to work on your store once you add this app. So what I'm going to do is choose my variation and then click on add to cart, which is where this app needs to come into play. Okay, so I clicked on add to cart and as you see, just as that image showed us. So here I can upgrade to a better version of that product or I can add more accessories, even extend my warranty, or first in line, get faster shipping. So these are all great ideas to increase our average order value. And that is what's so special about Candy Rack, the fifth Shopify dropshipping app that I want to recommend you guys to use for your upselling and cross-selling techniques, increase your AOVs and make more profit on every order that you get. These are the best Shopify upselling and cross-selling apps to use on your dropshipping stores. And I truly hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that after it, you will see what upselling apps you wanna use on your store, which cross-selling apps you wanna use on your store and start to implement these strategies now. Thank you for watching guys. See you in the next video. In the previous lessons, you learned how to import products from your source site to your Shopify stores. And you also learned how to create wonderful and converting product pages with all of the relevant information inside. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to create a killer homepage, which is very important for the success of your store. And that is because usually when viewers enter your store, the first thing that they would usually see is your product page. And that's because when you're running ads, like on Facebook, for example, you're targeting the viewers to your product page. But in many cases, the viewer is going to go out of your product page into your homepage to see what else you have to offer and to also check out your business and make sure that it looks like a real professional business. Everything needs to be on point. Everything needs to look professional while all keeping it on a budget, which is what we're doing in this whole course. So let's go on to creating a wonderful homepage for your dropshipping business. The first thing that you need to do is on your Shopify dashboard on the left side, click on settings, then click on general. And now there are two things that we need to do here. One is change your store name to your business name. So for example, since I bought the domain doggydogclub.com for this website, I'm going to call this business or the store name Doggy Dog Club, and then scroll down to the end of this page and under the store currency, change it to USD. So now all of your viewers will see the USD currency instead of whatever local currency Shopify gave you. Go ahead and click on save. And that's it regarding the settings page. Now let's head over to the online store. Click on themes. Make sure that you have the theme that you chose in the previous lessons. So I went for the debut theme. Go ahead and click on customize. And here is how your store currently looks. 
So first we have the doggy dog club, which is the name that we just chose for the business in the settings page. Now, the first thing that we want to do is add an announcement bar on the top, which usually promotes something like free shipping or some discounts or a promo code that they have going on. So the first thing that you want to do on the left side is click on header and scroll down to the announcement bar here uncheck home page only and check on show announcement once you do that you may have noticed that the announcement bar just showed up on the top of your website and it says announce something here which is the text box that you see down here on the left so here we're just going to write free shipping for all orders of course, you can write whatever you want. I'm just showing you guys an example of what you can do with that announcement bar. You can also change the background color of the announcement bar and the text, but let's leave it as it is for now and go back. And now let's move on to the rest of the options that we have on our homepage. So this is the first thing that the viewer is going to see when he enters your homepage. It's a big in your face photo. And what we're going to do now is choose a cover photo to show all of the viewers who will enter our homepage. So on the left side, you have to select an image, but we don't have an image yet. So what you have to do at this point is head over to that resources PDF that you have for this course. Over there, you have links to free stock photo websites, which I talked about a few lessons ago. Go to those free stock photo websites and search for that big image that you want to showcase on your homepage. Of course, it needs to be related to the niche that you're going for. So let's go ahead and do that together. Since we're going for the dog niche, we're just going to go and search for dogs, this is the first site, second stock photo site, and the third stock photo site. I wanna get a nice image which will attract dog lovers such as myself. So we're gonna go with this photo where we can see a few dogs sitting side by side, and it's really, really cute. If you're a dog lover, I'm sure that you're feeling the same feelings that I'm feeling when looking at this photo. So I'm just going to go ahead and download it. The next step is to go back to Shopify to exactly where we left off. So here on the left side, we clicked on that image with a text overlay. We're going to click on select image. Then you're going to upload a new image by clicking on it. Go to the downloads page where it's at and click on that image file. And there it is loaded onto your homepage. So once again, starting from the top, you have the announcement bar, you have your store's logo, and then you have this big photo of these cute dogs. We're gonna go ahead and confirm it by clicking on select. And then if you scroll down to the text, in this case, we're going to delete the text because I just want the customers to see the photo, but you can add text and feel free to do whatever you want. Just make sure it looks clean and professional. So that's enough for this image. We're going to go ahead and go back. Now you can go ahead and continue scrolling down to edit the rest of your homepage. You don't have to keep everything that you're seeing here, especially not in the beginning. We're only going to showcase the product that we want people to see on the home page. So if you look on the left side, you have a title for everything that we're seeing here. For example, this image with text. So let's say at this point, we do not want to add this. So simply click on it and on the three dots over here, click on remove section. Do not worry. You can always add that section again by clicking on add section. And if you want to see exactly what you're looking at, simply click on the eye over here. So if I click on it, as you can see, it hid it from the front page. So that's how I know that I'm controlling this section over here. So in this case, let's also remove the text columns with the images. Now we have the featured collection. Let's keep that because I think we can make it look good. Next image with text overlay. We don't need it at this point. Remove it testimonials since we don't have any we're going to remove it and here you can have a gallery for photos but at this point we're going to remove it so right now you just have your front page the announcement bar the logo that big header photo and we're going to add some of the products to the featured collection over here so let's go ahead and edit that featured collection go ahead and click on it you can change the name for example to featured products or to anything else that you want. And here you have to select the collection that you want to showcase. So if you remember from the previous lessons, when I added that dual dog leash product to my store, I connected it with the homepage collection and I told you that you can do the same. If you didn't do it, you can obviously do it anytime you want. But once you do that, all you have to do here is click on select collection and then choose which collection you want to showcase here. So I have my homepage collection, which I connected one product to. So once I clicked on it, as you can see, it's showing up over here. Now I do have a couple of more products that I added to my store. So all I have to do is go back to those products. Let's do that really quick so we can see it here. Head back to the AutoDS platform, go to your products page, click on the product that you want to edit, scroll down to collections and add it to the homepage collection. Save that product 
And let's do the same with these two products because I want to add all of them to that same homepage collection. So once again to this product and to these squeaky dog toys over here. Collection, homepage and save. Now let's head back to Shopify. Click on select collection again. Click on homepage. And there we go. All of those products in one click of a button are on my featured homepage. Go ahead and click on select. And now let's check out our homepage. You have your top announcement bar, you have your logo, you have your nice big image which you can also add a text overlay to. And if you scroll down you have your featured products, 1, 2, 3 and 4. If you click on any one of them you'll obviously be taken to the product page. And as you can see you already have a store that's starting to look really good and really professional. So that's it regarding the featured products. Let's go ahead and go back. By the way, there's more options like adding more products per row and adding more rows. I can't go through each and every little option, but I am showing you guys how you can go ahead and create your store and have all of the important things that you need. So you can go ahead and play around with this, add more sections, see what each section does and how it affects the overall look of your homepage. Just make sure that your homepage looks clean not too messy and that each feature that you're adding looks clean professional and relevant just like what we're seeing in front of us now now another section that i encourage you guys to add to your home page is a newsletter subscription option so click on add section scroll down until you reach the newsletter and click on it once you click on it it will add it to the home page as you can see over here subscribe to our newsletter which is right under the featured products so we're going to keep this one that we just made over here. We're going to click on select and you can change the text over here. For example, let's keep in touch. Go back. So here you have your subscription option that you added under the featured products on the home page. That's enough sections for now. Once again, you don't want too much of a mess on the home page, especially not from the start. Later on, start adding more things and test out each feature to see which one works better than the other. But once again, as you can see, the home page already looks fine and it's more than enough to get started. The next thing that I want you guys to do on the left side, click on theme settings. And here you can change the colors of your text and the headings and everything else. I'm not going to do it now. I just want to show you guys where this option exists. You can also change the typography, the fonts. But what I do want you guys to add is the favicon. Now, what exactly is a favicon? You see these icons that we're seeing up here on the top of each tab. So Shopify has their favicon, AutoDS has their favicon, Pixabay, the stock photo website has theirs and so forth. You also want to have yours. It just gives your website a much more formal look and will give the customer a feeling that you are a real website and you want them to feel that connection. And the best news about this is you already have a favicon saved on your computer from your previous lessons. Remember that Hatchful lesson where you created your own store logo? This is exactly what we're going to use now. So click on favicon, click on select image, now go to the directory where you downloaded that Hatchful folder that got sent to your email and you'll see that one of the file names is called favicon.png. Go ahead and click on that and click on open. You see that small little logo? That's your favicon. Go ahead and click on that and click on select. Now let's go ahead and save everything that we did. On the top right click on save. And just so you know, this icon over here will also show you a mobile version of your homepage. The customer opens up his mobile phone, goes to your homepage. This is what he sees, free shipping on all orders. Here's your logo. Here's the main image on your homepage and the featured products. He can simply click on them to go inside the product page. Let's keep in touch, enter your email address. And that's enough for the homepage. Do not worry about the bottom footer. We did not talk about that yet, but as you know, you shouldn't worry because as you can see, I'm going through each and every single thing that you guys need to know in order to have a successful and converting Shopify store. So go ahead and click on the exit button on the top left after you saved everything that you did. Now on the right side, go ahead and click on view your store and voila, here is your store and this is everything that you learned in this lesson. We have your top announcement, you have your logo, you have the big image with those cute puppies. Scroll down to see those featured products. Click on any of them to go inside that product page. As you can see, everything is optimized and everything looks good. And if you scroll down, you'll see that Shopify also added the other products as a form of cross sales to also try and sell them while we're trying to sell this product at the same time. Let's go back to the homepage. 
scroll down, see that subscribe button, and do not worry that it still shows up over here. We're going to get to that bottom footer menu soon. Right now, I just wanted to go over the main aspects of your homepage. And once again, as you can see, it's already looking good. And your assignment for this lesson, before heading on to the next one, is to create your homepage, go through everything that I talked about in this lesson, and check out additional options that you have from the homepage, which I showed you guys. Go ahead and make a nice, clean and professional not too messy homepage and i'll see you in the next lesson where we will start learning about store policies and legal pages do not fall asleep just yet you need to have these pages on your shopify store and i'm going to simplify this process as much as possible for you so go ahead and get that homepage that you were looking for and i'll see you in the next lesson in the previous lesson you learned how to create a professional homepage like the one that we're looking at now which i created while doing this video tutorial for you guys now in this lesson, what you're going to do is create your legal pages for your shop. Now don't fall asleep on me just yet. You made it this far and this lesson is going to be a little bit more boring than the other lessons that you will have. But these legal pages are for your own protection. And on top of that, it also helps answer questions that your buyers may have, questions which most of the time stand in the way between them and purchasing your product. So when we answer those questions in advance, the buyers will have the confidence to buy the product from our website without having to reach out to you if they will even reach out at all. So what legal pages do we need on our site? Just about six of them. You need your about us page, frequently asked questions, shipping policy, returns and refunds, privacy policy, and terms of service. Did you fall asleep yet? I hope not. At least the good news is that I did most of the work for you guys, so you don't have to create these pages from scratch. You just need to make some minor changes inside these pages to make it accustomed to your own site. And that's it. These pages will be ready in no time. So this is what you have to do to get those legal pages ready. The first thing that you have to do is head over to your Shopify dashboard and on the left menu, click on online store and then click on pages. The first thing you'll see is add a page to your online store since you don't have any. So we're gonna go ahead and click on add page. And now you can choose what kind of page you would like to add. In this case, we want to create a contact us page so that our viewers and buyers can send us messages. So on the right side where it says page, click on that and change it to page.contact. Now on the title, you can go ahead and write contact us. What we're doing here is we're simply creating a page with a fill out form where the viewer will write his name, email address, and the message that he wants to write. So here in the body text, you don't have to write anything if you don't want to, but if you want, you can go ahead and write something like, let us know what's on your mind, and we'll let you know what's on ours. So once you're done with that, go ahead and click on save. And now, as you can see, the page was created. You can go ahead and see it on your online store just to get a preview of what you just did. So you have the contact us, the title that we wrote, that little text, let us know what's on your mind and we'll let you know what's on ours. And here's the text field for the viewer. They'll write their name, their email address, which is mandatory so that you'll be able to reply to them, their phone number, which is not a must, and the message that they want to write to you. Once they click on send, the message will get sent to the email that you registered your shop on Shopify with. So now we already have a contact us page. Before we set it up on our navigation menu, let's go ahead and set up those legal pages. So now head back to the Shopify dashboard. On the bottom, click on settings. And here you have the policies which you can create and then add it to your website. So you have your refund policy, privacy policy, terms of service, and shipping policy. Now in most of these policies, you already have a template which Shopify already created for you. So if you click on create from template, you're going to get the refund policy that Shopify already made ready for you. But a default policy cannot be your store policy because you need a custom policy which is right for your website. So that is why we are not going to use that. I already created the text that you need for these legal pages and you can find all of them in the resources PDF that you have for this course. On the resources PDF, you'll find the returns and refunds policy. And this is exactly what it looks like. So what you have to do is go over that specific policy and change all of the highlighted text to the correct text, which is right for your shop. Let's see an example of what I mean. So let's go over this returns and refunds policy. We have a insert number of days day return policy. So for example, if you're working with a US supplier, which offers you a 30 day return policy, this is exactly what you can offer your end customer. So in this case, we're going to edit it to 
we have a 30 day return policy. And the only thing that you need to do is go over all of these highlights and just change it to the correct text that needs to be inside that field. We are going to do this one together so that you'll understand every step that you need to take. So we have a 30 day return policy because our US supplier gives us 30 days also, which means you have 30 days after receiving your item to request a return to be eligible for a return your item must be in the same condition that you received it unworn or unused with tags in its original packing by the way if your supplier gives any other conditions you can just go ahead and edit this text to start a return you can contact us at insert your email address or by using our contact us link which is what we just created a couple of minutes ago so we're going to use shopify to get that link really soon so let's just leave this one open for now and once again using our contact us link the contact us with your contact us page you can go ahead and grab the link from your store but i'm going to show you an easier way to do it soon next your damages and issues with your product exceptions on non-returnable items exchanges and replacements and refunds all of this is according to what your supplier can give to you you are going to give the same thing to your customer. So you can leave it as it is if it's correct or make the changes if needed. Now what we're going to do is copy this returns and refunds policy and we're going to paste it over here on the refund policy. The best news about these legal pages, which are a little bit boring, but it's for our own protection and they also help us get more sales. The good thing about it is you only need to do it once. After you do this work once, you won't have to go back and do it again unless there are some changes in your policies and so forth. So here's the text that we copied from the resources PDF. And now we want to link our contact us page since we left that part open. So what we're going to do is highlight that contact us word that we want to link with our contact us page. Then we're going to click on insert link as you see over here. Now on the link to you need to write the address for your contact us page. Go ahead and open up your Shopify dashboard. Click on online store. Click on pages. Click on the contact us page. On the right side, click on view page. And here you have the website address for the contact us page. Go ahead and copy that. Head back into the legal pages on Shopify. And on the link too, we're just going to paste that web address. And on the link title, you can go ahead and leave it as it is because we already highlighted the word contact us. And that is our link title. So go ahead and click on insert link. And as you can see, the contact us has turned into a link. Now we're going to delete what we don't need. And we're going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the policies using the same method that we just used now. So if you scroll down, you'll see that the next one is privacy policy. So head back to the resources PDF and click on the privacy policy. You'll find it and it'll look just like this. Go ahead and copy all of that onto your privacy policy text box on the legal pages in Shopify settings. And you can go ahead and start filling in what you need. You can do it over here or on the document file, really whatever is most comfortable for you. And you can go ahead and move on to the next legal page, the terms of service, which of course you have on the resources PDF for this course. Go ahead and copy that, make the changes that are needed inside those highlights and paste it on your terms of service and scrolling down further will take you to your shipping policy. So once again, back to the resources PDF, find that shipping policy that I created for you guys, copy that and paste it into the shipping policy. So once you're done filling in all of these policies, which were already made for you, go ahead and click on save. And now we're going to fill in the rest of the pages, which were not created for us by Shopify. So once everything is saved, go back to online store. Here you can see the contact us, which we created in the beginning of this lesson. Now we're going to go ahead and click on add page. And now there are two final pages, which we want to create about us and frequently asked questions. So let's go ahead and get started. The first page, the title should be about us. And this is going to get the reader familiar with who you are, what you have to offer. And the main point of the about us page is to get you emotionally connected with your viewer. So you already have the about us, which I created for you. Go ahead and copy that. So here you're just mainly emphasizing about the fact that you're selling high quality products. So once again, change the insert niche to the niche that you're working on the business name or the website address to the one that you have. So you also have a little who we are text and about us and the founding of your business. Just don't forget to change these comments with the relevant text that's relevant for your shop and you will have your about us page ready. Once you do that, go ahead and click on save and the about us page is created. The last page that we want to create add page. Now we're going to create a page called frequently asked questions. 
So once again, on that resources PDF, grab that frequently asked questions doc, copy that, paste it into the text field, and the title should be the title. You can also add FAQ, which is short for frequently asked questions. And once again, go ahead and fill in those comments. I made it as simple as possible for you guys with these comments that you simply need to delete and fill it in with the relevant text. So once you're done with that, go ahead and click on save. So now that all of our legal pages are ready, we need to broadcast them on our website using the different menus that we have. But I think that that's enough for this lesson. Your assignment for this lesson is to create those legal pages that I talked about in this video, get help on each and every one of them using the resources PDF that you have for this course, easy copy, easy paste, edit whatever needs editing, save those pages, and I'll see you in the next lesson where we will go through the navigation menus and start placing those pages on your site. Take care of your legal pages and I'll see you in the next lesson. In the previous lesson, you learned how to create your own store policies and legal pages which you need for your own protection and which will also help you close more sales. In this video, you're going to learn about the navigation menu, which will create links on your website on the top menu and the footer menu with the links to those legal pages that we added in the previous lesson. And by the way, good job on making it this far, guys. It really shows that you are serious in what you're trying to do and you will succeed if you continue learning and continue implementing. So now let's head over to the online store on the Shopify dashboard and then go ahead and click on navigation. Now what you're seeing here is the footer menu and the main menu. On your side, it looks like this. The main menu is here on top and the footer menu is what we see here on the bottom. So let's go ahead and fill them in with the relevant pages and links that we just created. Go back to the navigation menu, click on the footer menu. Now on the footer menu, you can see that there's currently a search function. Let's go ahead and see exactly what that is. So go back to your website, scroll down to the bottom to the footer menu, and here you can see a search quick link. It's not very friendly to have a search link on the bottom of your page. So at this point, what we're going to do is click on delete and remove it. Don't worry, you can always add it back later if you want. Now there's nothing in your footer menu. So what you need to do next is click on add menu item. And now we're going to start adding links to those legal pages, which are boring and we don't want it to be in the center of our website. So we're just gonna have it on the bottom over here under the quick links. So click on the text box under link, scroll down until you see policies, click on that. And here are the policies which we already created. So let's go ahead and start adding them privacy policy. The name is privacy policy. So we're just going to go ahead and click on add. And here, as you can see, it was already added. Let's go ahead and fill in the rest of those policies. So refund policy, add menu item, policies, shipping policy, add, add menu item, policies, terms of service, add. See, it's not really that hard once you get the hang of it. So click again on add menu item. Only this time, you're not gonna click on policies, you're gonna click on pages. Here you have the three pages that we created, about us, contact us, and frequently asked questions. What we wanna put on the bottom is frequently asked questions. Click on add menu item again, go to the pages, and we will add the about us also on the bottom. The contact us I think can be on the top menu instead of on the bottom menu because when a viewer sees that they can contact you, it usually helps them get more confidence to buy from your store. So we're just gonna add the about us as the last page for the footer menu. And as you can see here, all six of those pages and policies have been added to the footer menu. Now go ahead and click on save and go back. Now we're still in the menus, only this time we want to edit the main menu. So go ahead and click on main menu. Here you can see that you have two links, a home link and a catalog link. To see exactly where they are and what they look like, just go ahead and head back to your website, scroll up to the top, and here you can see the home link and the catalog which will take you to your products. If I click on that, it'll take you to the products. That's the catalog link. So you have home and catalog. Now what you can do first is change the name catalog maybe to products. Okay, so we have home and products. Now let's add a menu item back to those pages that we created. And we wanna have that contact us right up there. Click on add and that's it, that should be good. Now go ahead and click on save. 
Now let's see how everything looks on our website. Okay, so here we are back on the website. Let's go ahead and refresh it. Here we are, home, products, and contact us. The products will obviously take us to the products. Let's go back. And the contact us is going to take us to that contact us page that we created. So here we are, it's alive, it's running, and it works. Now if we scroll to the bottom of the site, you can see the rest of the quick links that we just configured. Privacy policy, refund policy, shipping policy, terms of service, frequently asked questions, and about us. And if you click on each and any one of them, it'll take you to that text, and here's the link to that contact us page. Click on that, back to the contact us. So everything works, and it's already starting to look good. The website is starting to look professional. I changed the text up in the announcement bar to just make it a little bit more friendly to the reader. But as you can see, everything here already looks good. There's just one thing that I would like to edit from here. And I'm not sure if you guys noticed it, but I don't like the fact that we have a subscribe up here and a subscribe down here. So this one over here looks good. We don't need the one on the bottom and it is not on the footer menu. This is the footer menu over here. So in order to delete this newsletter block over here, what you need to do is head back to your Shopify dashboard, click on online store, and under themes, you have to customize your theme. So wait for this page to load, click on customize, and here on the footer, which is exactly the newsletter that we want to delete, click on that. And here's that newsletter, click on it, three dots, remove newsletter. Boom, that's gone. We have the quick links on one line, which looks good, it's in the middle. So is the subscribe to our newsletter, the products. As you see, step by step, our store is starting to look really good, really professional, and we're that close to launching it and start making sales. So that's it when it comes to navigation menus and linking them with your pages and your store policies. You can create as many pages as you want for your website and set them up in your navigation menus. It doesn't only have to be legal pages, but use your creativity later for that subject. Your assignment for this lesson is to set up your navigation menu and link up all of those pages and store policies that we have created in the previous lesson. Once you're done with that, I'll meet you in the next lesson where we are going to talk about store currencies and payment providers. See you there. Okay, so now that we're done setting up our navigation menu, let's go on ahead and set up our store currency and our payment providers. Now, the reason that you want to set the correct store currency is so that the viewer will see the correct currency when he's browsing your site. For example, let's go to the website that we created during this course and click on one of the products that we added during the previous lessons. And as you can see here, the currency is a USD currency. That's because a few lessons ago I changed it and I may have tipped you guys on it, but let's go over that process really quick to see how it's done. And as you can see, any variation that I click on, the currency stays the same because I chose a USD currency. So head over to your Shopify dashboard, click on settings, click on general, scroll down until you see the store currency and simply change it to US dollar. The reason that we're going with US dollar is because in this course, I'm teaching you guys how to sell to the US audience. So the US audience resides in the United States and their currency is the US dollar. So we're going to go ahead and choose that and go ahead and save that. If you want to take it one step further and also market yourself not only to the US, all you have to do is download an app called Auto Multi Currency Converter. The link to it, by the way, is in the resources PDF that you have for this course. And once you install this app on your store, it will look like this, as you see here on the bottom right, you can choose which currency you want to go with. So if I click on that, I can go ahead and change the currency to any other currency that I want. And then it'll simply refresh the prices on the page with the currency that I'm interested in. So use that if you're planning to market outside the US. So that's regarding the store currency. Now let's talk about the payment providers that Shopify can provide you with. I don't know which country you're from, but every country works different than the next. So once again, head back to the Shopify dashboard, click on settings, then click on payments. And here you can see which payment providers you can go ahead and use. So once again, if you're in the US, you can go ahead and use Shopify payments, which is the default option and also use PayPal, which Shopify already creates an account automatically for you when you create your Shopify account. And this is another very good method to receive payments from. But once again, if you reside outside the United States, you cannot use Shopify payments. You're going to have to go ahead and sign up with a third party payment provider and do not worry about it. It's actually a very simple process. So I added the link to the online payment gateways that you can go ahead and choose depending on where you live around the world. 
The link to this page can be found once again on the course PDF that you have. So simply go ahead and click on the country wherever you're from. For example, let's click on Hungary in Europe. And if you scroll down, you can see what payment providers are available. And then just go ahead and reach out to one of them. Tell them that you have a Shopify store and that you would like to integrate their payment provider option in your store. And they'll guide you through the rest of the process. It's as simple as going into your Shopify settings where we were just at. Click on choose a third party provider and then choose them from the list and add whatever details you're getting from that provider so that the synchronization will work. And once you have that third party payment provider, don't forget to see exactly how much fees they're taking from you so you can calculate your break even accordingly. Remember that when you're using a third party payment provider, Shopify is going to take another 2% from your transaction from using third party payment processors when you are using the basic plan of $29 a month. So keep that in mind and configure the right payment provider to work with on your store. Once again, the payment provider is that payment option that your viewer will see when he's trying to check out with the product that he has in his cart from your store. Therefore, if they do not see the payment options that they want to use, for example, a Visa credit card or a MasterCard, some of them want to use only PayPal and some of them want to use other options that you have in the third party payment providers. So that's it when it comes to store currency and payment providers. Your assignment for this lesson is to choose the right store currency for your store and choose a third party payment provider which is supported by the country that you live in. And I'll see you in the next lesson where we will be going over the checkout settings and the shipping zones so that our customers can have a smooth checkout process without any problems and we won't be losing any sales this way. See you in the next lesson. Now we are going to be talking about checkout settings and shipping zones. When you combine this lesson with the previous lesson, your customers and your viewers will have a very smooth checkout process when trying to buy from your store, which is exactly what we want. So on your Shopify dashboard, go ahead and click on settings and then click on checkout. The first option that you want to look at is customer accounts. You can go ahead and leave it as disabled or you can go ahead and choose accounts are optional. I do not recommend to go with accounts are required because you don't want to tell your viewers, hey, you have to create an account on my website before you check out. Many do not want to create accounts. They just want a simple and fast checkout process. Next, you can choose if you want the customer to check out using either a phone number or email or by only using an email address. In my opinion, the email address is more than enough, but if they add phone numbers, they will get order updates by SMSs and not just through emails. So go ahead and choose whatever is most comfortable for you here. I would go only with the email option because once again, it's more than enough and it gets the job done. Next, on the receive shipping updates, go ahead and choose the first option. The customer can choose to add a phone number or email to receive shipping updates after they complete their order instead of having them download an app to see what's going on. And you have to be a US resident to use that. So it's not comfortable for everyone. So the first option is good. Next on the form options, you should require a first and last name since you don't want any problems with the delivery process with the shipping company. On the company name, you can leave it as hidden or as optional, but definitely do not make it mandatory. So either hidden or optional. Address line two should also be optional. Shipping address phone number is definitely not a must, so you can go ahead and leave it as hidden. And now you can go ahead and leave the rest of the options as default because they are good enough for what we need. So once we're done with that, go ahead and click on save. And that's it concerning the checkout settings. Now let's move on to the shipping zones. Back to the Shopify dashboard, click on settings, and then click on shipping and delivery. The reason that we need to create a shipping zone is to tell Shopify which countries we want to sell to and so that our viewers will be able to get free shipping or a shipping cost of whatever we want. So a shipping zone is a must. So once you are here, click on manage rates. Now here you'll notice on a default setting, you are shipping from your local address, which you have registered to Shopify with on your Shopify profile. And you're also shipping to the same country that you're from. And obviously this is not what we're here to do. And this is exactly why we need to set these shipping zones. So what you need to do now is open your settings in a new tab. And here, instead of using the default location, we're gonna go ahead and click on add location. And this is going to be the name of the location where your products are shipping out from. So we're just going to go ahead and call it US Warehouse. 
Now in the address field, you're going to have to have an address, a valid and real address from the US. Now to help you with this in the resources PDF that you have for this course, there is a file over there with a whole bunch of US addresses in New York to help you out with these addresses. So go ahead and copy any address, for example, this one, 13 Washington Square South, paste it over here in the address. And as you can see, there's a drop down menu. So go ahead and choose any address. This way we'll know that it's valid. And this way it also simplified the process. It shows the correct city in the state of Massachusetts with the zip code. And that's good enough. Let's go ahead and click on save. And now we have a location which we can set our shipping zone from and have any resident in the US buy from our store. So now let's head back to the shipping menu that we were on before. Now on the shipping from, click on show details manage the one that's not relevant, remove it and click on done. Now we have the address that we do want to use, the US warehouse that we just created on the settings slash locations. On the shipping zone, we're going to click on the three dots and delete it, the shipping to. Now we're going to create our own shipping zone. So the zone name is going to be called ship to USA, for example. And in the country, go ahead and add the United States click on done and now Shopify will allow anyone that's coming from the United States to our site they will have the add to cart and buy now options because we told Shopify that we want to ship to all of the 62 countries in the United States now we're going to click on add rate we're going to call it free shipping and the price is going to stay on zero dollars because we want to offer free shipping just as we are getting them from our suppliers go ahead and click on done so once again now everyone from the united states can buy products from your store because they will see the add to cart and buy now options anyone outside the united states can still go to your site they can still view your products and their prices but they will not have the add to cart and buy now options if you want to add those countries just add them in your shipping zone so once you save them that's all there is to it you have created your shipping zones so that's it when it comes to your checkout settings and your shipping zones. This is exactly how you guys can get those two features done. And now our viewers will have a very smooth checkout process without any problems or interruptions. Guys, I'm really glad that you made it this far. I know that the past couple of lessons were not the most interesting ones, but you see how important they are to run your business smoothly and efficiently. But don't worry, you're going to love the next lesson. Your assignment for this lesson is to configure your checkout settings and your shipping zones. And I'll see you in the next lesson where you will finally go live with your store. You worked really hard up until now. I'm proud of you. And I'll see you in the next lesson where we are finally going to go live. Allow me to say that you've come a long way to make it to this lesson. You learned about the most professional methods, how to create your online store, and it's already created. You already have your store. You have very good products using product research from a very professional method used by the most advanced dropshippers today. And you created all of your legal pages and made your homepage look good. You navigated all your menus and now it's time to go live with your store. I hope you're excited for this because it's a big step forward. So let's begin. On your Shopify dashboard, click on settings. Next, click on plan and permissions. And here you will have the option to subscribe to Shopify and select your plan. Since I already did it, you can see the current plan that I'm on, but you will have the option to select a plan. And when you click on it, it will look like this. So here you have your three plans. You are going to start with a basic Shopify plan because it's enough. It will cost $29 a month. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted you guys to fully create your store before going on to subscribe. But now is the time. So with this plan, you're going to get a 2% transaction fee, which we talked about a couple of lessons ago when setting our break even. And if you're using third party payment providers, there's additional fees. So if you still don't know how to sum up your break even, just go back a couple of lessons. It's definitely worth it. And I really hope that you will get to the point where you need employees to run your store. So that's what the basic Shopify plan gives you. And like I said, it's more than enough to get started. Once you start generating sales and profit, move on to the $79 a month where you will have less transaction fees and you can have more employees and then move on to the advanced Shopify. And I really hope that you guys make it to the advanced stage, but it will take some time. Don't rush yourself anywhere. Start with the 29 bucks a month, start generating your sales and profit, and then move on as you go along. 
when you will have enough sales in the basic plan and the 2% transaction fee will not be worth it when compared to the 1% transaction fee, that's when you know that it's time to move on to the next plan. So go ahead and click on choose this plan. Choose if you want to pay $29 every 30 days or an annual plan to save more money or a two-year plan or a three-year plan to save more and more. I would start with $29 for 30 days, see how it works for you and slowly move on. Then later in the payment method, simply choose if you want to pay with credit card or by PayPal and then move on to entering your details and that will be it. You will have a Shopify subscription plan and then you'll be able to disable your store password. Once you disable your store password, your store will go live. Anyone will be able to enter your website and buy anything from your store. So let's go ahead and disable that password. On the left side, click on online store and under themes, you will have an option to disable your password over here. I don't have the option once again because I already disabled my password, but here's where you're going to have that option. Simply click on disable password and there won't be any lock to your website and anyone will be able to enter it. So once you do that, go ahead and test it out. Open up a new tab, type in that new domain that you purchased a few lessons ago and you will see that your website is live and it looks good because you followed every step that you had in this free course to be able to really build a professional looking website that anyone can go in right now and start purchasing your products and that is all there is to it to have a live store with hot selling products the next step is to bring traffic to your website you have a shop but nobody knows about it that's why in the next lesson we are going to have an introduction to e-commerce marketing followed by the lessons that will come after that where you will learn how to create your own successful facebook ads and do not be afraid when you hear facebook ads we're going to learn how to do it on a budget and do it successfully to bring traffic and bring sales to your shop. Good job on having a live store, congratulations, and I'll see you in the next lesson. In the previous lesson, you finally went live with your store, and now the domain is up and running, and anyone can go inside and start purchasing the products that you have in your store. The only problem is, who knows about your store? This is what we have this lesson for, an introduction to e-commerce marketing where you will learn how to get your store in front of the right audience so that they will be able to go inside your store, see what you have and start purchasing the products so that you can finally start making your profits. So what marketing methods do we have available and which ones can be done while on a budget so that we can learn marketing and also succeed while we're at it. Now I'm going to be talking about a few methods. You can go ahead and do whatever you want. But my recommendation at the end of the day is to start with Facebook ads. But before we get to that, let's get familiar with some of the best techniques that are used today for marketing because knowledge is power and you might use one of these techniques in the future. So the first marketing technique is using influencer marketing platforms to find and reach influencers that will give a shout out to your product or to your store. The same influencers who have tens of thousands to millions of followers. And this is one way to get your target audience to your website. And you also have a blog with the 10 best influencer marketing platforms that we have available on the internet today. You can find the link to the blog in the resources PDF that you have for this course. And there, once again, you will learn about the best influencer marketing platforms, which are websites, databases, that hold a whole bunch of influencers. You can go over all of the influencer marketing platforms that have the databases of influencers inside. And with this blog, you will also learn how to reach out to them, what to look for when you're reaching out to them, to make sure that you're connecting with the right influencers so that they can give a proper shout out to your product and get tons of traffic to your store this way. So influence marketing platforms is the first marketing technique that you can use to bring traffic to your store. And it's one of the newest, freshest, and most used methods today for marketing in the now and in demand era. Now, the second marketing method to bring traffic to your website, and this is an organic method, which means it doesn't cost you any money to run this marketing technique. And this is done by going and creating a Facebook group for the niche that you are running. Now you are going to create a page anyway to run your Facebook ads. And it's also really smart because it's an organic way to bring traffic to your store. Let's take this group for example, for the love of dogs. So it's a dog niche like the website that I created. And as you can see, they already have more than 50,000 likes, more than 60,000 followers. And the only thing that they're doing is creating a post every now and then about dogs, some funny pictures, maybe a small article, 
a funny sentence. And as you can see, people are just engaging with these posts. They're interacting with it because they're dog lovers. And this is a good example of something that you need to do with your niche. And people will go inside and start interacting with your posts. The same people that feel like they have an emotional connection with the community that you are building. And once again, it's an organic method. It doesn't cost any money to have a Facebook page and create posts on it. The third marketing technique that I want to talk to you guys about is simply by having an Instagram account. And if you have a Facebook account, you already have an Instagram account. If you don't, you can simply create one and then simply make posts about your niche. People will get to that post organically and interact with it if they have an emotional connection with what you have to offer. So different from having a Facebook page where you are creating a page and then posting inside that page on Instagram, you can simply make regular posts without creating any pages and get traffic to your store that way. Now, the last marketing technique that I want to talk to you guys about is using email marketing. Email marketing is one of the most oldest methods that are still used today for marketing. Why? Because it simply works. Once you have an email database, and if you remember on the bottom of your site, you have a subscription box where people can simply enter their email address. So once you have a database of about 200 to 300 emails, you can go ahead and start running email campaigns on your Shopify dashboard simply by clicking on marketing and creating your first campaign for email marketing. And this is another organic method, meaning you don't have to pay anyone to enter their email address. And once you have that email database list, which didn't cost you any money to generate, all you have to do is start sending them emails on special promotions and special discounts that you have going on. It takes time to build an email database list, but it's a very, very good goal for the long-term success of your store by marketing and not paying any money for that. So email marketing is the last method I want to talk about before we go on and talk about Facebook ads. Now, Facebook ads is one of the best ways to market your store today because you can simply get your website in front of a large customer base with a relevant audience, even if you're on a budget. I'm going to teach you step by step how to create a Facebook ad, how to create videos for your ads and how to market to the right audience. And this way you will learn that you don't have to be a marketing expert and you don't have to have so much money in your pocket to be able to succeed. Once again, take a deep breath. Do not be intimidated. It's as user friendly as I am. See you in the next lesson. Okay, guys and gals, it's time to learn about one of the most interesting things that we have in this course. And that is one of the best methods to market your products and your store today. And I'm talking about none other than Facebook ads. Now, if these couple of words intimidate you, it really doesn't have to. You don't have to be a marketing expert and you can definitely learn to do this and still succeed while on a budget. So why Facebook ads? Well, for one, like I said, it's one of the best methods to market your store, your products or your brand that are available in today's online market. Small, medium and big companies use Facebook ads to promote their businesses. And it's simply a great way to connect between businesses and the right audience, even while on a tight budget. Facebook also has a really user friendly platform to create and manage your ads. You don't need any technical skills. All you need is a Facebook active profile. And Facebook is filled with massive audience data, including demographics, audience interests, and so much more. Another good thing about Facebook ads is that their ads are easily scalable. So once you find an ad that's working well for you, within one click of a button, you can scale it to the moon. That's one of the things that I love about Facebook ads. So you're testing several ads at once. And once you find that winner, it'll dominate all of those ads that didn't work well for you and it will make you some really great profit along the way. So now that you have a whole bunch of information scattered in your head, what exactly are we going to learn when it comes to Facebook ads? First things first, you're going to learn how to create a Facebook page. As simple as it sounds, it starts by creating a page. Next, you're going to learn about the Facebook pixel and you're going to learn how to install it and embed it into your website. And this will help gather audience data and audiences that are similar to them to find better audiences that are better suit for your store and your products that you're trying to sell. You're also going to learn how to research your audience which means find the correct audience that are right to showcase your products to. After that, you're going to learn how to create converting video ads, which is a very important lesson. Then you will learn how to set your campaign goals. After that comes the advertising budget, which is important because you want to be on a budget and still succeed. And I'm going to show you how. And right after that, you're going to launch your first ad. 
After you launch it, you're going to learn how to analyze the data. So you'll learn about the differences from those that are not performing well to those that are performing well and learn to multiply your success and learn from the mistakes of those that didn't perform well. Now, I want you guys to stay super focused in this category of learning Facebook ads. It's not going to be easy, but success is never easy. I will take you step by step. So you will learn all of the fundamentals and all of the important things that you need to know. So once again, just take it step by step concentrate, stay with me, and I'll see you in the next lesson where we are going to start by creating a Facebook page. See you there. So what is a Facebook page and why do we need it to run ads? A Facebook page is a page that can be found inside of your Facebook profile and the Facebook page is used to run ads. When a viewer will see your ad, he is actually being directed to your Facebook page and not to your Facebook profile. Therefore, your Facebook page needs to showcase your product, your niche, your website, or whatever it is that you're trying to promote. So let's begin. Log into your Facebook profile and on the top, click on the plus, the create button, and then go down and click on page. Now, the first thing that you need to do is give your page a name. So you're going to call it by your business name, by your website's name. In my case, it's doggy dog club. Next in the category type E so you can find the e-commerce website. So this is the category that you're going to choose. You can also go with products and service, for example, but I think that e-commerce website is more fitting to what we're actually doing here. Next, you can write a little description. Your one stop shop for all dog lovers and then go ahead and click on create page. Okay. Now that Facebook created the basic part of our page, now let's go on ahead and start optimizing it to make it a real Facebook page so that our audience can start coming in organically and so that we can also start running our ads here. So the next step after setting up your page's name, the category that it belongs to and a short description, we are going to move on to the images and in the images, we're referring to the cover image that you can see over here and the profile image. So first things first, you have to take care of the profile picture and you already have a profile picture which you created using Hatchful. So click on add profile picture, go to the destination where you save that Hatchful folder and now find the file called Facebook profile image, which is right here. So I'm going to click that and there we go. You have a unique profile picture, a unique logo, which only you have, which cost you zero dollars and it looks professional. For the cover photo, you can search those stock photo websites that I mentioned a few lessons ago. You can find them once again in the resources PDF that you have for this course. So you can either use those stock photo websites to search up a new cover image or use the same cover image that you have on your website, which is what I will do in this case. And here we go. We have the cover photo. You can drag it here if you want to reposition, just put it a little bit more in the center. And don't forget that if you're using those stock photo image websites, just search up the niche or product or brand that you're trying to promote and find an image that looks relevant and connected to what you're trying to showcase. So we have the cover photo, we have the logo, everything looks good up until now. Go ahead and click on save. And here we go. We have our brand new page, Doggy Dog Club. You can continue optimizing it by adding, for example, a call to action button. So if you click on that, you can have a call to action button and direct people straight to your website. For example, go with shop now, write down your domain, click on save. And now there's a call to action button on your page. There's a shop now. So if someone clicks on it, they'll be taken directly to your website. Next, you can create a username for your page. When you have a username, you can simply direct people to your page in a much faster way. It needs to be unique. Nobody else can have this username. So just think of something unique because I'm pretty sure that doggy dog club is not going to be available. Let's see. Nope, it's not available. So once again, think of something unique like doggy dog lovers unite. I know it's long, but once again, you need something unique. So go ahead and think of a unique username, add it to your page and continue optimizing your page. You can see what kind of tips Facebook gives you to continue optimizing your page. But what I do want to encourage you guys to do, if you have the extra time is to start creating posts so that your page will look alive. It will look active. And this way you're also going to get some organic traffic to your store and already start to get the ball rolling. So in my example, I can create a post by uploading a picture of a dog and writing a funny sentence or something that will simply connect the viewers dog lovers to what we're doing here. Create a post once a day or once every two days. You can even create posts and schedule them to upload at a later date. So for example, start 
start Sunday or Monday morning by creating 10 posts and schedule them for the whole week up ahead. So on one hand, you're getting organic traffic and on the other hand, you can run your ads through this page and your assignment for this lesson, if it wasn't obvious enough, is to create your Facebook page, add all of the relevant information and images, create a few posts, optimize everything that you can to make it look good. And I'll see you in the next lesson where you are going to create your Facebook ads account. Good luck with your Facebook page and I'll see you in the next lesson. Ready to get your hands dirty with Facebook ads? I know you are, that's why you're here. So in order to get started, the first thing that you're going to have to do is create a Facebook business manager. Inside your business manager, you will create ad accounts and that's where you're going to start running your ads. In order to get started with the Facebook business manager, just use the sign up link that I have ready for you in the PDF that you have for this course. Once you click on that link, you'll be taken to the page that you see here in front of me. All you're going to have to do after this step is click on create account. And on this screen, you will start creating your Facebook business account. Now you don't need to provide any VAT information. So if you didn't open a business account in the country that you live in, that's fine. You can even do that later. Once you see that this business model works for you and you'll start generating sales and profit, just go ahead and enter your name and your business's name, which in my case, it's doggy dog club and your business's email or just any regular Gmail that you have. Then just go ahead and click on submit and then your Facebook business account will be created. Once done, you'll be taken to the front page of your Facebook business suit and it's going to look like this. Now on the left side, the Facebook page that you created in this course should show up. If you have more Facebook pages under your Facebook account, you're just going to have to click on the arrow over here and select the correct page, which we will want to run our ads on. So I'm going to create an ad on Doggy Dog Club, just as you are going to create your ad on your page. Now in order to run ads, we're going to have to create an ad account. On the left side, click on more tools, then click on business settings. Now on the left side, click on ad accounts, then click on ad and go down to create a new ad account. Click on that, give your ad account a name, choose your time zone. The currency should be US dollars, then go ahead and click on next. Once you do that, your ad account will be created and you will see it over here. Now, the next thing that you want to do is enter your payment settings. So when you'll want to run an ad, you'll be able to associate your payment settings with that current ad account. And this way there will be no problems in running your ads. So click on payments, click on add payment method, fill in the correct details and then click on continue. You will not be charged anything at this point. Your credit card will simply be saved on the side. So when you'll start running your ads, They'll start running smoothly without any problems. And so those are all of the required steps that you need to take in order to create your Facebook business profile and create your ad account inside your Facebook business profile. Your assignment for this lesson is to create your Facebook business profile. You can use the link that we have in the PDF to help you get there. After that, create your Facebook ads account. And I'll see you in the next lesson where we are going to learn about and connect the Facebook pixel. And this is one of the best tools that you're going to learn about and use while on your journey to your successful dropshipping business. See you in the next lesson. All right, so you have your Facebook account, you created your Facebook business account, and then you've created your Facebook ads account, which is connected to your business account, which is connected to your main Facebook account. This is what we've done so far. And as you see, it's all connected. In this lesson, we are going to install and configure the Facebook pixel. The Facebook pixel is a small piece of code that you are going to embed into your website. Once there, the pixel will gather a whole bunch of data and information on the visitors who are visiting your site. In other words, the Facebook pixel calls these events. Every time a visitor does something on your website, the Facebook pixel writes it down and it remembers this information. For example, when someone clicks on your ad and goes into your product page on your website and he's viewing your product, this action is called view content. So that's an event that Facebook pixel is going to write down. When someone adds to cart or abandons the cart or writes their personal information to buy something from your website, or if they even enter their email address to subscribe to your newsletter, or if they're just browsing your site, everything that they're doing on your site will be written down as an event in Facebook pixels memory. Now Facebook pixel is kind of like a muscle. The more data and information you feed it, the bigger and better it gets. Now what it does with all of this information is it simply remembers all of the events and the type of audiences that are interacting with your website. So the next time when you create an ad, 
Facebook Pixel will have a better picture of what kind of audience they need to reach out to, the ones that are relevant to the niche or product that you are trying to sell. And once again, the more information that we feed the Pixel, the bigger and better that it's going to get when it comes to optimizing and finding audiences that even look alike to the audiences that are correct for my website. So the more people interact with our website, the more Facebook Pixel will know how to reach out to those people and more audiences that look alike to those people. So this way we'll always be optimizing and optimizing and reaching out to better and more relevant audiences. That's one small example of what the Facebook Pixel can do for us and it's completely free to use. So in order to install the Pixel, head back to your Facebook Business Manager and on the left side click on More Tools, then click on Events Manager. Now on the right side make sure that you have the right ad account selected since I have a few ad accounts. I'm going to have to choose the correct one and in my case it's doggy dog club that's what i named my ad account at the end so now i'm going to see the events manager for my facebook ad account which i created in the last lesson with you guys now that the page loaded head on to the left side and click on that green plus icon connect a new data source click on the web option and click on get started now choose facebook pixel and click on connect now enter a name for your pixel. So we're going to call this doggy dog club pixel since we want everything to be connected. And later on, when you're going to learn new niches, you'll create a separate ads account for that niche and a separate pixel for that niche so that you will always have a separation between everything and everything will stay connected with its own niche and category. Next, enter your website address and then click continue. Next, click on use a partner integration. Now choose Shopify, turn on automatic advanced matching, click continue. Now follow the step by step instructions as given by Facebook. So the first thing that they're telling you to do is go to your Shopify dashboard and click on online store. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Click on online store. Next, click on preferences. Let's go back to Facebook click on continue. So we already clicked on online store. We already clicked on preferences. Now they're telling you to copy and paste your pixel ID. Head back to Shopify. In the preferences, scroll down to Facebook pixel. Click on set up Facebook. Scroll down and click add sales channel. Click on connect account. After you put in your credentials, go ahead and continue. Next, choose the business manager which you created in the last lesson. Click on connect. Now choose the right Facebook page. So we are on Doggy Dog Club. Click on connect. Next, click on claim page. Click on add page to connect. Next, you'll have to choose the correct ad account. So in my case, it's the Doggy Dog Club ad account, which I created. You choose your own ad account, which you created. Click on connect. View and accept their terms. Each one is going to give you a different pop-up, which you're going to have to click on the blue accept on the top. So this is the first one. Here's the second one. So there we go, you have accepted these terms of service. Go ahead and skim through these terms to understand exactly what this is all about. It's for your own protection and it's not that much to read. Next, head back to Shopify, click on done. Now let's head on to data sharing. This is where we're going to connect the Facebook pixel to our Shopify account so that Facebook pixel can already start working and track events on our website. So here you're going to have to turn on customer data sharing. Next, choose maximum so that Facebook Pixel will try to always get the maximum amount of data, whether they have ad blockers or not. So use maximum for maximum effectiveness of the pixel. Then scroll down and choose which pixel you want to use. And if you have more than one pixel, that's why you need to name them. So in my case, it's the Doggy Dog Club Pixel. I'm going to go ahead and click on connect. And as you can see, now my pixel is connected with Shopify and you can confirm that by the pixel ID that I told you guys to copy from Facebook. So let's go back to Facebook. Here's the pixel ID that they gave us. By the way, this is the old fashioned way to copy and paste. Now Shopify is doing the whole Facebook integration, which I just showed you guys. So if you would have copied this code and searched for it on this page, as you can see, it's the same number that we're seeing here on the Doggy Dog Club pixel. So I know that I added the right pixel. Now I'm going to click on confirm. Now the next step is to test the pixel and make sure that it's tracking each event. So let's head back to the Facebook page that we were on where we had to copy the pixels code and click on continue. Now Facebook is allowing us to test our pixel and see if it works. So in order to test it, let's write the website address over here and then click on send test traffic. Now let's go inside one of the products that we have 
and let's head back to the pixel. And as you can see, the pixel is active. We got that green circle over here. And the last event that the Facebook pixel received is within the last hour. So now that we see that it's active and it got an event that we just did, go ahead and click on continue. And now we can track each event and see that each one works by testing it in the events manager. Click on test events in events manager and let's go ahead and test out our pixel and make sure that the events really are working. So once again, enter your web address over here and click on open website. Now let's go back to the pixel and here we go. We have a page view which just happened right now. So the page view is the event that I just did. Now let's click on one of the products and go back to the pixel. Now let's wait for that view content. And here is the view content. So we have a new page view and a view content, which is exactly what I just did over here. I'm viewing the product page, which is a view content event for the Facebook pixel. Now let's click on add to cart and see that the pixel recognizes that too. So click on add to cart. Let's go back to the pixel. And as you can see, here is the add to cart event. So as you can see, each event that every viewer will do on your shop will be tracked on Facebook's pixel. So I hope that you guys understood everything that we had in this video. As you see, things are starting to get a little bit technical, but the more you work on it, the easier it's going to get. Believe me, everything is connected, everything makes sense, and everything works. If you didn't understand something, you can go ahead and rewatch the video. There's absolutely no shame in that. And if you have any questions at any time, you can always feel free to reach out to us. Your assignment for this lesson is to install the Facebook Pixel and test the events manager to make sure that every event that's done on your website is working and being tracked by the Facebook Pixel. And I'll see you in the next lesson where you are going to learn about audience research so that you can research your audience the right way to reach out to the right audience when you start creating your ads, which is coming up in the lesson after that. See you in the next lesson. Now that we're done setting up our Facebook ads account, and our Facebook pixel is installed and configured onto our website. Now we're going to learn about audience research. And the reason that you want to be able to conduct thorough audience research is because you want to be able to tell Facebook what type of audience you're trying to reach out to, what type of audience you want Facebook to bring to your website, and you will be able to spend your ads budget much more effectively this way. In the resources PDF that you have for this course, there's a file called Audience Research Spreadsheet. Open that file and save a copy so that you can start editing. When you open the Audience Research Spreadsheet, it's going to look like this. You have a column for questions and you have a column for answers. There's only four questions that we're going to need to answer. So let's do it together so I can show you guys how simple and effective this method is. So the first question is, who are the authority figures influencers and big brands in your niche to answer each question use google so for this first question i use google to search for the biggest brands in the dog niche and i found this website which will show me the 15 biggest dog companies in the world and their most popular brands so let's scroll down a little bit and start writing down our answers first we have a dog company called mars pet inc so let's add that as one of the answers you want to find about four to five answers for each question because when we'll get to the part where we're creating our ads and you will start putting in your audience's general interests, you want to find as much general interest as you can to broaden your search and find more potential viewers that are related to the niche that you're trying to sell. So this is one company for pet food. Let's scroll down and search for some more big brands. This is also a pet food manufacturer, which we already have, and so is this one. So let's continue scrolling down to companies that are not just food companies. Top dog toy companies. You have Mammoth Pet Products. So let's add that as one of our answers. So we already have two big brands. Let's also add Kong. And a couple more that we will find down here. Dog supply companies. Happy Pet. And one more will be enough. Let's check out top vet care companies and go with this one, MSD Animal Health. So some of the general audience that we are going to try to search for and bring to our website are audiences that have a general interest in these big brands. But we don't only want audiences that are related to only these big brands. We want to broaden our search as much as possible and look for the right potential audience. So the next question and answers that we want to fill in is what books, magazines, and websites does your audience engage with? 
For this question, I searched Google for dog books, dog magazines, and dog websites. So three different searches, and here's what we found. So for popular dog magazines, Google already gave me these six, seven, eight magazines. So let's start filling in these magazines names. So we have Modern Dog, Dog Fancy. So we already have two magazines, that's enough. Now let's look for some dog books some popular dog books at that. So for this example, I went to Amazon because Amazon sells a whole bunch of books and there's a whole bunch of customer reviews so you can see which books are popular. So I just went on to Amazon and searched for dog books and here we can see some really popular results. Let's add these titles to the popular dog books. We'll only take two because we also have dog websites to look for after this one. A Dog's Perfect Christmas. So we have two popular books, two popular magazines. Now let's add one or two popular dog websites. So a quick search on Google for popular dog websites. Let's go to the first article by Business Insider. So first for pet food, they're recommending Petco. So let's add Petco as one of the popular dog sites. I also know about them. I'm pretty sure that almost everyone knows about them. So one website is Petco. And let's just add one more. How about a site for dog breeders? Sure, we haven't spoken about dog breeder lovers until now. Let's go ahead and try to capture this audience. So we're going to copy this URL and paste it over here. Boom, new layout for you guys. Now the next question is, what types of events does the audience attend? In order to find the answer to this, what do you think we're going to have to write on Google? That's right, popular dog events. So let's see the results. 25 unique dog events in the United States. Sounds good enough, right? We need dog events and our audience is in the United States. So let's see which popular dog events our potential audience loves looking at or going to or has a general interest in. So Paces for Paws is one event, which is a dog race event. So let's add that as one of the events that dog lovers love to attend. Puppies and Patriots 5K Run. Let's add that also as a title. Clarence Bark in the Park, another popular dog event, Rescue Run, which happens in Ohio. What we're doing now is we're really micro-niching our potential audience to try and find secret gems inside these audiences that other advertisers simply do not get to. There is more than one way to do everything, but this is one of the secret methods to really find the best potential audience inside these general interests for dog lovers. Let's also add this pause Chicago 5k walk run. So these are the names of popular dog events that dog lovers love to attend or have a general interest in. Now let's move on to the last question. What other relevant products does your audience use? Once again, I really skimmed through these to make these videos as short as possible for you guys, but you will need to research each and every one of them to see if they really are popular and if there really is a lot of interest in each and every one of these answers that we are giving in the spreadsheet. Now let's move on to the last question. What other relevant products does your audience use? Once again, a Google search. And here we're just going to write some really popular dog products that people love to buy. Let's go to Chewy.com, one of the most popular dog websites. So let's just add in some popular dog categories that relate to products. For example, dog food. For anyone who has an interest in dog food, they are probably dog lovers. They probably have dogs themselves, so they are a relevant audience. We also have dog treats. We have dog toys. So let's add people who have an interest in dog toys. We also have healthcare. So in this example, I want to write dog vet. People who have an interest in vets are most likely people who own dogs. Cleaning and potty. Let's see what else we have. Crates, pens and gates. Beds. Let's go with dog beds. Dog leashes, which is actually the product that I'm going to advertise. So dog leashes. And let's add another one really quick. People who love dog clothes. Okay, so now we have enough general interests to start running our ads on. When we create our ads, we will tell Facebook that these are the general interests that we are looking for in our audiences. And then Facebook will try to find the best potential audience to buy products from our website, from the same audiences that have an interest in all of these answers that we put here below. We will use this chart very, very soon when we'll start creating our ads. So far, we are preparing just as we've prepared in the last lesson, creating our Facebook ads accounts and the Facebook pixel. And soon it's all going to come together. 
Your assignment for this lesson is to download that audience research spreadsheet onto your computer and start answering each question that you have on the left side. Google search for the answers and put them on the right side. If you haven't heard of the answers that you're putting in, research them on Google, make sure that they are big and popular so that we will be able to grab the correct audience to showcase our website and our products to. Fill in the audience research spreadsheet and I'll see you in the next lesson where you are going to learn how to create converting videos for your ads. This is a very popular subject which a lot of people are having a hard time on and I'm going to simplify it for you just as I've been doing for this whole course up until now. Audience research spreadsheet, see you in the next lesson. Now you're going to learn how to create successful professional converting videos for the ads that you are going to run. Most audiences enjoy watching a good video of the product that they are about to purchase since it showcases the product in a much better way than photos do. Now I'm not saying that image ads or GIF ads are not going to perform well, but there is a much higher chance that a good video will be able to convert more customers. So let's start with the basics. In order to create a successful video ad, the first thing that you're going to have to have is a video for the product that you want to sell. Now, if you're working with suppliers like AliExpress and China, many sellers over there already have videos ready for their products. They are not usually professionally made videos. It's usually by some Chinese source and you usually have some Chinese letters in the video. But that is one way to get videos for your ads. Now, most US suppliers do not offer videos for the products that they are selling. We're going to have to get creative and make those videos ourselves. Now, if your product doesn't have any videos attached to it, there's a couple of things that you can do. One, you can reach out to the supplier and ask them if they can supply you with a video for the product. The second method is to order the product to your home. And not a lot of people like this method, especially if they're testing out 20, 30 or 50 different products. They don't want to order them all to their houses. For one, it's costing a lot of money and it's consuming a lot of time. But that's another method that some dropshippers use. The third method is to try to find a video for this product through other suppliers. Although in this case, you're going to have to make sure that it is the same product. Otherwise, you won't be advertising the same product and this could cause problems later with your customers. So let's start with the first scenario where you already have a video for your product and you want to create a video yourself. If this is the case, then you can use services like Animoto, as you see over here. And this platform allows you to create your own videos for your ads. And it's made especially for e-commerce business owners like you and I. So the first method is to use websites like Animoto. And there are a bunch of more websites where you can create videos for your ads. Although once again, this one requires some work since you are the one that is creating the videos for your ads. Now, if you are going with a method like this, you can use free sound libraries to get some sound effects and background music for your videos by using YouTube's audio library, for example. They have a whole bunch of sound effects and background music to use for your videos. So check out YouTube's audio library and get those free sounds for your videos. Now, the next method that I want to talk about to get videos for your ads is using a third party service provider, which will create the videos for you. And you don't have to do anything besides sit back and relax and just wait a couple of days for your videos to be ready. What am I talking about? Let's go on over and check it out. There is a website called ecomvideos.com and what they do is exactly what I just mentioned. They will create professional converting videos for your video ads. All you have to do is sign up with them. Signing up doesn't cost any money. Once you sign up, you'll be taken to their dashboard. And once you're in the dashboard, click on video ads. And here you can see the three types of video ads that you can order from them. You can order a single ad, which I wouldn't recommend because you need to split test at least three variations, which is exactly what you see over here in the second deal. And on the third one, you have four variations, which is also good, but I would like you to first nail down three variations, see that it works for you, then move on to four. What you're getting here are three ad variations, which means three different videos for your products, which means the first three to five seconds are going to be different. And this is very, very crucial to when you are creating video ads, different video ads and testing out different video strategies. The first three seconds are always very crucial to whether the potential viewer is going to stay and click on this ad or if he's going to move on to the next ad. When you're creating an ad for a product with only one video, there's a huge difference between that and selling the same product with two more videos to bring you to a total of three videos each one having a different three to five seconds. 
it will have the effect where the same person that saw this video but when he saw the first three to five seconds of this video it seemed like a different video even if it's the same product and they went on ahead and bought it this is a very typical scenario when it comes to e-commerce marketing therefore i highly encourage you to go with three variations for split testing this way you'll always be able to spot one or two ads that are not performing well when compared to one ad that is performing well for you and that is how you're going to learn how to spot the differences between successful ones to not successful ones and how to multiply your success and scale up those successful ads once you buy your video ads you will see them on the order screen over here on the left click on that order and here you have a text box where you can send a message to your video editors and let them know exactly what you want on your ads and all kinds of points that are important to you once you're done writing down your messages click on send message and you will have a message history for each order that you put onto the system now to sign up for ecom videos you have to use the link that we have in the resources pdf for this course this way you can use the code AutoDS when ordering your videos and you'll get a 10 percent discount on top of everything so you'll lower your expenses this way you can profit more and you'll have professional videos made for your ads so use that link in the resources pdf to sign up to ecom videos and then you'll be able to see the dashboard and everything else that i'm seeing here and you'll be able to put in an order for the video ads that you want let me show you an example of some video ads that they have created for others so i'm just going to play all three of these ads really quick you won't hear the sound because it's in my headphones but as you can see here they're adding the text and they're making the videos look professional they're working hard on the first three to five seconds but also on the rest of the video to simply make it look good converting professional and this is exactly what they can do for you so once again just use the link that we have in the pdf for this course to sign up with these guys and let them do the hard work for you your assignment for this lesson is to create one to three videos for the ad that you want to run I really want you guys to go with three because if you're only going with one video ad it's like adding only one product to your store so you're not testing enough and you might be missing something small that the second or third ad might have given you and that would be the big difference between success to failure when it comes to running ads i don't want you guys to spend money and then see that money go to waste therefore split testing is very very important get those videos and i'll see you in the next lesson where you will start setting your campaign goals See you in the next lesson. I hope you got a few good video copies for your ads because this is the lesson where you are finally going to learn how to set your campaign objectives. In other words, this is where you learn online marketing. So let's begin and let's take it step by step as we've been doing so far. In your Facebook business manager, on the left side, click on more tools, then click on ads manager. Now Facebook will take you to your ads manager. Here, click on your ads account. What we're going to do here is create a campaign for our ad sets. After that, you're going to create your ad sets and then your ad, which will be inside your ad set, which is sitting inside your campaign. Don't let this get too confusing. Just follow it step by step and watch how it all makes sense. So the first thing that we're going to do is create our campaign. Now, before you choose your campaign objective, you need to understand exactly what your campaign goals are. Your advertising objective is what you want people to do when they see your ads. For example, if you choose that your campaign objective is reach, then Facebook will try to reach as many people as possible for the lowest price possible as long as it reaches and they see your ads. Another example is traffic, where in this case, Facebook is going to try to give you as much of an audience as possible to see your ads and also click on the link that you have inside your ad to go and check out your website. If you choose, for example, engagement, then in this case, Facebook is going to try to find an audience that will engage with your ad which means like your ad or comment on it or share your ad. So if I'm liking posts or if you're commenting on posts, then Facebook sees us as people who like to engage with posts. And therefore, they're going to show us ads where their campaign objective was engagement. And you can go on with the list. If you go for video views, they're going to give you an audience that likes to watch videos and they don't just skip after the first second. If you're going to go for lead generation, they're going to give you an audience that usually likes to subscribe and leave their contact information. And if you go for conversions, which is usually the most expensive campaign objectives, this is where you're telling Facebook that you want them to find people who usually respond to call to action. For example, adding the product to the cart or purchasing it, adding payment information and so forth. My recommendation would be to go for engagement in the beginning because on one hand, engagement is going to show you if your product is interesting or not. 
what you're telling Facebook is to find an audience that will interact with my ad. So Facebook knows who their audience is that usually like to interact with ads. And this way you can see if your product is interesting at all. If your product is interesting, you're going to get a lot of likes, comments and shares of wow, what an amazing product. Where can I get mine? They're going to tag their friends and family to buy the product. And this is how you're going to know that your product is interesting and your Facebook pixel will gather information in the meantime. It will gather the data that it needs to gather in order to run more successful ads in the future, which can be conversion ads once you know that your product is interesting. So I hope that you understood why starting with engagement objectives is much smarter than going with conversion. So starting off right, go with engagement. On the bottom, on the engagement type, go with post engagement and then name your campaign. And since we're also going to create an ad set and an ad inside the campaign, we're also going to name them. You can name it anything you want. Just start with something so that you'll have a general name and click on continue. Now, as you can see here, the doggy dog club campaign has been created. Now let's start configuring it. So you have your campaign name, scroll down until you reach the campaign budget optimization. Now, if you have three videos for three ad copies that you're going to run, leave this option on for campaign budget optimization, which means Facebook is going to try to balance the budget between three ad campaigns and optimize them and see which one is working best. Once they see one campaign that's working better than the others, they're simply going to put more of your budget into the winners and less into the less performing ones. So if you have more than one ad set for your videos, leave this option on and then click on next. Now we're in the ad set settings. We are done configuring the campaign objectives. As you see, it really wasn't that hard. And now we're going to start configuring the ad set. So first you have your ad set name, which we already named. Now you have your budget and schedule. Like I've said many times before, our objective here is to spend the least amount possible while we learn to run successful ads. That is one reason why we are starting with post engagement campaigns, because first of all, it's cheap, but it doesn't matter that it's cheap. We still want to succeed. And our post engagement is going to give us an indication if this product that we're trying to advertise is an interesting product for e-commerce. So once again, we're going to do this on a budget and we're going to succeed at that. On your daily budget, you should spend between five to $10 a day for two to three days before checking out your ad and seeing if it's working or not. Because in the first day or two, Facebook is trying to optimize itself more and more to try to find the right audience for you. One day is never enough to see if your ad is a successful one or not. The second day should start to give an indication, but the third day is usually the day where Facebook is already optimized and the ads are already giving you answers if this is going to work or not. And the difference between $5 to $10 a day is simply how hard you want Facebook to work to find this audience for you. $10 a day will give you much faster results than $5 a day, but at the end of the day, it really depends on your budget. If $10 a day for three days equaling $30 is too much for you, start with $5 a day and wait for three days to get results to see if this ad is working or not, which means your first ad is going to cost you $15. And really that is not a lot of money for everything that you are learning and implementing and also feeding your Facebook pixel, which will repay you in the future. So start with five or $10 a day. You can set a start and end date. My recommendation would be to leave this on because if your ad is working well, you don't want it to end after two or three days. You want it to keep running. So I encourage you to not put an end date, just leave it as it is. And you will be responsible for keeping track of your ads. You're not running 50 ads at once. So it's not going to be a hard thing to do. Next, we're going to configure the audience settings which means we're telling Facebook the type of audience that they want them to find and show our ads to. Now is the time to open up that audience research spreadsheet, which you worked on a couple of lessons ago, because we're going to use that now for the audience section of your ad set. So first things first in the audiences on locations, click on edit here, exclude whatever default country it gave you. Now, since we are going for a post boost engagement objective for our ads, it doesn't matter if we're choosing audience in the United States or the rest of the world. Our objective here is not to get them to buy the product, but rather to interact with our ads. And it's going to give us some good social proof for our ad, because once you'll have that post with a lot of likes and comments on it, you can use that same post with the social proof that it already has and create a new ad on it 
with new purchase campaign objectives to get Facebook to find audiences that will go and buy this product. And the reason why you would want to go worldwide for your post boost engagement and not just for your target audience, which is the United States, is because this way Facebook is going to find the cheapest audiences in the world to show your ads to who will interact with your ad. This way you're getting the cheapest social proof and the cheapest testing possible to see if your product is interesting at all. So for post boost engagement, we are going to target the worldwide audience. Now you have to choose the audience age range. This is the part where you have to use your head and think what is the age range of people who will want to use this product. In my case, since it's a dog product, it's probably usually for dog owners. Dog owners are usually anywhere around the age of 20 to 60. Obviously, even people under 20 have dogs and people over 60 have dogs, but I'm trying to get the most and the most potential age range for the dog products. You can try to use Google to try and get some insight for the age range for the product that you're trying to sell. After you have the age range, you have the gender. So for example, if you're selling fashion and beauty products, then your gender will most likely be women rather than men. In my case, it's a dog product. Men and women both have dogs, so we're going to stick with all. And we're going to move on down to detailed targeting. And in this text field is where you're going to start writing down those interests from that spreadsheet. Now in this text field is where you're going to write as many audience interests, demographics and behaviors that you think is relevant for the niche that you are trying to sell. Not all of the things that you wrote down there will show up over here in the interests and behaviors. That is why we wrote down more than one answer for each question. So let's start off by copying and pasting here all of the audience interests that we have from that spreadsheet. You will do it on your side and I will do it on my side. See you in a minute. Okay, so I'm done writing down all of the audience interests from the spreadsheet to the ad set configuration. Now, if you look here on the right side, you'll see that you have a new potential reach. 76 million people is way too broad for what we're trying to do here. For post boost engagement, having an audience size of around 10 million people is just about enough to not go too low and miss out potential audiences and not go too high and waste money until you start reaching the right audience. So as you can see here, I have dog breeding, dog food, happy pets, modern dog and pet co. All in all, we have a potential reach of 76 million people. Now let's start narrowing down this audience to around 10 million. So the first thing that you want to do to start narrowing down is to go over the interests and see the size over here on the right side. For example, the size of audiences that like Petco is over 10 million people. Modern Dog has half a million. Happy Pets has 5 mil. Dog Food has 48 million people in the audience size. So the first thing that I can do here is delete the dog food audience interest since it's way too huge. So let's start by narrowing down dog food by clicking on the X. Now it's been deleted from the interests and we're down to 24 million people who have all of these interests alike. Now what I want to do is continue narrowing it down, but I don't want to delete any more audience interests because I really believe that my potential audience is inside these interests. So the next thing that you can do is click on narrow audience. So what you're telling Facebook here is to find an audience that has an interest in these subjects, either one, two or all, but they also have to like an additional interest, which you are going to add here. This is going to help narrow it down because you're telling Facebook, I want people who like this and they also have to like one or all of these interests that we have up here. So if you're all out of interests, all you have to do is click on suggestions and Facebook will give you more suggestions on interests that are similar to the ones that you have up here. So you can either find an idea over here or you can think of one yourself. For example, I thought of dog lovers. And here there's an audience interest of 36 million, which is kind of big. But since we're narrowing it down, we're going to go down from 77 million to 5 million 400 thousand. So what I would recommend to do here is to add an additional interest called engaged shoppers. This will give you an audience that has engaged with a call to action button at any time in the last week. 
as you can see here, engage shoppers, people who have clicked on the call to action button shop now in the past week. So you want to show your ad to those kinds of people who are interacting with the shop now buttons. And now our reach raised up to 13 million. 13 million is very ideal for the post boost engagement ad that we want to run. Now let's scroll down and continue with our ad set. Keep scrolling down until you get to languages. Click on the edit button. And here in the languages, you're only looking for English speakers. So click on English all. This way it will include the UK speakers and the US speakers. For us, English is English and we are looking for English clients. So once you chose English all, continue scrolling down onto the placements. Now the placements is where you're telling Facebook where to show your ads on their platform. So go ahead and click on manual placements. Now here we want to uncheck everything except for Facebook. But if your audience is a young audience, which means under the age of 18, you can leave Instagram on. So we're going to uncheck everything except for Facebook. And here you only want to be on the Facebook news feed and on the Facebook videos feed. This means that Facebook will only show your ad in the regular news feed and in the videos feed for people who like to go to the videos feed and just keep scrolling and check out all kinds of cool videos. They're also going to see your video along the way. Now on the next screen, you are finally on the ad. We're done with the campaign. We're done with the ad set settings. Now we're finally creating the ad. But that is enough for this lesson in this video because you've been through quite a lot. If there was something that you didn't understand in this lesson, please go back and rewatch the video. Once again, there is no shame in rewatching a video again and again. It's your knowledge that you are feeding and these steps are very crucial to the success of your store and the ads that you are running. Your assignment for this lesson is to create and configure your ad campaign, create and configure your ad set, and I'll see you in the next lesson where we are going to work on the final aspect of your ad, which is the ad copy, and then you're going to launch your ad. Great job on making it this far. This is the part where everything really gets hot and exciting. So take care of your ad campaign, take care of your ad set, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Now that our Facebook campaign and the ad set is ready, all that's left to do is to work on our final ad copy, and then we'll be able to launch our ads at the end of this video. The first thing that we did is create a Facebook campaign. Click on edit over here to go inside the campaign configuration. Inside, you'll also have the details for the ad set and the ad which we are about to work on. In the campaign, we chose the engagement objective, which means that we're telling Facebook that we want them to give us an audience that will engage with the post that we are about to create in the final ad copy. The reason that we want to go with the post boost engagement type is because we want people to interact with our post to see if this product is an interesting product. They will like it, they will comment, they will share, and this way we'll know that the product is interesting. Our Facebook pixel will already start gathering data and information for audiences that are relevant for our niche. And we're not spending a lot of money doing it because post boost engagement is the cheapest audience to reach out to and have our post go viral. Once our post goes viral from the post boost engagement, we can use that same post to run purchase campaigns or view content campaigns and other conversion settings, which I will talk to you in just a few minutes. So we chose the post boost engagement and that is the campaign objective that we have running here. Next, we click on next and then we moved on to the ad set over here. So let's click on that. And over here is where we set our daily budget, which should be from five to $10 for at least three days so we can see if our ads are interesting, if they're delivering well, or if they won't, three days will give you enough time to gather that information. One or two days is not enough to gather enough information to see if it's performing well or not. Later on, we move down to the audience demographics. We chose a worldwide location because for post boost engagement, you can just shoot it out to the whole world. Facebook will find the cheapest audience to interact with your ad. Then we chose the age and the gender. Then we moved on to the detail targeting. And here is where we narrow down an audience from billions to just about 12 million people, which is enough for post boost engagement. By the way, if we weren't going for post boost engagement, if this was a conversion campaign like add to cart or view content or purchase campaigns, then you'd want to narrow this down to about two to four million people since at that point you're really breaking down your audience and you know how to find the audience that will buy your product but that is for later on when our facebook pixel is bigger and stronger and they'll know how to find that audience we narrow down the audience by narrowing down the interests and telling facebook that our target audience has to have one of these interests 
and also one of these interests at least. If they don't have one and also the other, this audience is not an audience that I want to show my ad to. That is the ad set and now we're moving on to the final ad copy. The final ad copy is going to use all of the information and configurations that we chose in the ad set and in the campaign. That is why the ad copy comes in the end. So let's start working on that now. The first thing you have is the ad name, which we chose when we started the campaign. Then you have the identity where you have to choose the Facebook page that will be connected to this ad. So we are going with Doggy Dog Club. Scroll down further until you get to the ad creative. And this is where you can tell Facebook if you already have a post on your page and you want to use that post for your ad, or if you don't have a post and you want to create a new post, which you can do right here. It doesn't matter which method you choose as long as you have a post to run your ad on. So if you already have a post ready on your Facebook page in the ad setup, instead of create ad, go with use existing post. Since I don't have a post yet, I'm going to create the ad over here in the ad copy. So we're going to scroll down and the first thing that you're going to do is add media, which means you're going to add the video that you have for your product. And by the way, if you don't have a video, it's fine. You can click on create video and here you can choose pictures that you have from the product using a ready template that Facebook already has on their system. And Facebook will try to create an engaging video post with the pictures that you provided. If you ask me, this method is not going to work as well as video posts. Therefore, I highly recommend to go with video ads. But if you tried your best and you know that your product is going to be a winning product and you did everything that you could and you couldn't get a video, go with this method. It should work as long as your photos are good, your text copy is good, and of course, the product is interesting to the audience that you're targeting to. So since we already have a video ready, we're going to click on add media, then click on add video. By the way, if you went with three video ad copies, good job on starting off really, really strong. I can already smell your success coming up close. So if you did create three different video types, at this point, it's enough to only upload one of them. And later on, I'll show you how you can duplicate your campaigns and then create two or three campaigns with the same settings or with different settings, whatever you want. But each campaign will have its own video ad. And that is what is important once you have more than one video. At this point, uploading one video is enough since we're only on our first campaign. So go to the directory where you save that video and upload it onto Facebook. As you can see here, the video is currently uploading. So let's give it a second. Okay, so the video finished uploading. You can see it over here in the ad creative. So we have the dual leash video. It's 14 seconds long. Your video should be anywhere between 15 to 30 seconds. If you want to see an example of my videos, I'll just click on play over here. So as you can see, there's also background music, which you can hear because again, it's in my headphones. It shows exactly what problem this product is solving. It shows how it works. There's also a friendly text and everything here is on point. This is how your video ad is supposed to look like. So once you uploaded that video, scroll down to the primary text. And this is where you're going to write text, which is going to show on this part of the ad on the bottom. So you want this text to be engaging use emojis, show exactly what problem this product solves and why the audience needs to buy this product. So go ahead and work up a good text for your primary text. Let me show you what I created. I'm just going to paste it over here. Dual dog retractable leash for dog lovers with two dogs, control each leash separately, tangle free mechanism and shipping is on us. Now, don't forget that while you're on this post boost engagement post, you're reaching out to the whole world, worldwide, anywhere, any country that Facebook will find the cheapest audience for me to interact with my ad, go ahead and show them this ad. But those countries will not be able to buy from your store because you only set USA in your shipping zone settings. So if people are interacting with your ad and they're telling you that they're trying to buy it and they don't have the option, check with your source to see if they will send to that country, create a shipping zone and let those people buy from you. The point of the post boost engagement ads is not to create sales. It's only to get a viral post in a cheap form and to test if the product is interesting at all, like I mentioned a few times before, and to also start muscling up our Facebook pixel because it needs to optimize its performance in the future ads that we are going to run. So this is the ad copy that I'm going to use. This is the text that I'm going to use. Here is the video. Next, if you'd like to write some more text, click on add options, but you don't want too much text. This is enough. It's on point and it's precise. 
Next is the call to action button. Now you want a call to action button. What it is, is usually if you look over here on the ad, there will usually be a call to action button over here to tell the audience, all right, if you like this ad and you like this product, click here and go to buy it. So the call to action is very important. And in this case, we are going to use the shop now call to action. So click on shop now. Now you have to enter the website address for the product that you are trying to promote. You're not going to link to your homepage, but rather to the product page, directly to the product page, because that's what you want people to buy. So here's the link to my product. I pasted it over here and we're going to click on preview URL just to make sure that Facebook knows how to direct to the right page, which we want. So let's just give it a second. And here we go. It's directing to the right page. So we check that go back to the Facebook ads. So you have the ad creative when we uploaded the video, which is what you can see over here. Then you have the primary text, which you can see up here. And when they click on see more, it'll show them the rest of the text as you just saw from what I just did. And they will have the shop now call to action, which we added over here. You can see it on the ad on the right side. Once they click anywhere on this box over here, it will take them to doggydogclub.com slash this whole URL, which will take them to the product page where they can click on add to cart or buy now. So far, so good. Let's continue. Scroll down under the call to action. You will see the Facebook pixel where you will have to choose the right pixel. If you only have one pixel, it's going to show you the right one, but we already named it. So we know that this is the right pixel, the doggy dog club pixel. So that is about it. Our final ad copy is ready. Everything is set up correctly. We have the campaign where we set our post boost engagement objectives. We have the ad set where we set the audience demographics, their ages and their general interests. Then we have the final ad copy where we uploaded the video and created the creative for our ad. Everything looks good. Everything is ready. Take a deep breath. You are now ready to launch your ad. Do not be afraid. It's only five to $10 a day. And the money that you are spending is definitely worth the knowledge that you are acquiring here. So the only thing that's left to do at this point is click that publish button on the bottom right. Before you do that, I highly urge you to watch this video again to make sure that you didn't miss out on anything. Go to your campaign settings, go to your ad set settings, see your final ad copy settings again, and then go on to click the publish button. Let's go ahead and do that together. Click on publish, publishing one of three. One is the campaign. The second is the ad set. The third is the ad. Let's give it a second to finish the publishing. And then I'll show you what will happen on the next screen where our ads will go under verification. Okay. Multiple items published one campaign, one ad set and one ad were published. Now let's click on the X over here and go back to our campaign page. As you can see here, the campaign is in review. If we click on the ad set, we will see that it's also in review. And if you click on the ad, you will see that the ad is also in review. In just a couple of hours from now, Facebook is going to check this ad and they're going to approve it. Once they approve it, they will start shooting out this ad to the worldwide audience and try to get a post boost engagement for this ad so we can have a viral ad. Once again, our Facebook pixel is going to already start gathering information and valuable data from the audience that we are trying to get. And you will have a viral post and you will know if your product is interesting. If it is use that viral post to create another ad. And if you want to know when is a good time to create another ad with a purchase or add to cart conversion to start getting real sales and real profits, I will talk about that in the next lesson where you will learn how to analyze these ads that you just ran right now. Your assignment for this lesson is to create your final ad set copy, upload that video, create that engaging text and go ahead and launch your ad. Congratulations on making it this far. This was a very important lesson and you just took a huge step. Launch your ad and I'll see you in the next lesson. Now that your ad is finally up in the air, let's learn how to analyze your ad information and the results that it gave you so that you will learn how to analyze your ads correctly and multiply your success on those best performers. Now you have your campaigns, your ad sets and your ads and all of these results, which you can see over here in order to begin customizing your columns, use the resources PDF that you have for this course over there. You'll have a link 
to a document file which will explain every step of the way i created this document for you so you will have a much easier time customizing your columns and not spending too much time on it let me go over one by one and show you how it's done once you open that document file on your ad screen click on columns and then click on customize columns once you're on this screen use that document file that you have in the resources pdf for this course and over there you'll have a list of everything that you need to click in everything that you need to leave out and the order that you want everything to show up in to just make your job a whole lot easier once you're done customizing your columns according to the document click save as preset and give your custom columns a name so that you will always be able to choose it when you are seeing the results for your ads and you can also set it as a default after you give it a name so that way you'll always be seeing this one first now let's go over each column and i will explain the meaning of each one so you are in your ads and it doesn't matter if you're in the ad or the ad set or the campaign it's just much easier for me to see the results in the ad section so once you are looking at your ad copy the first thing that you'll see is the ad name then you'll see the delivery whether the ad is currently running or not mine is currently off but yours should still be running for at least three days then you have your ad budget how much you're spending a day on this ad then you'll have the amount spent, which is how much you spend up until this point. So if my budget is $10 a day and so far I spent almost $15, you'll know that this ad is running for about a day and a half now. Next, you'll have the results. Now the results is going to show you the results for the campaign objective that you set. In our case, we went for post boost engagement. So the results for the post engagements is 13,417. That means that Facebook out of my $14.62, they were able to give me 13,417 people who will engage with my post. Let's move on to learn more about that. Cost per result is how much money I paid for each result for each post boost engagement that Facebook gave me from their audiences. So my cost per result is 0.001 cents. This is a very good result. It means that I really didn't have to spend that much for each result that I asked from Facebook to get to me, which is a post boost engagement from their audiences. They charge me only 0.001 cents for each result that they gave me. And that is because we went worldwide and Facebook just went for the cheapest audience to give me the results that I'm looking for. And as you can see here, it worked. Let's move on. The reach is 29,432, which means Facebook was able to show my ad copy to this number of people. Then you have the impressions, which is 35,625, which is always going to be more than your reach. The impressions is how many people's devices my ad was shown on, but it reached 29,000 people, which means these people did stay a second to see the ad. Next, you have your link clicks. So I have 223 clicks. Even though this campaign objective was not for link clicks, I was still able to get them anyway from my post boost engagement objective. Moving on, the next column is 3 second video plays because here you want to see how many people played your video for at least 3 seconds to see if your video was even interesting at all. In this case, out of 29,000 people that my ad was on, almost half of those people watched the video for at least 3 seconds and those are good results. The first 3 seconds, as I've said, are critical. The more people are watching three seconds of your video, the more you'll know that it is an interesting video and you did know those first three seconds. Next, video percentage watched, which is about 50%, which is what I just said. About 48% of the people watched the video when it came up on their phone, which is also a very good result because people are usually not scroll stoppers. They usually keep scrolling even after one second, whatever they're seeing is not interesting and they keep scrolling. Next, you have your video average playtime. So I know that my video was almost 14 seconds long. And if the average view time is 7 seconds, it means that people are watching just about 50% of my video length. Next, you have your frequency. The reason that I added this result to the columns is because you want to make sure that people are not seeing your ad too many times, not the same person. Each person should view your ad 1 to 1.5 one times, which is 1.0 to 1.5. If your number is more than 1.5, then your ad is experiencing what we call fatigue. The same people are seeing your ad, and if they're not buying it and you're advertising to them over and over again, your ad is not going to give you any good results. That is why you should make sure that the frequency is anywhere between 1.0 to 1.5. Once it goes above that, your ad is being watched too many times by the same people. Therefore, you'll need to expand your audience size by adding in more audience interests 
And that is how you can grow your audience size and show your ad to more people. So the frequency is 1.21, which is perfect. Let's move on to clicks all. The clicks all is the number of times that people clicked inside your ad, whether it was a link or not. As long as the click was anywhere inside the ad box, even if the click was worthless, it's going to be counted in clicks all. This is different from link clicks, which we just talked about a minute ago, because link click is referring to how many times a viewer clicked on a link on your ad. If there are no links, they just clicked on an open box, it is going to be under clicks all. So as you can see, 621 people clicked inside the ad, but only 223 clicked on a link. Well, it's not only 220 people to go inside my website, even if what I was asking was just a post boost engagement on Facebook, that is a really good result. But as you can see, 600 people clicked, 220 were links, 400 of those clicks were just worthless clicks, but they were inside the ad and I want to count how many times people are interacting with my ad. Next, you have your CPC all, which is your average price that you're paying for each link click. So it is still a low price, even though this wasn't our objective, that is a great result. Next, you have your CTR all, which is the click through rate for all of the people who clicked anywhere inside your ad in a percentage number. Next, you have your cost per 1000 people how much money I paid Facebook to show my ad to 1000 people, 50 cents. As you can agree with me, 50 cents is really not allowed to reach 1000 people. Next, you have your CPM, your cost per 1000 impressions, which is how much you paid Facebook to show my ad to 1000 people, even if they didn't stay a second to look at my ad. Next, you can see how many people commented and reacted on your post. So this is another form of post engagement that Facebook brought to you from their audiences. Next, you have another form of post engagement to see how many people commented and reacted on your post. But in just about a minute, I'll show you the ad where there you can see the exact posts and the likes and how much engagement it really got. Then you'll have extra perks, which if you got these things, then you'll know that you can move on to purchase campaigns and run another ad to find people to buy your product. So what do we have here? You have your content views, which is a view content, which means how many people went inside my website and viewed a product page. So from this ad, which all I asked from Facebook for is to get me some post engagements, which was great and it made my post viral. That's all I really wanted. But since the product was interesting and the ad was created well, Facebook was also able to give me an audience that will also click on my ad and it also gave me an audience which viewed the content. Now view content is very, very important. So, so far I got 60 view contents and I'll go back to that in just a minute. After that, I also had one add to cart and one checkout initiated, but that person did not go on to purchase. Why? I don't know. I can go and start analyzing that. We also have an abandoned cart campaign which Shopify will send an email to that customer and try to get him back. A few lessons ago, I talked about that and it's already configured inside your Shopify store. But the point here is that we already have enough content views to create a new ad, a conversion ad instead of a post boost engagement objective. The objective for the next campaign is going to be a view content campaign. Why? Because I already have 60 people who viewed my content, which means my Facebook pixel is already starting to get fed. Once you create a new campaign where your objective is going to be view content, Facebook is going to look for an audience that will view your content. Now I know you're looking for purchases. You're not just looking for someone to view your content, but what you're doing here is you're feeding the Facebook pixel with the right amount of data. Once you start with the post boost engagement, then you move on to view content. Once you do that, you will start getting a lot of results for view contents. Facebook is going to give you audience that will click on your ad and view the content of the product on your website. Once you get a lot of view contents, you'll see that naturally your ad to carts will start increasing more and more. And once you'll have 20 ad to carts, then you can create an ad to cart campaign objective. Once you create an add to cart campaign objective, you will start to see that Facebook is giving you a lot of people that are adding your product to their carts. And some of those people will start to check out and purchase your product. The next step after that is once you get at least 20 purchases, then you can create a purchase campaign. This is usually the most expensive campaign to run. And that is why we had to build it slowly and gradually starting from post boost engagement 
After 20 view contents, we created a view content campaign objective and ran our ads on that. Then once we had 20 add to carts from the view content, we are going to create a add to cart campaign. Once you have 20 purchases from your add to cart campaign, that is when you are going to run a purchase campaign. Now your Facebook pixel at this point will be truly fed with the right audiences that love to add to cart and purchase products from what you are trying to sell and it will keep optimizing itself from there and that is where you are going to start seeing real sales and real profits so yeah you're going to have to create three to four ads until you start seeing the success do not worry about the five dollars ten dollars and fifteen dollars that you spent on your previous ads and do not worry if your post boost engagement did not get you any add to carts but it should get you some content views if you didn't get at least 20 content views then your post boost engagement ad probably needs some tweaking check out your general audience interests check out to see if there are any competitors that are killing your product check to see what's going on why you're not getting those view contents and if you were not able to find the answer just find a new product create a new ad create a new video for your ad it's fine 99% of the dropshippers do not nail it on their first product and that is fine. The money that you're spending is for your own knowledge. Once you get enough knowledge, you can use that knowledge to generate lots of sales and profit and run a successful dropshipping business. I know that this was a lot of information, but it's very, very important to learn how to do this step by step. And that is exactly what I've been doing until now. So after a day and a half, this ad worked really well. Let me show you the ad on Facebook. Here's the ad. There's the video that I showed you last lesson. We got 269 reactions for this post, 47 comments, 20 people shared this post, and here you can see the people's comments. So at the end of the day, this was a successful ad and we want to create more. The next ad that I would create in this point, as I've said, is the view content. Once I get 20 add to carts, I'll make an add to cart campaign. Then from that campaign, once I get 20 purchases from that, I'll create a purchase campaign. That is how you build it. That is how you feed the pixel. That is how you analyze your ads and see which ones are working well. Now, if you created three videos for your ads, all you have to do is click on the duplicate button and give it a quick duplicate. Now, since I'm in the ads column, it's going to create another duplicate ad. If you want to change the settings like your audience demographics, audience interests, your daily budget, or any other setting that you had, just create a duplicate for your campaign and edit out whatever you want from there. And this way you'll be able to test which video is the best performer out of the three that you have. And that is one of the best and smartest ways to split test your ads. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all of the best information that I can pass on to you on how to create Facebook ads, make them successful, learn to analyze them, launch the correct ads, and reach the right audience that will go and buy the product from your store. If you have any questions, just let us know and we'll always be happy to help you out. And your assignment for this lesson is to customize the columns in your ads so that you can analyze each column the right way, see the relevant information that you need to see, learn to differentiate between low performers and good performing ads, and use the resources PDF to find that document file that will help you customize each and every one of these columns. Once you do that, see what's working well, see what's not, and make the right tweaks to continue optimizing the process. And I will see you in the next lesson where you will learn how to fulfill the orders that you are getting on your store. See you in the next lesson. TikTok ads are a great way to bring more traffic and sales to your dropshipping stores. With the platform being one of the most popular and biggest social media platforms out there today and running ads is also super cheap because it's relatively new, now is the time to run TikTok ads for your dropshipping products and enjoy those extra sales and profits. That's why I added this extra bonus video inside our Shopify course so that you will learn how to run TikTok TikTok ads from A to Z for your dropshipping business. Enjoy this one and I'll see you in the next lesson. So here's what I did on TikTok. Let's go to one of these ads. Now, why do we only see four here and not the eight that we see on Facebook? Well, that's because on TikTok, I'm only going for one type of audience targeting, one type of audience interest targeting, and then I'm gonna show them all four of my ads, all four of my video ad copies, and hopefully one of them will work. Let's edit one of these campaigns. Okay, so this is the 30 second testimonial video. So as you see here, I set a custom identity, LED looper. 
which is what we're seeing here in the ad. The ad format is a single video. The video is right here. So this is the 30 second testimonial. The text is creating stunning LED visuals. So I used four different headlines for four different videos. TikTok didn't give me the option to try to adjust as to what's working best. So I just went with one headline for each video ad creative. Then the destination page, of course, is website to my product page. My call to action here, I could do a dynamic. So go ahead, TikTok, give me the best call to action. It could be learn more, buy now, whatever it may be. Then we've got the tracking. So of course I set up the Shopify TikTok pixel. It was easy to do it. Simply go to your Shopify dashboard, download the TikTok app from there and everything else should be self-explanatory from there. Just click, click and next. And that's pretty much it for this specific ad. So that is what we're seeing here. There is no text as you see here. TikTok doesn't have room for all of this, just a headline. So I gave them four different headlines, four different video ad creatives. I didn't see the interest. So let's go back again. It's probably going to be here in the ad group. Right now it's not delivering because it's outside of my schedule time, but it will start delivering soon. Oh, and by the way, it's not in review anymore. So this means that my ads already got approved in just a few minutes. I thought it would take a few hours, but maybe everything was really optimized, set up correctly, or maybe TikTok has more people reviewing campaigns. But as you can see, they are not in review anymore. They are simply not delivering. And that is because I scheduled to deliver them in just a few hours from now. That is when they will start delivering. So let's go to the ad group and take a look there. So I've only got one campaign, as you see right here. Okay, it's an active campaign. I've got one ad group, which is right here, and four different ads under this ad group and campaign. Let's start from the top, okay, which is what I should have done before. So right now we're looking at the campaign. I'm going for website conversions on TikTok. The campaign is LED looper conversions. And I didn't set a campaign budget, but I did only add $120 into this account. So TikTok will not be able to go over that price anyway. And if I do go over that threshold and I want to add more, I can always do that. Okay, so that's in terms of the campaign. Now let's look at the ad group. So my available audience here is between 21 to 26 million, which TikTok sees as balanced. Facebook would see it as, as super broad, but here it's balanced. So let's try that out. I'm going to go to an external website, of course. I'm using my pixel. My optimization event is complete payment. So find me customers who will complete payment. My placement is only TikTok. I took out Buzz Video and Pangle. No experience with them. Don't know if it's good or not. I'm good with TikTok. And in my targeting, I went with custom targeting. So the location here is Canada and United States. I didn't have the option to go with uh, Australia and New Zealand, but that is good enough for me. Languages, of course, is English. Gender, both male and female. Age range from 18 to 44. Household income, I don't mind them all. And down to interests and behaviors. Here I added interests purchase intention instead of general interest. I want people who actually have an intention to purchase. And I went with these four categories, home improvement, e-commerce, household products, and tech and electronics. And I set a budget of $40 per day. If I've got a budget of $40 per day for four different ad sets, that means that each one is gonna go for $10 per day. So $10 times four ad sets is $40 per day, times three days is $120, which is exactly how much I gave TikTok. And I wanna come back after three days and analyze how these ads are performing, seeing what I need to turn off, maybe optimize some of them. We will see soon enough. But for now, that is what I said here, day parting all day. And this is why we're seeing everything as scheduled, not delivering because it's outside of my schedule time, because I wanted to start at two o'clock at night, because right now I'm seeing UTC time and 2 a.m. in the morning is about 12 a.m. my time, which is once again, a good time for people who live in the United States and Canada to see the ad and purchase the product. For bidding and optimization, I went with lowest cost and that is pretty much it for the ad group. And then we've got the ad, which is what I started off with. So you guys saw the ad. I've got the four different variations, 15 second testimonial, 30 second testimonial, 15 second text and 30 second text. And that pretty much does it. And now that you know how to run TikTok ads for your Shopify dropshipping business, you can now go ahead and get started. Do not forget to start with five to $10 a day budget ad sets. And this way, see what starts to work from the data that starts coming in. After about two to three days, you should have a pretty good indication of what's working well for you. Turn off those slow movers learn from the ads that are working well for you, continue A-B testing different video ad creatives and different texts and targeting different audiences. And with more experience, the results will follow. Good luck running TikTok ads and enjoy the rest of the Shopify course. Now that your Shopify store is up and running with hot selling dropshipping products and you learn how to run Facebook ads to promote your products the right way, now it's time to learn how to fulfill the orders that you are finally getting from your customers. So now that you're connected to AutoDS, every time you get an order from one of your customers, it will show up here on the dashboard. And then you can click on orders here or on the left side to be taken to the orders page. 
each and every order that you will get on your Shopify store, you will see it over here on the orders page as you see in front of me. Now, there are a few ways to fulfill your orders. The first way is manually. Every time you get an order, log on to your supplier site, buy the product and enter your customer's shipping address. Send the product to your customer and that is done. On AutoDS, the first status will be pending. Then you will have to move it manually to ordered and supply your buy order ID that you're getting from the supplier and then click on update. Once you do that and you click on update, the order will change from pending to ordered. Once you get a tracking number, move it to shipped, write down the tracking number over here and the shipping carrier. And that is how you can process the orders manually and update the order statuses accordingly. So one way is doing it manually. The second method is using the AutoDS automatic order service. What this means is AutoDS will use your buyer accounts from your supplier sites and the system will buy the product automatically using your payment settings from your buy account. The system will simply order the product from your supplier directly to your customer. It will automatically update the statuses as you see down here with the order number and ship with the tracking number, which means you are getting automatic tracking updates and everything is pretty much automated for you. You won't have to process your orders by yourself. AutoDS will take care of it. So this is a very, very fast service for your customers to get their products quick. And if you want more help on how to sign up for the AutoDS auto ordering service, just use the resources PDF that we have for this course. I'll put the links over there to the help center on our website that will take you step by step in this process. But to show you really quick, just go to the settings in the plans and add-ons. Make sure that the orders processor is turned on. Then on the buy accounts on the right side, make sure to create a buyer account using the supplier that you would like to have the auto ordering process from and fill in the rest of the details. More information on that, once again, in the resources PDF that you have for this course, you have the links to all of the help articles to get this started. Now, if you want to see if your order was processed automatically, you will see a lightning icon that looks like this. And that is how you will know that AutoDS automatically processed this order for you. So once again, that's the second method to process your orders. And the third method to process your orders is by using the fulfilled by AutoDS service. The difference between automatic orders, which I just talked about a minute ago, to fulfilled by AutoDS, which is what I'm going to talk about now, is that on automatic orders, you have to supply your own buyer accounts from your suppliers, which means you're going to your supplier site, you're creating a buyer account, and you're giving AutoDS the buyer account information so that they can log into your buyer account and buy the products using your payment details. On the other hand, if you're using the Fulfilled by AutoDS service, in this case, AutoDS will use their own buyer accounts, which means they will not be using your payment information, and all of your orders will be processed automatically as long as you have auto order credits and auto order balance. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Let's go back to the orders page. Here is the auto order credits. It doesn't matter if you're using the fulfilled by AutoDS or the automatic order service. Each automated order will cost you one auto order credit. In order to buy credits, just click on the buy credit button over here. And here you will see the prices. The more credits that you will buy, the more discount that you will get. So having auto order credits is a must for both auto order methods. And here you have the icon for the managed accounts balance. Managed accounts is fulfilled by AutoDS, it's the same thing. So once you fill in your balance over here by clicking load, AutoDS will automatically process your incoming orders and it will deduct the price from your account balance. And this is why it doesn't need to use your own buyer account. This is a really good service. A lot of people are using it, including me. It simply takes business automation to a whole new level. For more information on the Fulfilled by AutoDS service, once again, I put the help links in the resources PDF that you have for this course. Over there, you'll find information on how to opt in for the Fulfilled by AutoDS service or for automatic orders if you want to use your own buyer accounts. Either way, it's up to you. This is what automation is all about. Now, one more important thing that I would like to talk about when it comes to automatic ordering is once your tracking number is available, AutoDS will get the tracking number from your supplier and will automatically update the tracking number on the AutoDS platform. And at the same time, it will also update that tracking number on your Shopify platform. So this means that your customer will be notified that tracking number is available and they'll be able to track their packages and you didn't have to do a thing. AutoDS took care of all of this for you. 
So automatic orders is going to save you a lot of time and we all know that time is money. It's all about business automation nowadays if you want to be able to scale and profit successfully and through automatic orders you can allow yourself that. That's it for this lesson on how to fulfill your orders. Once again, I remind you that in the resources PDF, you have help guides to everything that I'm talking about, step-by-step -step tutorials on how to get your accounts running for automatic orders, whether you want to go with manual orders or automatic orders or fulfilled by AutoDS. Either way, the system is going to simplify everything for you. And that is all for this lesson on how to fulfill your orders. You don't have any assignments for this lesson unless you have orders on your shop then obviously your assignment would be to go and fulfill them now and opt in for the automatic orders. I have a feeling that you're going to love it. So that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson where you will learn how to manage your returns and refunds. Not a fun subject. You're not going to deal with this one too much, but it's important to know how to deal with returns and refunds when you are managing your business. See you in the next lesson. Returns and refunds. Two words that business owners want to hear as least as possible while running their businesses and you will. You won't be handling too many returns and refunds. That is because you learned how to conduct thorough product research on the product that you are going to sell. And on top of that, most people do not like to return the products that they bought unless they are really not satisfied with it or unless the product arrived damaged or broken. But in most cases, people do not want to deal with returns, not the customers and not the business owners. Think about it. How many products have you bought in your lifetime? Not just by buying online, but also from physical storefronts, any type of product. And how many of those products that you have ever bought in your lifetime have you returned back to those stores for a refund or a replacement? A really, really, really small number out of all the products that you are buying. That is why you don't have to worry too much about returns and refunds. Most of your customers are not going to be returning their products, but every now and then when you'll have that little one exception, you'll have to know how to deal with this return and how to manage with the replacement or the refund. So here's how you get to it. If you are going with the manual orders like I talked about in the last lesson, you're processing your orders manually, you will have to log into your supplier site and ask them for a return label. Tell them the reason that you want to return the product. Give them the same reason that your customer is giving you if the product arrived damaged or if the product is not as described or is simply not happy with it. So in the case of manual orders, you'll have to deal also with your supplier and also with the customer. Make sure that the supplier will give you a return label, whether it's a paid return label or a free return label. It really depends on which supplier you're working with and what conditions they are giving you, which are the same conditions that you are passing on to the customers following and according the policies that you have set for your store from a few lessons ago. So on manual orders, go to your supplier and ask for a return label. Use that same return label and send it to your customer. Once the customer sent the product back, you can track it using the tracking number that you have on the return label. Once the product returns, send a refund to your customer and do not forget to get a refund accordingly from your supplier. That is how to deal with it when you are going with manual orders and you are processing your orders manually. Now, if you're going with the automatic order service from AutoDS, remember that there are two types of automatic orders. One is where AutoDS is using your buyer account. And the second one is the fulfilled by AutoDS where AutoDS is using their own buyer accounts. So if AutoDS is using your buyer accounts, which means automatic orders, but not fulfilled by AutoDS, the return process is the same as manual orders. Go to your supplier and ask for a return label, give them the reason that your customer gave you, just like we just talked about the last minute. But if you're using the fulfilled by AutoDS service, the process is going to be much more simple for you. All you have to do is go to the order status, as you see over here, then click on the order status and click on request return. Now from here, one of two things can happen. One, the return window will be closed. As you see over here, you'll get a red circle with an exclamation mark in the middle. And if you hover over it with the mouse, you'll see the reason why you were not able to get a return label for this order. And the reason here is that the return window is simply closed which means if the supplier gave you a 30 day return window and the customer opened up a return after 60 days, you will not be able to return the product and you will have to let the customer know that the return window is simply closed because 30 days have passed and make sure that those 30 days are showing up in your policies to make your life easier and the customers. Now, the second option that you can get from starting a return request is a return label over here. As you can see, you see this blue icon with the text pad in the middle. And if you hover over it with your mouse, it'll say download return label. Once you click on it, the file will download onto your computer. 
once it's downloaded it will look like this a return label with the tracking number over here write down the tracking number on the side so you can track this return once it returns send the refund to your customer so the process is much easier when you're getting the return label in just one click from AutoDS. It really simplifies the whole process. That is why I personally love the Fulfilled by AutoDS service. You don't have to do anything to process out your orders. All you need to make sure to have is auto order credits and Fulfilled by AutoDS balance. And then your orders are processed automatically. Your tracking numbers are updated automatically. And if you need to return a product, you just have to click one button and get that return label. You don't have to talk to any suppliers. You don't have to give any reasons. And everything is just much more simple, much more automated, saving you a whole lot of time that you really need to be able to scale your business the right way because you need to invest your time in growing your business and not getting stuck on small things like orders and returns. That is why I highly encourage you to join the Fulfilled by AutoDS service because we know that you're going to love it Anyone who creates an account will get 30 auto order credits for free. And if it's not costing you anything, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So that is how you can manage your returns and your refunds. It's not a very hard process once you learn to do it, especially when it's automated for you. Even if it's not automated, it's not a big deal, but you will spend more time to get that done for you. So once again, that is all when it comes to returns and refunds. You don't have any assignment for this lesson, just like you didn't have for the past. Unless, of course, you have a return or refund to take care of. And now I hope that everything is clear. Now, allow me to say that you did a great job making it this far. I'm not kidding. It takes a lot of hard work to build your store, to make the right research, to learn how to market your store and your products, and to fulfill your orders and manage your returns and refunds. When I say it like that in 10 seconds, it sounds like a walk in the park but we both know that it's not. On the other hand, the knowledge and the value that you gained, plus the asset that you just learned to build online, it's priceless. I'm sure that you can agree with me on that. And I'll see you in the next lesson where we will have a bonus lesson for you guys. But this course is not just over yet. Well, technically it pretty much is, but we want to make another bonus lesson for you because you worked this hard on making it this far. You deserve it. And we want you guys to really go out there and be ready to grow, flourish, prosper, and hopefully start hitting those big numbers sooner than later. I'm really proud of you and I'll see you in the next bonus lesson where you will learn extra secret tricks on how to run and optimize your dropshipping store. Welcome to the last and final lesson for the Shopify course. I really hope that you guys enjoyed your journey up until now. And just because this course is reaching its end, that doesn't mean that the same thing is happening to your dropshipping adventure. In fact, quite the opposite. And I'm sure that you guys already know that, but you're just in the beginning. But I really do hope that this course really helped you understand how to create that store that you always wanted, how to conduct product research and find the right products that you can dropship and how to market your store successfully so that you can get your product out to the right audience and start hitting those sales. Whether you're sold up until now is really not relevant. What matters is that you learned and that you implemented, and that is worth much more than that ad or two or three that you ran, whether it made a sale or not. You're investing in your future and you are definitely headed the right way. Now, in this bonus lesson, I want to give you guys some more pointers so you can fine tune your stores even more and start off with a bigger bang right after this course. So let's head back to our Shopify dashboards and let's see a few more cool things. On the left menu, click on analytics. And here is where you're going to see analytics for your store, which means just about every bit of information that you can get on those people that are entering your store. How many people came to my store today? How many of those people that came to my store are returning customers? How many added items to their carts, but they didn't check out or maybe they did. Where are those people from? The ones that are coming to my site, which countries are they coming from? All of your customers, demographics and behavior, you will be able to find on the analytics side of your Shopify dashboard. And this is really, really important because once you learn your audience, you'll definitely know how to reach out to them with better promotions and better products for what they're looking for. And as you can see on the left side, you have your dashboard, which is what I'm seeing here. You have your reports, which is a detailed report of everything that happened in the last week or the last month or so forth in your store and a live view of what's happening right now in your store. How many visitors are in your store right now and what exactly are they doing? 
You can simply learn a lot from your customer's behavior and use that to your advantage. So check out the analytics for your customer behavior. Next, on the left side, click on discounts. Now this is where you can create a promotion code for the viewers in your website. If you create a discount code, just click over here on create discount code. What you can do here is give a name to your discount code and then your customers can use that promo code on your website when checking out to get some kind of a discount. For example, let's make an end of the year discount code, for example. So let's say that we're at the end of the year right now and we want to make a Christmas discount for our customers. So let's make a code called Christmas Dogs. 10 for example because i want to give them 10 percent then you can choose the type of discount that you want to give to them in a percentage a fixed amount buy x get y which means buy two get one free for example or buy 10 get two free or whatever you want to configure there then the value how much of a discount you want to give using the type above so in my example i want to give a 10 percent discount to anyone who uses this discount code so I'm going to give it a 10% discount value, then applies to all products or a specific product or a specific collection. I'm going to leave it as is. Minimum requirements, if you want some requirement from your customer before getting the discount, I'm going to leave that as it is. Customer eligibility, I wanna give this discount to everyone. Usage limits, if you wanna limit to one per customer or make any other limit that you want, I'm going to leave it as it is and set a start and end date for this promotion. I want to keep it ongoing so i'm going to leave it as it is keep these settings and click on save discount code now i can use this discount code and write it on my facebook ads for example for anyone who uses this promotion you'll get 10 percent off anything on our website you can also write the same thing on the announcement bar on the top of your site if you remember from a few lessons ago let's go back to the site to show you for example so i'm talking about this announcement bar up here so you can write end of the year promo 10% off anyone who uses this special promo code xmexdogs10 and that will do the job. Your customers will see that there's an extra discount. Everybody loves a good discount and using these discount codes is one of those ways to do it. So that's another bonus tip that I have for you guys. Let's move on to the next. Click on online store, then click on preferences and here you have the title and meta description. Now, what is a title and meta description? Because you already have a title for your homepage and you already have a description of, you know, who you are, you have your about us page. So where is this going to show and who is going to see this? A meta title and description is kind of like a hidden title and a hidden description that you will not be seeing inside your website. But if you share your website, for example, on WhatsApp or on Facebook Messenger or other chat platforms, Notice that when you paste a link, you're also going to get a link preview of the link that you are sending that person. So your recipient will see the link's address, but they'll also see a title and a description on that message that you sent them. But once they click on that website, they won't see that title and description again inside the website. So it's something that you're seeing before you enter the website. You can also see it on Google search when you search for anything and you see the website's results. So when you're seeing those search results on Google search page, you're actually seeing the meta titles and meta descriptions. Once you enter that site, you could see a whole bunch of different information that was different from what you saw before. So you do need a homepage title and a description for the meta description for people who are searching for your site before they enter it. You want to show them some good information about your site. So on the homepage title, let's write doggy dog club because well, that's the title of my store. And then the homepage meta description, your one stop shop for all dog lovers spoil your dogs with our special high quality collection of pet products made specifically for your dog so you can write anything get creative work on this for a couple of minutes i'm just showing you guys a quick example Next, you can also add your Google Analytics account. If you don't have one, it's easy to create one. Just go to Google, write down Google Analytics on the search, create your analytics account. It doesn't cost any money. And then you'll get a code from analytics to paste inside this text box over here. Once you paste that code and click on save, 
you'll be able to track your audience's behavior just as I've showed you on the analytics button over here on the left, just in a much more sophisticated way with much more audience behaviors and more information on your audiences. This is something that you can go ahead and do right now. It is not only at an advanced stage. Once again, Shopify's analytics is great, but Google's analytics is going to get you much more in-depth information. So once again, really quick, there's no need to demonstrate it because it's as simple as it sounds. Go to Google Analytics, create your free account. At the end of the account creation, you'll get a unique code to paste over here. Click on save. And that is it. Go back to your analytics and start analyzing what's going on in your store. And that is another pointer regarding Google Analytics. So that is everything that I want you guys to do on the preferences page of your online store. So on our website, we are writing blogs all of the time on everything that's going on on Shopify and on the dropshipping world in general. Let me show you a quick example of some blogs that we have on Shopify. Top five low budget marketing tricks to market your Shopify stores. We are talking here about exactly what the title says. We also have Facebook ads over here and a few more low budget marketing tricks to get customers to your store. Another blog is why you should use American suppliers on your Shopify dropshipping business. We already talked about it in this course, but you have a full depth blog on this subject. Another one is 10 ways to increase your product page conversions for your Shopify stores by using all kinds of special methods that are used today by the top marketers worldwide. Next, you have another blog called e-commerce upselling, how to boost Shopify sales and increase your profits using upselling. Upselling is one of the greatest techniques to add more products to your cart and increase your average order value. That way you're going to make more profits using cross-selling and upselling techniques. All of that in this in-depth blog that you have over here. And as you can see, there's also Shopify apps, which we recommend to install to help you with the cross-selling and upselling. And as you can see, these blogs are really deep and they're full of rich information that we are doing only for you guys. So use that to your advantage because it doesn't cost you any money and it's giving you a heck of a lot of knowledge which is worth a whole lot of money and as you know a lot of people are paying top dollar to learn about what you learned in this free Shopify course that we created for you guys. Here's another article on how to get and improve product images for your Shopify stores to boost your sales and here we're going over everything that has to do with product images and believe me there's a lot that you can do with your product images in your store. I couldn't get into all of this in-depth information in this course because then it would have been too long but we did go over all of the important things so that everything will be optimized in your store and so that you can already start selling while on a budget well guys that's pretty much everything that i have for you regarding this shopify course how to get your store started even if you have no technical skills up until this point where you already have a store running and you made it this far if you guys have any questions about this course about shopify in general about our system or anything else that you have your mind on let us know let me know and we will be more than happy to get back to you guys and let you guys know what's up. We really want to see you guys succeed. The best that we can do is offer you all of the tools that you need to go and get started. And that is exactly what we did in this course. So best of luck on your dropshipping journey. Stay connected to our blogs to learn about product finding methods and suppliers and everything about the dropshipping industry in general. And I'll see you guys in the future blogs and videos where you are going to continue learning and implementing your way to success.